McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Wednesday, April 7th, 2021, years after zero. Happy birthday, Jackie Chan. Yeah. Let's oh, yeah. have a damn sports show, shall we? Yeah. Uh, here we are on YouTube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show and Sirius XM Channel 8 to Mad Dog Sports Radio. <clears throat> uh, we can't thank you enough for joining us wherever the hell you may be. If you want to call in today, I see, it feels like we're probably going to take some more calls than normal today. Not a lot popping off in the world of sport. 1-888-MAD-DOG-6. <laughs> we cannot wait to hear from you. Also, we have some big guests today. Hey, <laughs> hey, today's a big day. Huge. Lane Kiffin joins us in about 22 minutes or so. Okay. Lane Kiffin has been uh, quoted in rap songs. Lane Kiffin has been a head coach in the NFL. He's been a head coach in college. He's been there, done that with football, growing up in a football family. Cannot wait to chat with him about everything going on in his life. And also, you know, hey, why is it transition so hard to the NFL? You've been there both sides. You've won. You've lost in both sides. What what makes it so every time he comes on and any time he speaks, I think, electricity flows out of his mm-hmm. mouth. Cannot wait to chat with him. He's a guy who does not give a fuck. No. No, no he doesn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's part. He does not. Like, he'll say, he said some stuff uh, before the college football thing was uh, going to go on where I assume he immediately on this show he got emails I'd assume from commissioners mm-hmm. I, I, from people like hey you can't be saying what you're just saying he told us before that college football thing goes on he goes it'll work but I mean I'm talking to guys right now that don't even have enough players that would that would be able to field a team right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, they want us to deal with this and then also by the way go beat Alabama as mm-hmm. well like he says things that you would hope people would say or things would be said and I cannot wait to chat with Lane Kiffin, Don at Ole Miss, uh, Levante David, uh, linebacker for the Buccaneers, Super Bowl champion. He's been with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers since 2012. He's been there for the tough times in Tampa and now for the beautiful times. Cannot wait to chat with him about all things happening down there for the Buccaneers and in the NFL. And then in the third hour, big, big convo. Mm-hmm. We learned of this human's existence just yesterday. Mm-hmm. We were talking to a man who played quarterback at USC, then for the Jets, then bounce around a little bit. Now he does the television. He's handsome. He lives in Southern California. The Sanchez, Mark Sanchez, was talking to us about his draft analysis. And he talked about the quarterbacks and the position and Sam Darnold, obviously. But when he got to Justin Fields, he dropped a little tidbit on this particular show yesterday that I did not know existed. There is a recall test that 6,500 professional athletes have been given, and out of the NFL quarterbacks, allegedly, uh, this is all of this is allegedly out of the NFL quarterbacks that have tested that, which have included Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and who knows who else this is just who the Sanchez mentioned yesterday in this test. Justin Fields scored the highest out of all of them in recall. So we're starting to think there's a chance with how high he scored. The way Sanchez delivered this news, he was like, hey, this is the highest score they could possibly give, basically, in this particular test. He's got it. We're thinking Justin Fields potentially has a photographic memory. And if he does, how has that not been information that we have learned about until yesterday with Sanchez? We're going to do a little bit follow-up on the information that Sanchez gave us. We got the creator of the test what? that Justin what? Fields took in 6,500. Other professional athletes have taken a doctor in sports psychology. Yeah, Dr. Goldman joined no. us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's his Twitter profile picture. It's it's black and white filter. I think mm-hmm. there's some other potential lighting and highlighting going on in the photo. This dude's legit. Been doing this for a long time. We learned about the Goldman standard just yesterday. Whenever you're testing brains on whether or not they'll be good professional athletes. Cannot wait to hear his breakdown. Now, we did get a message from Dr. Goldman's team. And I don't think Dr. Goldman knows us that well, uh, that he will not be able to go through individual people's scores. And Dr. Goldman, we would never 
expect you to dox people's scores in anything like that. No, that is not no. the Goldman standard way. We actually were surprised that Sanchez was yeah. just all willy nilly yeah. them out. Yeah. We actually wondered where Sanchez heard the information from. I, maybe he just went directly to the sources here, which could very much be the case. But we will talk to Goldman about his test. Mm -hmm. Is it a fugazi? Mm -hmm. How come nobody knows about this? Who knows about this test? Because who's potentially spreading misinformation about Justin Fields who might be interested in Justin Fields? Fields. We were told yesterday about a classic story that I did not remember about Shanahan whenever uh, dad Shanahan when he was in Denver they loved Jay Cutler so much coming out of Vanderbilt that they didn't visit with him they didn't talk with him they didn't want anybody to know that they were potentially interested so I would assume if it was the social media world the whole entire thing is Shanahan hates Jay Cutler then the whole question would be well why do they hate Jay Cutler well, anyone like they were interested in Jay Cutler at all then all of a sudden like, Jay Cutler didn't even know they were interested they don't draft like they drafted him and they said listen we were in on this guy from the very beginning uh we didn't want to give away any signs that we loved and we didn't want anybody else to think this was a blah 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 is somebody doing that with justin fields is somebody trying to bury justin fields so they can get up and get justin fields what is going on and mm. does that really work like do teams listen to what the media is reporting about what other teams are feeling or are teams doing their own research dr goldman is going to inform us on who gets to find out his information i hope he'll tell us you don't have to tell us exact teams but nfl teams I, I think on his website it said GMs, presidents of franchises and organizations are who he deals with on a regular basis. So, I mean, we're going to learn a lot in that third hour. Oh, AJ yeah. Hawk will be there too. Maybe we get Goldman and Tesla CTE stuff. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Right please. there. Just do like a quick like you know, finish the pattern here mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. with AJ Hawk, who has zero documented concussions. Talked to him yesterday, FaceTimed him, by the way. Oh, yeah? How's he doing? Well, it was after my golf outing. He, he saw the slow-mo video that I posted and he goes... How'd you do? Was his text, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I lost 11 balls in eight holes. That's uh, <laughs> not bad. Okay. It was not a good first outing. Uh, the road to Tahoe 2022 championship circle mm -hmm. is going to be a long one, I do believe. Yeah. I mean, there was balls flying through neighborhoods. This golf course that I've been a member of for 13 months, well, I played golf. I had never seen these nine holes. <laughs> really? <laughs> I had never seen the whole course that we played yesterday, and it's very close to my house. I had no idea the houses that were on the golf course existed. I had no idea this golf course existed, but I will let them know. How I donated an entire box of balls okay. in nine holes. Wow. Yeah, All right. I mean, it was <laughs> nice. good, for good for you. It was pretty good. Thank you, Pat. Pretty good. Uh, the DeChambeau putt thing is not the answer for me on the thing. Oh no, really? I thought I had it figured out. Son of a bitch. So flat stick still a big question mark. The big stick was spraying a bit mightily, but the clubs I was using, Mickey Mouse, I'm not gonna be oh, able to use. Not gonna, no. cut it. not gonna be able I thought we were potentially gonna be you know, investors in a golf club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a pretty cool thing to do. Like, hey, hey, listen, we got golf clubs. You want to play? This is like a fun. Here we go. This is how we're going to do. I get out there. Just I'm not going to be able to. I'm not going to be able to golf with those. Mm -hmm. okay? so They're I Mickey Moss. They, they appear to be a bit Mickey Moss. I mean, the bag <laughs> okay. kind of told the story. We knew from looking at the bag, hey, that those clubs are not. It was a walking bag. It was a walking bag. Yeah, right. it, was a, it was a walking bag. But the club, when, you know, when, when I was swinging the club, I think. As I was down here, I could still see the head of the club. Oh, okay. You know, like in my periphery. It was almost like I was at the point, like, are you coming? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? While I was swinging. So uh, maybe a club issue, probably my fault. First time out, it was not fantastic on the course for those that maybe were wondering. Uh, the road to the ACC championship the uh, the american century championship there lake tahoe celebrity invitational championship circle <laughs> is going to be a long one. I'm not even invited to this tournament, but I'm trying to become a good enough player where I could potentially win it. If anything of this golf season is reminiscent of what happened yesterday on the golf course, if we don't mm -hmm. turn this, that was the first time out. First time yeah. out. Yeah. First time swinging the driver. By the way, we got to be a bit more successful so I can get the driver in the backyard. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh. because in the backyard, can't use the driver. Right. Okay, we got to get a little bit more successful. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got to continue to do good things. Mm -hmm. We got to hope to maybe hit a scratch off or two. Yep. Maybe win. Hey, mate, why not Powerball? Maybe win there Powerball. Something like we got to do something like that so I can work the driver in the off season in the backyard. Yep. The driver was all over the place. The putter stunk and the clubs were terrible. So yesterday almost made me never want to play golf again. <laughs> but hey, oh. you'll turn it around. I'll tell you, there wasn't one fucking shot. 
There wasn't one of those. Really? Two. What about that one? I mean, that, I bombed that ball. Yeah. 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 Are you kidding me? Great drive. Um, Are you ball, kidding that me? That ball got slaughtered. One straight two. This was hole three, dude. Okay. <laughs> there was four to five more holes on top of this thing that were just terrible, terrible lost balls. See you later. House in a garage. I hit a ball one time okay. across the street in a garage <laughs> of somebody's house. You're being too hard on yourself. Foxy was bad. All right. First off, first time out. Second off, we didn't have access to a thousand milligrams of vitamins yeah you're right which is what you need you're right i can't golf in indiana no can't do it can only golf in certain states new mm -hmm. york yep okay congrats there on, the, on the list can golf the hell out of michigan oh yeah oh yeah massachusetts it. massachusetts colorado, colorado. Yeah. Yeah. hell of a golfer in canada Nevada. oh canada i'm fucking probably yeah. scratch right now at yeah. least california i mean that's why tahoe was made for you yeah but is, 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 is that in california Oh yeah, really? Oh, yeah. No, it's in Nevada. I think. Yeah, I thought yeah, half Nevada. Nevada. But Nevada, Nevada has. Yeah, Nevada's good. Awesome. Yeah, Nevada. I think there the back go. too. I think yeah. Nevada. <laughs> the back nine, you're good. Not that I need it. <laughs> Not no, that I no, need it. no. Or it would take it, but what I'm saying is, I think Nevada is pretty loose with the marijuana rules. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Anyways, golf season opened terribly for me. It was expensive. One I had, but they just. They told me they'll just charge me later for everything I did yesterday. Bought a hat. Is that right? Bought a box of balls. Jeez. Oh, had a, had Foxy and Brown with me, and they're like, "Oh, we'll just charge you later or whatever." Add it to your monthly tab. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you have a thousand more dollars to go? I would assume I have That's to. Yeah, it. they're they're. <laughs> yeah, I got the pro shop, and I didn't even know this course existed. This is I've been a member for thirteen months, and Foxy and Brown are looking at me like, "What's this whole deal?" I'm like, "Bro, I fucking." <laughs> And they don't have, they, they, they don't have like a uh, they they don't have a, they don't have the carts with the fuck we need. I almost want to make a, I almost want to make like a donation. Like hey, Ooh. we need the carts with yeah. the goddamn. Like, what have you been using my membership for? Yeah, we need the carts with the goddamn uh, GPS on it. Mm -hmm. Need that. Did like, you get some fillets on the course at least? No, there was no there was no no carts no, service. Service. no service. service out there either. No. I mean, it was a beautiful course, gorgeous. But yeah. we can make some upgrades. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm not listen. That was not me. That was yeah. <laughs> the opinions, the opinions of Foxy. Because I do think a couple, a uh, couple people potentially in the clubhouse listen to the show. <laughs> so only a no, great, great course. But the, yeah. the fact that there isn't a GPS on that golf cart was because I see. I finally found out how much I paid for this. Right, whenever yeah. Yeah. the email that was linked to that account was not one that's on my phone, so it might as well not be in my life. CFO Phil said, "Hey, have you seen what you're, <laughs> what you're doing at this thing?" I'm like, "No." He's like, "Well, we got to pay it first of all." Eighty five hundred bucks a week. I'm like, "What are we?" And <laughs> a I'm day. Going, so, now, so now I need to get back out there. Like I need to start using this. I think we need the golf court yeah. with the GPS. I, yeah. I have a question for you over here too. Go ahead, Zito. Uh, What's up, pal? Is it because you're wearing shoes? Now, by the way, I've made a decision. I think I'm going to start wearing shoes when I golf. Every time I've seen you like golf under like a 40, it's always been without shoes. Yeah, I understand that. But the thing about it is I've been doing a little. Dirty feet. No, well, dirty feet happen. Swollen feet happen, too. And I mean, the one, the, the one time in Arkansas, whenever we golfed on John Daly's private golf public, his public golf course mm -hmm. in Arkansas, which is his backyard, yeah. they had... Uh, they had stickers. Oh, Some stickers okay. will get you. They have stickers yeah. will get you. And I did not know oh, that. So we were about whole, I don't know, eight or nines on like the side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. So you're like maybe, <laughs> maybe I don't know, 2,000 feet altitude or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I had no shoes anywhere near me. And I'm just walking on this mountain and I'm just getting stabbed. I couldn't put my shoes on afterwards. My feet Jeez. were so swollen. <laughs> my feet couldn't get into my shoes. So I had to wear flippy floppies. But that did not deter me. I, I still continue to play barefoot because I felt like you should at least feel Mother Earth. Exactly. while you're yeah. hacking the shit out sure. of her but what i found out is from watching like the golf fix and such mm -hmm. there is like grip things oh yeah if i really uh -huh. want to get like yeah. like if i want to get good at golf i'm gonna have to start digging in and everybody on the internet always comes after my hip rotation or whatever jesus like hey listen i want to let you know i'm moving from here to here still mm -hmm. No, that that's enough for me. I don't need that thing. I'm not. I'm not built for a long spinning turn. I'm oh, built for yeah. a quick burst. Boom. Yeah, that's how I do it. See ya. That's why. Ah, that's literally how I do it. I feel like the hips are in. I just need the feet to get in there. Need new clubs, and then golf season's gonna be a wrap. Foxy's playing pretty good golf right now. Oh Man. yeah. It looked like you hit a pin I'm, seeker on uh, that par three you guys were on. Yeah, he almost. Play, he almost literally hold one out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he awesome. plays like an 85 year old. Yeah. Correct. Is not the yeah, uh, but this course, by the way, oh, kind of set up for that. <laughs> yeah, oh, very short and okay. narrow. That's my bread Bro, and butter every time. There was a fucking hole there that maybe had a twenty-yard, maybe fifteen-yard 
like hole, like yeah, it was okay. kind of like a funnel mm -hmm. to get to the fairway or whatever, line of trees on both sides. Yeah. So it's like, okay, what do I, do I take out a seven iron here mm -hmm. and just kind of hit the field goal or do I bring out the driver? Obviously bring out the driver. I lost three balls, I think on that <laughs> one. That one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I lost, boom, yeah. left, because there's one that was going to fade back, probably mm -hmm. would have made it in there bang into that side. Then a draw happened, Ooh. like, oh, this is awesome. Bang off of that side. I mean, it was just a fucking nightmare yesterday out there. It was That's golf. Does Hoka I mean, make a golf shoe? Yeah, you know what I mean? These Hokas right now. Let them know. <laughs> Hook into the earth that way. All right, let's get some sports <laughs> stuff here. Uh, we have a, a graphic designer that joined our team. At Bubba Gumpino is here. At Boston Connors here. Ty Schmidt is here. Viva Lizito is here. The boys behind the glass, we appreciate that. Tone Diggs is launching the daily hammer down live show today at 4 p.m on the hammer don youtube it'll be a gambling show daily that tone Diggs will host gumpy will be in there i think daily we are also trying to bring in more people to be a part of that show uh Diggs is Diggs is going to try to make that thing great he could potentially be exhausted from that he show could be. Mm -hmm. he and could we'll, be. we'll see how this thing we'll kind of feel it as we go here but it'll be live four o'clock today every day starting going forward congrats to Diggs on that Excited to see how you do on that, Diggs. I think it'll be great. Uh, we have tried to make a couple acquisitions for that. Oh, yeah? yeah? For okay. that show. It's going to be tough, I think. Really? Everybody right now seems to be... Long-term deals. Everybody's locked in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't matter. We don't need them. Nope. Don't need them. Nope. I mean, it would be better. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, let's move on. It's on. Good luck, Diggs. We're proud of you. Hammer down should be great. Um, we have a new employee. And we announced this last week. Drawn to the game is one of his popular Instagram pages. His name is Mike Gurdy. Okay, he is now in the office for the first time because he was in Virginia. Obviously, had to go through the COVID stuff. Travels out here. We just see him now in person. Hey, dirty Gurdy, handsome ass dude. Dirty, uh -huh. dirty hey, Gurdy, dirty. handsome ass guy. He came in the office this morning. We got a chance to watch him work for the first time. He made a graphic that beautifully illustrates a point that we have been making for a long time. Whenever we talk about the Green Bay Packers not drafting a weapon for Aaron Rodgers or bringing in a weapon for Aaron Rodgers, there's some people that go like, oh, you don't believe in Devontae Adams, you don't believe in Big Bob Tunyon, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon. It's like, no, 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 we do mm -hmm. in MVS, like we do. And then some people get a little bit upset whenever you assume that you have to load up on weapons to be a good team, and they're like, that's not how you have to do it. I hate to break it to people. Saban said this last week in an interview he said I used to think you have good defense run the ball well and you uh, control field position on special teams you can win games he then said if you believe that now you're, you're an idiot basically yeah that is not what football is anymore football is you got to move you got to be fast you got to be able to score and everything like that in this graphic that Gertie put together for us today weapons of mass devastation in the AFC and Ooh. NFC Kings when you look at the offensive weapons for the Buccaneers in the Kansas City Chiefs. And these are, by the way, this is not just us saying like, oh, hey, here's the best weapons in the NFL. What we're telling you is, here's the AFC champion, here's the NFC champion. Yep. Here are the two best teams in their respected conferences, and these are the teams that everybody else is trying to get. And these are the teams, by the way, that have been able to keep all these motherfucking talented people mm -hmm. in their building. Now, I know there's old school people that think you don't need all those. I think we are in a league right now where you need to have your weapons. You look at the Buccaneers, and Tom Brady gave an interview with Michael Strahan this morning. Morning. That was awesome. It was on Good Morning America. Tom Brady's getting into the NFT game. He, uh, as are the Manning brothers. Mm -hmm. the, these two, uh, Tom Brady and the Manning brothers, getting into the NFT game comes I don't know, a couple months after we got into the NFT game. That's right. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we released one. Uh, yep. We had a commentator on there and mm -hmm. everything. But Tom Brady's interview with Michael Strahan. Anytime you get a chance to hear somebody who's the greatest of all time, especially if he's the greatest of all time in a league that is the biggest league on earth, you should listen. Okay, you should just, I, I, I just feel like that's something, and maybe sports have taught me that where if you see somebody that's successful, it's like, okay, let me go, let me see what the fuck this guy's doing. Let me see why he's successful, and then I'm going to do my thing. 
And in the NFL, they say, hey, if you see a vet in your position, go and be in his back pocket because something he did has gotten him to this place. So if you take that same concept and you apply it to just life in general, when you hear Tom Brady speak, you should listen and just be like, okay, what? am I potentially going to get out of this? When he talked to Howard Stern and he did that hour and a half conversation or whatever with Howard Stern, and this was immediately following him leaving uh, New England, there were some things he said in there where I felt like I was like, I got better as a person in there. Because whenever the 28-3 game was mentioned, he was like, I had to figure out a way to reframe it in my mind as if. So he was like, so everything in his is like, how do I reframe this situation in my head so it doesn't beat me, but I make the best of it? Because Tom Brady is the most competitive human walking anybody that's ever been around him says he's a great teammate most competitive guy ever so whenever he drops little tidbits of that you're like okay so that's how the fucking goat that's how that person does it today whenever he talked to strahan there were some things he said that were very interesting oh yeah he talked about the chips on his shoulder and how when he went down to tampa and people say he wasn't going to work it's uh something that motivated him and you know now the debate is across the sports debate shows is uh, is it good that he's still motivated by chips on his shoulder or whatever? And he said, I was always kind of motivated by people that say you can't do it, you're not good enough, you're not fast enough, not big enough. And that's an uh, exclusive with Michael Strahan on Good Morning America. Tom Brady said that exact quote. And now the conversation is, is it good that he stays motivated with this? It's like, hey, everybody at the top of most of their fields, whenever they lay their head down at night or whatever, quietly, they hear what everybody says, they see what everybody says, and there is something inside of him that is like, oh, can't wait for when that motherfucker has to eat that. Like, I, I cannot wait. Now, there will never be a moment where Tom Brady will see some random Twitter person or some random show host in person. He goes, hey, you remember when you yeah. said mm -hmm. I couldn't do it and I did it? It's not that. It's just the satisfaction of knowing when it happens. Like, okay, that guy's a stooge. Uh, that person's a fucking stooge. You can eat it. Okay, you said I couldn't. I did. And there's always going to be that. I think Drew Brees told us that last year mm -hmm. on Radio Row down there at the Super Bowl. He was like, D I was like, do you hear what people say? Some people have said it on this table. Like, do you hear that? He's like, oh, yeah, I'll take all of that. Like, everybody does that. The thing he said this morning, though, that's captivating everybody is after 20 years of doing something and having a lot of success doing it, you kind of get locked in. He said the, the fascinating thing about going down to Tampa is – Hey, there's another way of doing things. Yeah. And that other way of doing things, by the way, is the Bruce Arians way of doing things. And what Tom Brady said about Bruce Arians was he's a great motivator. He's got a great feel for the team, a great pulse for what's going on in the locker room, great intuition, great evaluation of talent. And when you're in one place for 20 years, you think that's the only way. And I think when you go to a different place, you realize, wow, there's another way that people do things. So automatically that goes, wow, he just buried New England. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's the case at all. I think this is the classic, hey, there's two different ways to do things. I think if you've had a chance to be in a team that was led by a, you know, like a hard nose, no bullshit, we're here strictly for business coach, and then you're also on a player coach team, you can very see how there are different ways to be successful. But for a long time, the narrative was you can't be on a player co a player friendly coach team and have success. Pete Carroll flipped that around a little bit, but now, I mean. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, but Pete Carroll flipped that around. Obviously, the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers now, Andy Reid over at the Chiefs. I mean, now it's a whole new era. But I think also Tom Brady realizing that a different way to do things, not just personally and how you act and everything like that, but also like the way this team was constructed. It's like, hey, we, were, we mm -hmm. put together an absolute arsenal of people on this team. Kansas City Chiefs are doing it. I think if you're looking at your team and you're wondering if they're going to be good or not, just look directly at their weapons. Now, you have to have a quarterback. You have to have a defense that's worth a fuck. But look directly at their weapons. And if it's deep, they're probably going to have a chance because injuries are going to come uh, at some of those positions. And if you can just fill in place and still move the ball and still score points, you're in a beautiful fucking spot. Obviously, we don't think he buried the Patriots, but him saying great evaluator of talent, and then when you look back at you know the New England wide receivers drafted from 2010 to 2019, you could think, hey, maybe he is talking about Bill isn't the greatest you know offensive mind when it comes to seeing draft picks, wide receivers, especially Nikhil Harry. You know, we can go down the line: Aaron Dobson, Cambrell Tompkins, who is you know 
in in a sticky situation right now. But you you could see how people are, you know, directing. Hey, he's just burying New England. Yeah, right and here. everything he said in that Howard Stern interview, they said, oh, he's burying Bill. He's yeah. burying Bill. Mm-hmm. And I assume that's how it's going to be forever. But maybe Tom's just like. No, this is how I'm viewing. I don't have to bury somebody else to lift somebody up. Yeah. <laughs> and we kind of have that problem in society. Mm-hmm. Whenever you compliment one person, that means you're shitting on everybody else. Charles Davis alluded to that yesterday. He was like, Daniel Jeremiah, who, in my opinion, is the best draft evaluator that there is. And he was like, now, I have to say, I do work directly next to him. So my opinion is biased. But that is kind of how everybody, oh, you, you think... You think um, Mel Kuyper stinks? Is that right? Oh, you think Todd McShay stinks? It's like, no, 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 no. I'm just letting you know what I think about this person. This person is unbelievable what they do. I think Tom is talking directly about Bruce Arians, yeah. but I don't think he's trying to bury Bill, but everybody's going to take it that way. It's just, I don't know. Do you- it's fascinating. we got to get to a break. On the other side, I don't mean to cut you off there, but we have to. Uh, Lane Kiffin will be joining us. Ole Miss Rebels head football coach. Ooh. Been there, done that in this football game for everything. I'm sure this conversation shall be riveting. you got about four minutes. This is the Pat McAfee Show Wednesday, April 7th. Cheers. So I'm going to putt seven balls here. If I make more than three and a half, so it'd be half of them. Yeah. Evan Fox will give away a fucking Scotty camera butter. Ain't that right? <laughs> yeah, you know right? Yeah, 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 yeah sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think this is tough. I right? think this is tough. Oh, I'll oh, give away. But if you don't, you have to give away a no, no, no. Yeah, oh, if you no, don't. This is training. All right, let's I'll see. I'll give away a Scotty camera. Under three and a half, I give away a Scotty camera. Over three and a half, you give away a Scotty camera. All right, fair. I do like the fact that you did not know that you're probably going to have to give away Scotty Cameron as this thing is beginning, but I'm pumped up right here. Yeah, it kind of goes that way. Bryson DeChambeau. No! <laughs> one, two, one. Oh my god. Thank you. Masters week. Everything gets tight. No! Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on! Let's go, dude! Oh, it's in the hole. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> what is happening? Oh, it's what? what are you talking about? Come on, dude! It's the DeChambeau, bro. Come out. Are oh. you kidding me? Okay, all right, thank you. So you already know Scotty Cameron. I always got a camera. Okay. Let's say if you make the rest of these, let's add 500 bucks on top of it. Really? 500. No! Oh. So we didn't get the extra five hunch, but Foxy owes you a Scotty Cameron. That was unbelievable. Let's go, baby! <laughs> let's go! is your ally, but you were merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it.
This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to that show. It is Wednesday, April 7th. There's a hard little stopper on that guitar. I feel like it's one of those guitars with a fat bottom. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a fat bottom guitar. <laughs> yeah. Join us now, ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels football squad, ladies and gentlemen, Lane Kiff. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing, Lane? Great, Pat. Good to be back. Hey, it's great to have you. You know, the last time we talked and then I watched the season, I'm like, you know, I cannot wait to talk to that guy. What a moment you had running down the field, throwing the fucking play card. Did you enjoy the year? How was the year as a whole? Because going into the season, I remember you thought there was, you know, some question marks on how everything was going to go. Did you enjoy it? How do you feel here one year after the COVID season? I did. Um, you know, it was very strange, obviously, not having spring practice as a first year staff and I had no idea what to expect, and you're playing an all SEC schedule on top of that. So um, there were some exciting times. Um, we screwed up some games, you know, that really should have won, um, you know, at the end of the game. And so those kind of haunt you through the off season because you know people are excited here that we won a won the Outback Bowl and you know won some SEC games and played a lot of really close games. But really, we had a great opportunity to really knock some people off and, and screw it up. So. Uh, that's why we got to get better to year two. How was it getting back in the SEC? I, I heard you say that, like in all SEC schedule, it was made that way because COVID, but you are back in the SEC now full time. How is it back in there? And did you miss, I guess you can't really tell because the fans weren't really there, but did you miss SEC football? Um, well, it kind of felt like Conference USA actually. You know, so <laughs> I had practice at that. Um, so, you know, but. The players were different, obviously. So, you know, coming back to the SEC, they're just, you know, no matter who you're playing, I've always said, especially, you know, it used to be defensively, now it's both sides. There's always just dominant players that you got a game plan for um, on all teams in the SEC. So, um, coming back to that, you know, um, is exciting. And you got great coaches. And especially, you know, right now, as you look at coaches around the conference, you got legendary coaches in this conference, you know number of guys that have won national championships. I think last year there were four of them that have won national championships. So, um, you know, it's why it's the highest level. And, and SEC has been that way for a long time. But I think now it's really, you know, it's really pulled away. And I'm sure you'll see it again in this draft, just like the number of the last drafts. There, there's just such a difference, especially last year. Just felt like any time you'd watch some other football, it was just like a, a different – different division almost yeah different speed almost is, is kind of what you see out there and uh, we're talking to legendary coach Lane Kiffin back at Ole Miss head coach down there after leaving the SEC for a bit now I want to talk to you at some point eventually about the transition from going from college quarterback to NFL quarterback because you've coached both levels very highly and why some guys just won't pan out but before I get to that I have to ask you about Saban last week I think he talked about how he used to believe hey we need to run to ball we need defense we need special teams he said if you feel that way now though basically you're an idiot like the game has changed completely you've always been an offensive minded guy how do you feel about the way the game is going where the game is going and do you think this is going to continue or do you think that old school smash mouth football is going to return at some point well i think in order to succeed you got to get out of you know liking or disliking where it's going and realizing that's where it is you know and so better get with the times. We've said that for a long time. We've seen coaches that have been stubborn and tried to stay in their ways, especially offensively, and, um, you know, cost them their jobs. So it's totally changed. Um, yeah, and now defenses, I think defenses are catching up, even though you don't see it maybe with the scores, but just the way they play players and, and people aren't running, running all over trying to get lined up. They've kind of figured out, I think some teams have, all right, you know, just to line up play field and boundary players and, and not try to have all the rules you used to have because, you know, you just see teams go fast and people really struggle with that and guys just wide open all over the field. Whenever the NFL corners in secondary – 
talk this year, a lot of the safeties and corners, they said that the younger guys were actually the hardest to cover. Like the, the young wide receivers, for whatever reason, this last draft class, I'd assume it's going to happen going forward. Do you think that the wide receivers, because of the way the offenses are in college right now, are much more NFL ready, especially because you've been in the NFL now? And do you think that's just a trend that's going to continue? Um, I've not thought of it that way. I just think, you know, there happened to be some really, really good young ones um, last year and now again in this class coming up um, that are able to make the transition. And so I don't know that it's necessarily the offenses, you know, because there used to be a lot more pro style offenses, you know, that were in college, you know, just like we used to be and, and getting guys, you know, more, you know, prepared to do exactly what they're going to do at the next level. Now we've, we've moved a little bit from that still have elements. But um, I'm not really sure of that. How do you feel about the pro-style quarterback, uh, you know, the guys that are pocket passers? That's a highly sought-after conversation right now because, obviously, the Mac Jones convo with Justin Fields, the Trey Lance out there, and Trevor can run. Everybody seems to be able to. How do you feel about the future of, like, a pocket passer? You think that's dead? Well, I, I don't think it's dead. It's, I, I wouldn't. I would put Mac Jones in that category, and they just won a national championship. Basically, blew out everybody to play. So, um, I think that I think it, it works. Obviously, um, they set a lot of records there. Um, you got to have the right. No matter who your quarterback is, I think you need to have the right pieces around them. And so, if you have a pocket passer, you know you're going to need people that stretch the field more because you're not going to run the guy as much. And that's what they had at Alabama with, you know, the great receivers. So. Um, I think it's putting the pieces around it always. And the quarterback's always hard to evaluate. And we see it all the time. You know, fellow guy's not very good at one spot. He gets drafted somewhere and he goes to another place. You know, coaches get, you know, too much blame and too much credit for winning and losing because a lot of it's about the players that we have. It's the same thing with the quarterbacks. You know, quarterbacks go into a different culture and different players around them and all of a sudden perform much better than the team they were at before. So, you know, the same basketball, you know, where you can just do it yourself and, and take over a game. You know, you got to have a lot of a lot of things around you um, to be a really good quarterback. You got a chance to see a lot of these quarterbacks, I'd assume, that are coming out this year. And with your experience of growing up, basically, in NFL families and everything like that, you think that these guys, because last year, Joey Burrow, uh, by all accounts, great uh, going to be a great pro if he can keep his head though like because yeah. there, there was a game last year where it looked like he actually lost his head because he got hit so hard and so often so hopefully they'll be able to protect him justin herbert i get it. he's balling he's going to be on his way uh to a, i guess the the jury's still out on that but it's not easy for young quarterbacks to make the trade there's only 32 jobs you know and i think that is something that kind of gets lost in this entire thing how do you feel about these young guys that are potentially going to the nfl and have you got a chance to even and watch them or do you care about that at all now that you're full-time Ole Miss yeah I, I don't get to watch them you know like like the NFL teams do or, or draft experts and things but um you know just uh, again it's what guys are drafted into what's around them has so, so much to do with it um because you see it all the time and like you said there's only 32 jobs and you don't get to you know be a receiver or a corner or a linebacker oh we're going to rotate in and play half the game and you know, develop the guy, you know, as the season goes on. Mm. You know, if you're not the guy, for the most part, you don't play. And so, um, and it's such a almost impossible position to truly be accurate in evaluations because in college, we, we get very little time to evaluate them, very little in person. NFL, you're unlimited with your meetings with them, how much you see them, all the film study from college and the workouts and everything, pro days. And they still bust half the time you know, with, yeah. all, with all of that. So it's just a really hard thing to, to evaluate. And just because you were good in college, as you see, doesn't doesn't translate to the NFL. And again, a lot of that is where were you at in college and what was your system, what was the culture, and what were the players around you? It, you're saying it, it sounds like this is real, and I assume this is your entire motto with building up that old Miss team. It's like, a lot of pressure gets put on the quarterback to be – it's a win-loss stat, basically, is for the quarterback. What you're saying is there is zero real 
way to evaluate how one person's doing over another person because, for instance, we had a graphic we put up earlier. Patrick Mahomes, the weapons that he has is fucking awesome. Now, he's a quarterback that can make every single play, every single throw. Andy Reid also draws things up. Tom Brady down at Tampa Bay, the amount of weapons that they have is just unbelievable. If we are to judge Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, who are going to go down Mount Rushmore quarterbacks in the history of the NFL, probably Patrick Mahomes is going to win nearly as much as Tom Brady wins Super Bowl wise. But whenever you whenever you look at their offensive weapons compared to other people, you're saying it's impossible to evaluate how a quarterback's gonna do unless you know the situation they're going into. Yeah, and not just the weapons, that's that's probably the most important, but what is the culture that's around them? You know, and, and what is the what is what's the coaching that they're gonna get? Um because again we see that all the time, you know, a coordinator comes in or or goes and all of a sudden a quarterback gets better or worse when he leave when he loses them. So you know, there's so many variables to that spot. Again, no disrespect to things, but if you're a great cover corner, coaching probably ain't that important. Terrible, you know, and, and the rest of your team's not that important. You can cover cover the guy or you can't. Quarterback's a whole other animal. Oh man, that's awesome. Ty, what do you have? Coach, uh, I based on what you've seen so far in the spring, do you feel like you and your staff have kind of made up for that lost time last year? Like, are things kind of opened up and, and you guys are all back in the building or there's still restrictions? Do you know what to expect for the, the upcoming season? Well, I think defensively it's helped us a lot. Um, I think that in general, if you looked at first-year staffs, um, some did well offensively, but most of them struggled defensively because you had no spring ball with your guys to learn scheme and to, and to tackle. So I think that showed up a lot. So hopefully having springs can help us a lot in that area. Um, but as far as the COVID part, for the most most part, um, we're back to normal now. Oh, nice. Do wow. you, does everybody have to get, we talked to Mac Brown. I think he said, as long as everybody there got vaccinated, they're allowed to do whatever the hell they want. Is that kind of the SEC thing too? Do you know? Uh, we're still one, one test a week. Um, I believe um, oh, okay. vaccine does get you out of that for a while, though, yes. Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Coach, how often will NFL teams call you about your players or even players that uh, you coached against? And then how many times do you read something about a player that you know is a stud that is burying them and is just absolute bullshit? There you go. Well, um, we get some calls, probably not as much as you think. I think that – Again, no disrespect. I think a lot of people in the NFL that you know think, okay, well, we got to figure it out. We don't need you know opinions from college guys, and <laughs> and that may sound crazy to you, but that does happen. And I was there. I remember going to the Raiders and saying, all right, on every draft prospect, the position coach called the college position coach, you know, asked the intangibles, asked what they think of them, and they all looked at me like, wait, we're going to do what? We don't need their opinions. So I think that that probably happens a lot, but. I know there's guys like like Bilicek that had personally, I remember a guy getting like the third round night before the draft, him calling me to ask my opinion on him, um, you know, not even a first round pick. So, you know, so, some people do it and, and well, I think a lot of people don't. What but as he- far as different reports and stuff, I mean, that's why they have so much ability to, to research things um, and not go off of, you know, what some, some media guy says about how a guy prepares or, or doesn't. That was directly at Orlovsky right there. (laughs) I think that was directly at Orlovsky. And I do love what you just did there. When Belichick calls you, does he ask about, like, uh, how he fits in? What what are the questions if – like it's like it, that's the type of stuff right the film stuff because i can see them being like hey we don't need college football minds telling us i could see the arrogance of an nfl person saying that but to ask a head coach about how he fits in with the team and everything that just seems like a natural question i mean that that makes that seems to make a lot of sense is that what they're asking about him why doesn't yeah, that um happen? really good ones um like him you know he he's so smart he'll call and say i remember it was a tight end when you're in, he's like, okay, I remember you had Zach Miller, you know, 10 years ago at the Raiders or whatever it was. How do you compare him to him? Um, you know, just that's how smart he is to be able to remember who you had and players you were around and compare them to. You know, that's why he's so great at that. Oh, man, that would be awesome. Jeez. Why is everybody not doing that? That seems like a very natural move. Hey, yeah. listen, I need to find out what this human's like. I'm about to invest a couple million dollars potentially, and I should call the people that were with him every day for the last at least three and a half years. Makes no sense. What's next on the docket for the Ole Miss Rebels? Spring ball happening right now? We're about to wrap it up. Do we have a spring game? What's going on? We do in a couple of weeks. We're halfway through, um, and then we have the Grove Bowl. 
um, to wrap things up. So again, it's been good Groove. defensively to get guys out there. We had some transfers that had to sit out last year and, and a lot of mid-year players in here to help us uh, defensively. So our quarterback, Matt Crell, comes back from a really good season at times. And so <laughs> for him to improve um, offensively. How's your relationship with your quarterbacks? I'd like to think pretty good. Um, I, I think that uh, Matt and I've gotten along real well. You know, really easy kid to get along with. He wants to be great. Kind of laid back California personality. So he says we get along because of that, I guess. But, um, <laughs> you know, he, he he's really special. All right. Well, good luck to you. Good luck to Matt. We appreciate your time. I love the trophies behind you. Can't wait to see you win some more down there with Ole Miss. I assume your name is going to be one that's highly sought after for a lot of gigs. Excited to see you do whatever the hell you do in this wild football life that you've had. Ladies and gentlemen, Lane Kiffin. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Coach Lane Kiffin down there. He's Just an awesome. old ball coach, man. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. It seems like he has lived 70 years of football life. He's been a head coach everywhere. He's been a position coach. It seems like he's been coaching since he's like 10 years old at this well, point. Well, that's what I forget. I looked. His first head coaching job was with the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you, you remember, and it's like, nah, he must have been, you know, like SC or something. Like that was his first head coaching job was with the Raiders. Well, then when he was at SC, he got fired on the, on the tarmac, uh, on the tarmac uh -huh. at like 3 a.m. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. He mentioned that the last time he was on. Mm -hmm. What a life. And by the way, that old Miss team. They scored some points last yeah. year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, quarterback's good at times. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not get too crazy. Okay? Let's not get too crazy. By the way, I did see um, Mick Cronin Ooh. compliment his team. Did he? No way. After they lost, yeah. Come on. He complimented his team. Oh, so he's only happy when they lose. No, no. He was like, I think he's a not satisfied till we get the job done type mm -hmm. guy. And then whenever they were, it's like, hey, now we love him up. You know, mm -hmm. hey, now love me later. Either. That's right. Ain't that right? That's right. Don't be a fucking slap dick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Rolando in Southern. Shout out, Coach JB. Let's go to Rolando in Southern California. What's going on, Rolando? What's going on, Pat and the boy? How you doing, pal? doing good man working right now smoking a blunt enjoying my day how about you guys hey trying to do the same thing uh, i mean i have veered away from the blunts and i only smoke cbd at this point because mm -hmm. i'm in indiana but of course i love what you're speaking right there rolando what do you want to talk about absolutely love it and i want to talk about the fact well first of all before i get into my question shout out to miss mcafee for for the brand i have you know what Love her, so what she's doing, changing the world is absolutely oh, yeah. amazing. So, shout out to her for that. Shout out, Mrs. Mrs. By the way, please have a little respect. We did get married, it cost a lot of money and a lot of time. <laughs> Thank you, no, but shout out to my wife, shout, shout, out. Out. shout, shout, out, out, shout out to Samantha. Yeah, what do you want to talk about, Rolando? So, the fact that we're Let's talking sure. about if Evan Rogers is going to come back or the question that if we're going to extend him is absolutely ridiculous. Mark Murphy coming out and not saying the damn thing is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, the man wanted an MVP. Pay the man whatever he wants. Give whatever. him a blank check. Give the man his yep. money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, Rolando. We, we appreciate that. We feel the same way. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's We're right. wondering why it's not happening already. Everybody's wondering why it's because there's extensions given to other people. There was voidable years made. There was contract salaries turned into contract signing bonuses to go ahead and alleviate some cap space. There's only one year left of guaranteed money. Mike Greenberg asked Mazio on this morning, is, a, is conversation around league circles that this is Aaron's last year in Green Bay? And he said, some people are saying that. So what is that? even mean we don't know but with one year left of guaranteed money on the contract you have to think something's either happening where they're trying to extend that there's no way either side will let this happen they know what the conversation will be all year they know what the implication will be something has to get figured out here you would assume or do we have to potentially stare down an Aaron Rodgers on the move situation. No, 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 no. Yeah. You, you said it. Something's going to get done. We don't exactly know when, but you, you'd be crazy to think something doesn't get done. And guess what? If it doesn't, then we raise hell. Then we raise hell. But it, and right now, we just we lay in wait. He does not want to retire from football. No. Nope. He said that on Shailene Woodley's Instagram. Mm -hmm. We synced it on Aaron Rodgers' Instagram. Mm -hmm. He said that he did the math. He would love to be the host of Jeopardy. Said that mm -hmm. very yeah. openly. He's been very good. First two nights have been, been awesome. Great. Let's assume it's only going to get better. Very mm -hmm. smooth. Miles ahead of the other hosts. Okay? Yeah. yeah. That's, just, that's just cold. Hard. hard. 
Facts. Facts. Uh, but he did the math, 46 days of shooting, like you do in the offseason. I don't know if that's how Jeopardy wants to do it, but he, there was no thought of him retiring either. Mm -mm. I thought potentially, quietly, not on the microphone, when he said, you know, he loved and would like to be the host. And then he even said to me, you know, you made a leap. A lot of people call it stupid, and it's been very good. Mm -hmm. And I was like, quietly, I was thinking, like, is oh. this motherfucker going to oh. retire? If he retires, <laughs> if he does one more year where the guaranteed money is, if he does one more year, then retire to take over Jeopardy, legend. Like, yeah. okay, like oh, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, Packers fans wouldn't love it. And if, I would not love not being able to watch Aaron Rodgers continue to play football. The NFL would miss him. But him going straight from maybe back-to-back -back MVPs yeah. yep. to go ahead and retiring and playing and being the host of Jeopardy, in my eyes, I was like, that would be insane. Amazing. But then, literal answer to my quiet thoughts from Shailene Woodley's mm -hmm. Instagram where he was like, I'm not retiring. No, no, I can actually do both. Yeah. And I was like, okay, all right, let me put that back down. Let me mm -hmm. bottle that back down. So that means something does have to get done. You would think. In the world of the NFL, the guaranteed money contract is all that matters for anybody. That's why all these voidable years and the money's guaranteed here and here is what you have to pay attention to in these contracts. One year left with any guaranteed money. Neither side likes that. Mm -hmm. Okay, nope. Neither side likes that. There will be some sort of conversation. We assume that it's happening right now mark murphy won't give any details but let's assume something's happening there especially because he doesn't want to retire yeah exactly and also mark murphy like yeah he he could have said something different but you know no matter what he says in that situation there's gonna be a big tizzy afterwards regardless so but we do appreciate bob Domofsky. absolutely oh, yeah. absolutely you know what i mean <laughs> stuck in a flame a little bit let's get tommy down here in florida what's going on tommy boy <laughs> how's it going boys not too bad how are you I just want to give a shout out to Tone for uh, Hammer Down Daily. There we go. Four o'clock. Uh, four o'clock Eastern. Four o'clock Eastern. Please, if you're going to say it, let's make sure we give a full plug for Old Tone. Four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Hammer Down. Uh, we appreciate that. What do you want to talk about, Tommy? So I'm a big 76ers fan. My family's from Pittsburgh. There's no basketball team, obviously. You know that. Yeah, but big, uh, big basketball guy, so I'm a big Sixers fan. I was just wondering your thoughts on the whole 76ers versus Nets situation. Nets don't really have a lot of chemistry going into the playoffs uh, with everybody being out. So right. I think this might be the Sixers' year as long as Braun doesn't have anything to say about it. How old are you, Tommy? 19. Okay. All right, appreciate you, Tommy. Because in Pittsburgh, the Lake Show used to be on at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was no basketball in Pittsburgh, but late night, the Lakers were on. Kobe, Shaggy, everything was on late night. I think a lot of Lakers fans were created potentially in cities in the Eastern Standard Time Zone that didn't have an NBA team because of those late night games and because of what that team was able to do. When it comes to the NBA, I know next to nothing except for put that weapons graphic back up. Please. Okay, so this is what wins in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, the NBA is damn near the same thing. <laughs> look at the Nets roster. Mm -hmm. Look at the Sixers roster. I understand Embiid's balling. Ben found a shot. I understand all that shit. Wow. But the Nets have just as many offensive weapons as the fucking Buccaneers do. <laughs> yeah. yep. Okay, and I'm just I'm a, that's that's kind of how the game is played. It is why my lack of NBA fanhood is something that is rather real. I keep up with it. I like Zion. I like Braun Braun. There it is. I love Kevin Durant. Okay, so if you're good, I love you. I actually want the Pelicans to either bring in six to seven other All-Stars uh -huh. or let Zion fly. He just beat Shaq's record, I believe, last night or whatever. Yeah. Tied, Shaq, tied, yeah. tied Shaq's record last night. The guy's unbelievable. He's on a team that they're good. They ain't never going to win. No. Please put that graphic back up. Because that is what the Nets and the Lakers and uh, every other team that's going to win looks like. Yeah. Okay. And that's exactly why the Nets are going to win. I'm sorry if you're a Sixers fan, but the Nets have a Team USA roster at this point. There it's was over. people paying their teams to leave to go to that Nets team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, fuck however many. I'm going to sit on the bench for another team. Yeah. yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to go win a championship. Right. Write you a check for 18 million. They right stink now. for that yeah. team. Show up in Brooklyn and they're unbelievable. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Somehow they jump up <laughs> team. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, you know why? Because every possession you realize this is a possession on a team that could potentially win a championship. Mm -hmm. There it is. So every possession matters. Every defensive effort matters. Every practice matters. Every off day matters. Every meeting matters. And that's why you want greatness in your building because accountability is automatically lifted everywhere else. 
happens in all sports. So well, that's why out. when Tom Brady's a free agent, you get his fucking ass in your building. <laughs> yeah. When Rodgers is next year, you, you go get his after ass that in your guy. fucking building because yeah. everybody else is going to work harder because they're like, we got a guy. Yeah. Okay. Hour one's wrapping up. Not a bad show. No. There's nothing going on. But in the second hour, wait until you hear this. Oh. <laughs> but let's talk about what happened directly outside of WrestleMania in the MetLife parking lot. And this guy tells Zeke, yeah, hey, just follow that car right down that way. If that awning was literally six inches lower, I'm dead. Hey, who the fuck told you guys to drive down there? So I get a text from Nick that says, uh, call me when you can. And I never get that type of text from Nick, right? Granted, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, the boys, the Roadhawks didn't have their WrestleMania moment. We talked about it earlier. All of us felt like we were in, like, a trench in World War II. <laughs> yes. well, tell you what, the WWF would be proud. That's, <laughs> it, it, that's a lot of fucking destruction. I thought the entire building was coming down. The best looking uprights I've ever seen in my life. Hey, who the fuck told you guys to drive underneath there? I will never forget <laughs> April 7th. They said to come to the loading dock. Yeah, they want some shots, so they're gonna come out with cameras and like show that we're like tailgating. The tailgate spot. Do a U turn? Is that what he's saying? I don't know. We'll just do it a U turn. Wanna move up? And this guy tells Z, yeah, hey, just follow that car right down that way. And so we're thinking, okay, no problem. Back it up. So Z moseys on down this way and just fucking. Oh. I think it's stuck. But I fucking told you guys. You guys did. Oh, you're supposed to come through this side, like right here. I didn't tell you to go through there. You told me to come. Yeah, right down this way here. Fuck. Come on, guys. Fucking A. I'll be looking out there. Oh, fuck. So, what you just heard was Ooh. a. RV that was clearly too tall for an awning that was hanging over and Zito was going so fast in that the entire RV ended up under the awning yep. and it wasn't until they were all the way under that Zito said oh I think we're stuck <laughs> and at that moment he puts it in reverse and rides back through all of it. And that's what the this the piercing sound of metal oh, that you heard ripping through. Fucking we They're fucking everything up up there? The backside fuck too. How's it going, sir? Yeah. Yeah, they just keep fucking sending us through here. 
send it somebody out just to hang tight, all right? Uh, Did you check the top? I mean, it's, yeah, it's destroyed. No, oh, like the whole thing is. Oh, fuck. Yeah? Like, they're gonna fucking send me fucking no, through somewhere. You know, there's not you. everything, everybody all right there? Yeah. yeah. No. Stay calm. Yeah, you're right. Stay calm, kid. They told you to go through. It's one turn. It's on your clearance. I am on the bus with the rest of the WWE <laughs> roster driving by. There's two fire trucks, there's a cop, there's paramedics, there's quite a scene. Fucking A. How's it going, sir? Right. Oh, yeah, they sent me through, and I was just like, all right. Yeah. And we're just rolling by going into the, the fucking MetLife Stadium. And I get a Corey Graves. Is that your RV? <laughs> yeah, you guys hear about Max? These guys drove a fucking RV <laughs> into the arena. <laughs> into the arena. That road to WrestleMania, man. Hey, I'll tell you what. That's the furthest I've ever seen any vehicle get underneath that fucking awning. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show here on Wednesday, April 7th, 2021. Just had Lane Kiffin on the show. In this hour, we'll have Levante David. Yeah, we'll talk wow. to Levante David of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here in about 22 minutes. Cannot wait for that. Also, Dr. Scott Goldman. Let's oh. go. Yeah, he's... He's the founder of the Goldman Standard, which is a, uh, you know, it's a uh, personality test, a mental test that a lot of people use. Oh, yeah. yeah. The AIQ. Come yeah. on. We just found out about the AIQ yesterday uh, when Mark Sanchez told us about it to basically talk about Justin Fields' incredible recall, which is what this test actually proved that he had incredible recall. Mm -hmm. uh, he scored a 130. Allegedly, Patrick Mahomes scored a 108. Wow. We did not know the test existed, but if Patrick Mahomes is getting tested, let's assume that something's popping off there. We'll go right to the source. He will not tell us what people's scores were because, mm -hmm. you know, HIPAA. Sure. Yeah. But yeah. Of but uh, <laughs> the hip. To is up. that? I mean, it's Tactical. mental. Oh yeah. Mental. PhD. He is a doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but he will tell us more about the exam that Justin Fields seemingly did very well on, and I will also ask him why nobody knows about it. Like, yeah. how come that isn't mm -hmm. something that's being told? And he'll probably say, "Well, I don't tell people scores." So I, I would assume he thinks that maybe, I don't know. I'm excited to find out why we only found about, out about this yesterday. Because Justin Fields might have a photographic memory. We need to find out. Well, and if they promote the Wonderlick scores, if this is something we should be concerned with, you got to know if, hey, if, if these numbers come up at next year's combine, how do we digest these? Yeah, excuse me. Uh, you got the Wonderlick. We want to know what the Goldman says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. What's Goldman? <laughs> What's his Goldman score? You got to check the Carfax, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. That was there yeah. for a while. You know what I mean? The blue book then came through. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kelly. But I, you got to check the, yeah, Kelly, you got to check the, uh, you got to check the Goldman, dude. You need to know what he got on Goldman. What do you think Young Rock would have got on oh, Goldman? Oh, I will tell you what. Last night. 180. Last night, maybe. Don't do it. Maybe one of the worst half no! hours. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, ever? Oh. Ever? No. Show. One of the worst half hours ever of television? History of television. No, oh, come on. You don't say. No. No, listen, I'm not giving up on the whole series. I just think they mailed it in on this one. They knew they were going to go up against the WWE Hall of Fame last night. Uh, they knew that there was potentially going to be low ratings for this particular episode. But this one stunk. Yeah, wow. it was really bad. It, it was, was so good. Oh, good message wow. all around. <laughs> so you guys have just been... Zito, like, when you do that, though, nobody... Like, listen, I actually... I, I loved it. It loses all credibility. Like the show, though. <laughs> I watch it every time. I have it on DVR. No, I rewatch them. Me too, by the way. I, I spend two hours. I watch it two times, four times. <laughs> 
Yeah, but what you're doing right here, everything you're doing is killing your credibility. Buried. And I feel like we're potentially. Because I love The Rock. I, Putting yourself listen, in a pretzel. Listen, is, I feel well, like no, you and I, I, I potentially, I aside from the Rotten Tomato score, uh -huh. are the uh, the first night, are the only people that are publicly talking about Young Rock in a positive fashion. So we have to be able to point out the flaws. Last night's episode was the worst fucking show I've ever seen in my life of anything. Mm. And you know why? Why? There wasn't enough rock. Oh. That is why the show stunk. Huh. And by the way, I, they put a lot of pressure on this guy portraying Hopkins? rock. Hopkins was another guy. Zito, you didn't watch the episode, I don't think, at this point. But <laughs> I said the guy. The, the, the guy. I'll get to the chopper. The guy that, I won't let you go. The guy that portrays the rock at the University of Miami at this stage. Yeah. The man, it was a lot of him last night. Yeah. Okay. okay. A lot of him. He's carrying the entire. Tomato, what, tomato. That is the rock. No, yeah, but it's not though. That's what I'm talking about. And and I like I like Mama Rock in there. Yep. Okay, Grandma, I she got exiled to Samoa for a couple of years. Really? So that's rock. He saved her. He brought her back whenever he loophole. was in college. A loophole in the law he found. But like they they decided to focus on something I think that was like, okay, this stinks. Give me more Rock. Give me more scenes. Give me more. This guy. Okay, I get it. This is where his love of action movies happened, which is what at the University of Miami. I guess it happened okay. alongside this guy mm -hmm. Hopkins while he was Shut trying to, trying to hustle this fern, uh, phone service job that he had to have because Just he was on academic probation. Blah blah blah. The whole thing. Anyways, it sucked. It was bad, uh, and it, it made me actually frustrated that since we've been going to bat so loudly for Young Rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They put that shit out last night. It's going to be hard for us to stand up for. So I want to let you know, I'm excited for next week's Young Rock. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> it's going to be even better. It has to be. So what you're saying is the show stinks whenever The Rock isn't on it, on the show that's about The Rock, which he never really appears on? Well, the Rock was on it, but it was just a quick interview. Uh, it was okay. just a quick interview. Remember, okay. these are interviews while he's running for president in 2032. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me tell you the story. Yeah. And we go sure. back. Blah, blah, blah. We go back to the story. Reenactment's happening. Uh -huh. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. In the past, there's been like three to four of those per episode. You know, mm -hmm. like, let's move this thing quickly. Andre the Giant, yeah. we're here, we're doing this, we're doing... Last night, it was one big story, basically, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. about his love of action yeah. film and yeah. how it all came to be, and it stunk. It's, yes. I'm proud of you for being a fair, honest critic. Call it down the middle, unlike some other people in the room who are clearly biased and influenced in other ways. You are calling it like Shut you see it. Well, well, energy, baby. Zito's actually hurting. <laughs> Zoa Energy and Terramana Tequila <laughs> yeah. and, mm -hmm. and the brick Armor. French toast that he sells and Under Armour mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and all the movies he makes by not acknowledging how bad last night was because now nobody takes you serious whenever you talk about it. True. I, I just love The Rock. I understood it. That's where he got his promos from. He basically got it from Arnold Schwarzenegger. No. So the show blows. The uh, if uh, next week's episode so, is just as bad as last uh, night's, will you up. be out on it? No, no, no. no wow. I'm sticking with it now. Just because, I mean, let's not get crazy. There was Macho Man Randy Savage made an appearance oh, yeah. last okay. night. Beef jerky, okay. baby. Hey, there's so, yeah, he's beef jerky. Uh, he ate uh, how many pounds? Uh, the mom's, the grandma said. pounds of, uh, no, some sort of poundage of Slim Jims whenever he was. Yeah, uh, putting down about a 40. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it yeah. was that entire thing. So there's still moments in there that I will want to watch. And by the way, Vince McMahon has only made a couple appearances here. I yeah. assume that's going to ramp up at some point here in Young Rock. So I will stick around. But if the episodes are like last night going forward, which I do not. Expect by the way, it's uh, the well, fucking rock. Well, I don't know. It's got to worry you if this late in the season we're no. delivering a pooper like that. Yeah. You, you can't can go up against NWO more. being inducted into the Hall of Fame. New, new World Order last night in the Hall of that Fame. That's awesome. Dewey knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Dwayne Johnson know. knew it when so, he scheduled it. So you're telling believe. me the rock sees things like that and he says, Oh, he we'll sees mail it in this baby. week? Yeah, yeah. The the Rock mails it in is what you're saying. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. Listen, not every episode's going to be a fucking heater, dude. Yeah. I never watched Game of Thrones. Thought this was Sometimes there's a storyline the movie. I thought we were talking about The Rock. I thought we were talking about Dwayne Johnson. I thought we were talking about Seven Bucks, the guy who gives it all it every set, time. It was set you. up the storyline, dude. Oh, okay, no. please. This show sounds like the Pittsburgh Pirates of the MLB. Last episode, Sometimes you're going to show up. Yet. Last night's episode, highest ratings uh, yet? They're oh. just rating it in general, 7.6. Oh, so now they're lying. Sure, they down. are. IMDb, baby. So, so they're no, lying that's now. The episode rating was yes. a seven point six. Oh. All the other ones were below. So, see, below. IMDb is liking it because there's so many more actors involved in last night's episode, which was a part of the problem. I didn't give a fuck about any of these mm -hmm. people. What are we doing? In our here? defense, there was only sixty or sixteen people who rated it. 
Oh, so 16 yeah. people oh, watched this show. And I just am number 17. Do you think Hogan maybe asked him to put out a shitty episode? Hey, brother. Like, I'm going into the Hall of Fame, brother. I need the worst episode of Young Rock, brother. He, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he cut a promo last night. It sounded a lot like that. <laughs> he, uh, you know. By the way, Scott Hall surf walked out. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Hey, X Pac looked hey, good. Yeah. X Pac looked good. Good Very speech. Good. By yeah, the way, yeah. uh, that was a good speech for him. Kevin Nash, hilarious line about, uh, you know, people tell me I'm, we're not the Beatles, but we were at least Led Zeppelin then. Yeah, which is a <laughs> hilarious line because back in the day, NWO, they used to sell out arenas every single Monday night. It was huge, obviously. And then Hulk Hogan closed the closed the deal, you know, and he had the NWO Heavyweight Champion that he uh, championship that he uh, he spray painted, mm -hmm. and he actually said, you know, I never lost this, and I, I assume. He was trying to put over the WrestleMania was two nights, and in the middle of his promo, he talked about you know the the second night pro main event sitting alongside brother, and it was uh, it was you know he just wanted to prove he still had oh, one yeah. more one more good promo mm -hmm. if he needed it. But congrats NWO, fucking changed the game. Did he remember what city he was in this time? Ah, that was awesome. That was at uh, WrestleMania. Yeah. What, what do you what do you say? Welcome to the Silverdome, brothers. Yeah, he's standing right in the middle of the Superdome. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started booing him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but he had it. <laughs> he has that, you know, that uh, the bow on him. When mm -hmm. he's, oh my God, what a moment. It's the hair extensions. They're on too tight. Hey, they're beautiful. They are beautiful. Listen, if you have a chance to do a scullet, you do it. <laughs> I could, I could, I actually do grow hair back there. It is a possibility. Yeah, I know. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's yeah. what I've been okay. saying this whole time. You're a hat guy, anyways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we not just give that a go for at least Need to. a yeah. month or two just to see if we can get, Let it ride, baby. get potential Hulk Hogan just straight hair falling yeah. straight from here? I mean, it is beautiful. He, I, You know, like Brett Michaels puts that entire helmet on. Uh -huh. Yep. You know, when he picks that thing up. He, mm -hmm. here, here we go. go. Steelers. Here we go. Pittsburgh goes to the Super Bowl. Uh, no, no, that was that was real cadence. Yeah. You guys didn't do breaks. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Man, here good. we go, Steelers. Here we go. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. I like the fact that he. Oh my God, I love that man. Love him. Oh. But he did just pick that whole thing up. Yeah. Just put that fucking. How we look? How we doing? Is it good? Yeah. It's, how heavy you think that thing is? Oh, 18 42 pounds. pounds. Yeah. It's 30. Somebody was on uh, Shark Tank the other day pitching men's wigs. You know, had this whole speech about long hair and all this stuff. Men's wigs. Yeah, you know, there's that's starting to happen. People are gluing hairstyles onto their heads now. Yeah. Like that's a real thing. Yeah, you know? my uncle does that. Really? Yeah. He just glues it on. What's he have? A sick Mad Men comb over? Uh, basically, yeah. I think he goes every uh, two weeks to cut it. Like he trims it and they glue another one on. Yeah, basically. I think it's like uh, twice a month you got to yeah. get it glued onto your scalp or whatever. Is it itchy? Does it hurt? What twice happens if you sweat? We tried yanking it at the family party and not budge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see that rug? <laughs> They know, Give me your hair. They made it sound like it's a one-time payment, like once a year or something like that, like twice a year. Yeah, something like that. you go twice a year. Yeah, twice a year, and it, they what? They resell. Resecure it. Yeah, and can then you, you you can change the style you yeah. want and everything. Can you sweat? Oh yeah, you can sweat. It's real hair. Yeah. You can shower. Yeah, the guy was playing like football. The whole yeah. time. What do they do? They just put it on your head like tint on a window. They just kind of like <laughs> glue it on there. It's, and just, yeah. it's a white paste, and they put it on there, and they place it, and they. You can watch videos of it. It's, what happens uh, if your hair still grows a little bit? Is that not going to get ripped out whenever? Oh, the, I mean, oh you're going to oh, get your yeah. head waxed. That's I mean, I got I got nothing up. I'd be fine, to be honest. Oh, you, it seems like you do have a little information on this. Are you thinking about potentially doing this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You have okay, to. Okay, so look at that dome. So you have on. to. If you're a bald man, you can't tell me that you don't want a full head of hair. Yeah, but a Amen. lot of people with full heads of hair are like, man, it wouldn't be bad to be bald. I yes. just, it's decided for me. But the fact that now you can just glue shit onto your head is pretty cool, I yeah. think. Which one are you going to get? Are you going to get like a big box oh, I'm top? I'm going to get the fucking. Oh, oh you're yeah. the Marco Rose. So does this happen? You're doing this for sure? Uh, at some point, this will happen. So what do they do? They get a, a probably somebody wearing gloves. So I would the, I would assume this the place. They, they paint on mm -hmm. what like um, Elmer's glue, yeah. Gorilla glue. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's the same way they put like turf fields down. They open that orange cap, yep. uh -huh. <laughs> rubber cement, <laughs> just all over the they scalp. Just, they just rub that on. Is that what they do? There is the the pigmentation's pretty cool, but it just gives you like a bald fade and gives you like a proper hairline. But that's like ten grand. Yeah. What is that? That's just a it's tattoo? It's basically like a head tattoo of hair. Oh. Yeah. Like Bam Bam. Did, didn't he have the, yeah, he had the, he the scalp the tattoo to flames? Bro, could you imagine <laughs> if you get the edge tattooed on and then on the top you just got flames? Oh, that'd be sweet. Oh, that'd yeah. be sweet, dude. Get like Mo Salah's hair, like hey. a fro or something. Hey, good luck with that, by the way. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Yeah, Gumby's room is going to look like a fucking Lego chest. It's all the different types of hair. Oh, you think it's just going to be... Can you just pop them off? That'd be awesome. Oh, no, no, no. Are they like yeah, a pair of cool. shoes? No, you got to go and then they oh, do like... Things? They like measure your skull and everything to know what to do. To get the caps. Cram. And then it takes them 10 weeks to put the hair together. Oh my God. Jesus, and then you got time. And, and, then, I mean, and 10 then, weeks. Jeez. And then you go back and then you decide if you want it or not. Oh, so they give you like a two and a half month. If you, are you sure? Like so they, like they, they, literally, they literally put it on your head and then you say, I I don't fucking want it or <laughs> let's go. So when I cut my hair off for locks of love or whatever. Yeah. Is Let's that going go. to your? Yeah, yeah. your right. hair might be Gumpy's hair. Hey, it was good months. hair. It was very curly. If you get a good shot at it, can only hope. I can probably oh. look at it. What's that? Gumpy would look electric <laughs> with curly blonde hair with that beard. Yeah. Oh my God. So you're just gonna get like a, an incredibly good looking comb over. Yeah, like a tight tape oh. to the top of your yeah. head. And then I'll go. And then top. I'll go once a week to get the sides faded off. Oh, Gertie, yeah. this into us. This might be a good look. Let's go. Gertie, Dirty Gertie sent this in. Oh, oh. Look at that. Nice. Barbers do this like legit dirty saying in the back there. <laughs> they get real dirty with it. Yeah, I because a guy I remember called Wade the Barber on Instagram, uh, and the hashtag is hair units, and there's a lot of stuff going on. Wait, is, 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 it, is it, does he do like bald, white, or, or round white heads as well, this guy? <laughs> Uh, I'm sure I can find some real quick. Hold on. All right, Dirty Gertie, Dirty appreciate Dirty. that back there. Yeah, you need Dirty to do this now that I think about it. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. If you want to, I guess. I'm like trying to skull it. I'm starting to get a little peaks here. You see that? Yeah. Starting to get a little peaks here. I've looked at, you know, they say like uh, your mom's dad or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit, right? Because I've seen brothers very clearly. One has hair, one's bald. So what? They have different moms. Is that what you're trying Whoa. to tell these kids? No, they look exactly alike. So that's all bullshit, right? Yeah, that, my that's grandfather had beautiful locks. Your mom's dad? Yes. What are you saying? It's a lie. What are you, what my are you mom's saying? dad was bald, and me and my brother are both very, very bald. Okay, so it could potentially be true, but I'm not sure it is <laughs> always 50, true. 50. My mom's uh, dad, Russ. I think he had super wavy hair, which is similar to mine, but I think he had the super wisdom peaks. I, I think we, he died whenever we were very young. I, I'm not sure, but I'm not looking at him. But if it, it starts going at all, I'm fucking taping a mullet on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jay has good hair, though. Like, that's. Jay has great hair. Yeah. I think he's growing it back out right now, too. Are you growing it back out, Jay? Uh, no, just haven't got it cut for a while. She's growing out. His wife cuts <laughs> hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, his feet so hard. It's so hard to book an appointment. <laughs> She works all day. I don't want to make her work at home, you know? Hell yeah. What a guy. Out of baby Jay. Thank hey, you, Jay. Jay. Out of baby Jay. You got it, Jay. Jay, Jay almost was like, uh, you ain't got to go to work. Work, 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 work. You just cut my hair today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the phone calls. Let's go to Thomas in Ohio. What's going on, Thomas? Taping yeah, any yeah. hair onto your head, Thomas? Is I have not taped any hair. I think it's glue, oh, by the way. Okay, <laughs> Elmer's. Elmer's, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Elmer's, by the way, the best. Really, I was about to say the dead offices. I had yeah. terrible oh, experiences. Mm -hmm. Anytime it was a crafts class and Elmer's came out, I knew my day was fucking ruined. I, it was going to be all over my hands, and it was going to be all over the thing. I was going to have to clean. I was just was not a good crafts guy. But Elmer's did do, was a large part of a lot of our childhood. Oh, yeah. People had a weird time skate, like put on their hands and do yeah, that. Yeah, like, I never liked that though. Dude. That was fun. You got all over your you fingers. You liked that? Yeah, you. Yeah, that was the best part. Oh, hey, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be in there oh, for about two hours. That's what you were doing. So if I'm not, you know, if I'm missing history segment of this second grade class, Jesus, size, you know, fuck. What were you plus, thinking about? Plus, you start sniffing that thing. Woo. Yeah. See you next week. People you know? used to huff Elmer, thinking oh, something yeah. was going on. <laughs> yeah. Nothing was going on, by the way. That's why they all started buying cigarettes. Yeah, well, and then you, a lot of people started that's, popping the expo markers. That's how my hey, business. Let's pair these and see if it works. Uh, what do you want to talk about, Thomas? It did. 
Uh, shout buzz. out Pat and the boys. Oh, yeah. um, can you guys so, hear me? Yeah, I sound great, Thomas. Appreciate you, awesome. man. Shout out you, dude. Uh, so I'm just trying to talk about the Giants. So I, people are uh, like Sports Center got them at think they're going to come third in the division. I'm thinking they're either going to win it or get second. Who did they have winning the division? The Cowboys. Yeah, Cowboys and Washington, then Giants. Now, Washington is the team that I think everybody should have at the top Mm -hmm. of the NFC East. They are a team that was very young last year, very early in the Ron Riv era. They don't even have a team name yet, and they almost beat the Buccaneers. Let's uh, let's not forget Taylor Heineke Mm -hmm. almost beat the world champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers literally in a dogfight uh, of a game. That Washington football team with Chase Young on that defensive side who appears to be a better athlete than uh, just everybody at points. He's going to continue to grow. I like the culture they're trying to rebuild over there because of everything that has happened with that Washington team. feels like they should probably be at one. I got the Giants at two, strictly because the moves they've made, it feels like they're invested in winning. Uh, Not that every other team isn't, but they feel like they're invested in winning. Dak Prescott comes back to the Cowboys, maybe put them, tie them, I guess, there with the Giants at two because they got a lot of weapons. Mike McCarthy's second year. Dak, although he wasn't in the building because of COVID, I assume he'll be much more comfortable with the offense. Maybe the defense will be worth a fuck. I guess Jerry Jones is infatuated with Kyle Pitts. He's not the only one, so maybe they'll add in a weapon another weapon like Kyle Pitts that team but it feels like the Philadelphia Eagles are the only team that we all have zero faith in but I'm not 100% sure that I have anybody other than the Washington football team winning that division right now yeah but the Eagles do have the equation to win it all you know less thinky equals more more talent take over yeah you're right so when you, you know you gotta balance that as well yeah the less thinky thing is a big deal yeah but they should think about, you know, figuring out what they're going to do. Because yeah. <laughs> Jalen Hurts is the guy until he's potentially not the guy. Right, yep. Carson Wentz was the guy, and then he fired everybody. Then the, the full statue that you just built within the last three years is gone out of the building. <laughs> They gotta, they gotta do a little thinky in the front office area, less thinky in the player area. <laughs> yeah. That'll get figured out. But I like the Washington football team. I also like that the Giants are investing in winning. Not saying yeah. that the Cowboys aren't. They seem to do the thing. But the Cowboys always seem to be the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. But I like that Washington football team. We gotta get to a break. On the other side, we have a world champion joining us. Yeah. Hey. Levante David of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has been there since 2012. Oh. Will join us. Cannot wait to chat with him. Be a friend. Tell the friend in about four minutes. We'll see you then. Cheers. Is the MCDC name tag then? Because it's a long time. ACDC. Do you hate it? Do you love it? We gotta. I feel like we potentially offended you after finding out you're a diehard Metallica guy, and we call you MCDC. No, 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 no. Listen, I love classic rock as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I don't strike you as a numbers guy. Like no, you. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just whenever I heard you, I was just like, you know what? I'm not 100 percent sure this guy is just gonna be listening strictly to the analytics guy. I just kind of a feel like. Listen, I got through addition and subtraction. I'm <laughs> but the alpha comment was really, I wasn't directing that just at myself. I was saying that that's Brad too. Brad's an alpha. That's our coaching staff. I mean, let me say this about our coaching staff. One of the reasons I made the hires that I did with these guys, I know you'll probably end up asking this, was because just coming out of this COVID, I wanted to make sure we had more flexibility for the roster. And if these coaches need to play, Maybe a couple of games. <laughs> so, you know, not everybody's singing that way. Man. <laughs> All right, it seems like every three, four years, the Lions get a new head coach. It seems like the rebuilding process has been happening my entire life. 26 years old, and I've never seen a playoff win for the Detroit Lions. So I want to know how you and your coaching staff plans to make this one different. Yeah, look, first of all, I think I love Foxy, man. <laughs> i tell you what, I love the optimism that he brings. Um, look, I, w- I would say this to me, the short answer is, is Sheila Ford Ham. If you want hope, she's the one who's bringing the hope. Because I had put a serious thought into this as I was hiring my staff. I was, I was thinking about hiring you to see if you would like to be, you know, uh, our special teams coach. And, and then I thought, you know what, just, I know you doing this radio, it softened you up a little bit. <laughs> I'm so not to. All right, I hate to say that, Pat. <laughs> Um, I needed to just let that be known. Well, I want to let you know, true alphas know when to hang them up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Campbell.
I introduce you to one of the craziest things I've ever seen today. Look at this shit. This fucking Jeep is backwards in a fucking Taco Bell drive thru I was driving past this, and I had to fucking stop and take a video of this guy. He is literally backwards in a drive thru because his driver's seat's on the opposite side. Unfortunately, he did deny an interview post drive thru I wonder why. Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Oh, okay. This is a pretty good little beat, huh? Brand new sound. Griff? This is Patriot Way Bay. Oh, that's right. From DJ oh, Griff. Patriot Way. Um, <laughs> I'd like to listen to it, so I'm not going to... A pretty good beat. Mm -hmm. All right, DJ Griff, appreciate that. Um, new beat, same story. Ooh. <laughs> Today's presenting sponsor is the most comfortable pair of shorts and pants that you have ever worn in your entire life. Hell yeah. Sex is cool, but have you ever tried to wear shorts and pants with built-in underwear? Oh. Bird dogs are the comfiest, most versatile item of clothing on the planet. They stole Lululemon's designer, and now they're just doing it better. Summer's right around the corner. Hey. Oh, yeah. That's right. Hell Golf yeah. season's right around the corner. Uh, hey. All right. Contact time is right around the corner. Let's yes. go. Workout, swim, brunch, golf, bird dogs are literally the only shorts or pants you will ever need again. The comfort's fantastic, the fit is majestic, the material, wow, and the stretch is fantastic. Go to birddogs.com and a promo code PAT and they'll throw in a free bird dog's dad hat. The hats are sick, they're absolutely sick, okay? Don't judge the person wearing the hat, judge the hat itself. It is glorious, it is beautiful. It's the same exact hats as the 47 brand, probably worth like 30 30 bucks or so. Mm -hmm. The camo looks beautiful. That's birddogs.com promo code Pat. Boom, a free bird dogs dad hat with your pair of bird dogs. You will not take these things off. I actually golfed in them yesterday. They felt amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shout out to bird dogs. Shout out to that dad hat. And thank you, Connor, for modeling that. Hey, thank you for gifting me one. It does, fit. Awesome. it does fit well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Like a glove. Uh, as we wait for Levante David to get into the Zoom room uh, to join us, just his rep is in there right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Shout out. How's Shout out to the rep. The rep's going to watch. Hey, rep, we'd like to hear your judgments at the end of this thing, yeah. by the way. You know, How, I'm how's sure. the rep doing? You know, does anybody ever interview him? Nope. Nobody cares, oh, I don't think. Her. Jeez. Nobody cares, I don't think. I don't think anybody cares about okay. either of them. And that's probably, you know, that's probably not what they would want to do anyways. They just want to kind of see what's going on, then kind of just disappear back okay. into space. So we'll wait for Levante, David. But as we do that, we have to talk about Carlos Dunlap talking about re-signing with the Seattle Seahawks. He said that he was told by Russell Wilson, Ooh. he's here to stay. Go Hawks. Wow. That was a big part of why Carlos Dunlap said I came back. Carlos Dunlap has been around the NFL for a while. He is an incredible football player. He was going to be a free agent. He said he went back to Seattle. He enjoyed his time there was an instant difference maker as soon as he put his house up for sale in Cincinnati and got traded out of Cincinnati to Seattle. He said that Russell Wilson said, I'm here to stay. Go Hawks. 
It seems like all the reports of what was brewing behind closed doors have been settled. Congratulations to Seattle Seahawks fans to 12. Yeah, all right. A lot of people told me that I took an L in this one. Excuse me. Whoa. Can't take an L in someone. You're just reporting what yeah. other people are saying. That's right. Observe and report. Happy for the Seattle Seahawks. Happy for Russell Wilson. Intrigued to see the Pete Carroll-Russell Wilson relationship going forward. But that's what happens whenever you are at the top of the mountain like Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll have been and are currently. Speaking of the top of the mountain, let's talk about a Lombardi winner. Let's talk about a world champion. Let's talk about a man from... Miami, who's now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, ladies and gentlemen, Levante David. Yeah. What's up, dude? What up, what up, what up? How y'all doing? Hey, we're great. How are you, man? Great, man. I can't complain at all. Hey, good for you. World champion. How's it feel? You were down in Tampa a long time. Now, all of a sudden, you're a world champion. It looks like you guys might, you know, go for two, go for three down there. How's it feel to be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Levante David? Glory to God, man. Glory to God. You know, uh, First, for eight years of my career, man, has been real skeptical, you know, but now we was able to turn things around, man, get to where I always thought we would get to. And uh, to finally call myself a Super Bowl champion uh, after all those, you know, hard seasons or whatever, I uh, feel really good, man. Well, it's not just those hard seasons, by the way. You go back to high school, those early morning workouts, college, whenever you're, you know, basically getting MVP in every game you play. And Juco, it's just like all those things, you're hoping to one day be a world champion, plus the eight years in Tampa. Now you are. I hope you've enjoyed it. It looked like your entire team did on those boats, huh? You guys had a good time out on those boats, Levante. Yeah, it was a great time. One of the first times I've ever been part of something like that, you know, uh, they got the idea from the Tampa Bay Lightning, and uh, we follow suit, man. They, we, we see why they did it, man. It was real fun. Man. Everybody was just being themselves. Everybody was out there having fun, man. And the city, the city of Tampa, definitely enjoyed it, and uh, it was very fun to see everybody come out and support us. See, normally those Super Bowl celebrations are so big and so important because that's the last time that team is going to be together because in the NFL teams turn over I mean what what the Chiefs were able to do after winning the Super Bowl last year with keeping a a large majority of their players in the house including the bottom half of their roster that's not normal you guys followed suit were able to basically keep everybody in Tampa whenever you think about the thoughts of this could be a dynasty like run here Levante that has to be pretty exciting did Bruce tell the team like hey I'm we're gonna keep this band together does he, he said that in the celebration but has that been something you think that was a priority down there even as the playoff run was going or did you expect potentially people to leave after you guys won no, I, I felt like that was the plan all along. I felt like those guys, you know, got together and said, you know, they, they saw how everybody bonded with each other, how everybody got along with each other. And I felt like that was something they wanted to do. And, uh, and for, 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 for them to keep everybody intact, man, it's really huge because it's definitely some guys who, you know, definitely was deserving of, of the bag, you may say, you know. So we was able to, uh, you know, they was able to get, it, get everything worked out, man, and get everybody back. Like you said, it's real rare, man, but Everybody wanted to be back. That was the main thing. That's where it all starts. If everybody got to want to be back in, I mean, you obviously we win the Super Bowl. That's going to happen. Everybody going to want to come back. So it was able to work out the numbers and get guys back, man. And um, hats off to those guys in the organization, man. Hats off to BA for wanting everybody back. And hats off to Jason and Mike Greenberg for getting the job done. Mike Greenberg, by the way, this man, we've just learned of him. Mike Greenberg, by the way, for a long time in everybody's yeah. life was Mike and Mike. Yeah. Then get up. But now the Mike Greenberg that is potentially going to be studied for years to come is the salary cap guru basically down there in Tampa who is figuring out how to keep everybody in there. There's voidable years. There's uh, salaries being moved. There's this happening, this less money. It is really intriguing what's going on. It's going to set the tone going forward. Uh, Enough contract talk. Let's talk about Bruce Arians. As soon as he gets in the building, what immediate changes? Now, it's not just him. There's a lot of other old-ass coaches that have been floating around with B.A. for a long time that get down in there. What was your first, like, you know, when you noticed that crew got in there, it was like, okay, this is going to be different maybe than what it was in the past. What has Bruce kind of done to that Tampa Bay Buccaneers squad, you think? I mean, yeah, man. Uh, when I first talked to Bruce, he called me on the phone after he got the job. You know, uh, he, he he already viewed me as a leader. and he, he, he already watched me, you know, throughout the league. He said, you know, I was a great football player. So he reached out to me, you know, and told me, you know, things are going to change and it's got to change with leadership. And uh, it got to be a culture change. And we're going to get the right guys in, the right people in the organization to make that happen. 
And uh, he definitely did that, man. He uh, made us a, a tough football team. And uh, he put a lot of playmakers out there. And uh, he built through the draft and, and kind of built through, you know, free agency getting guys in and uh, kind of working with what he already had and then adding more pieces because he already knew he was a talented football team. You know, he wouldn't took the t- job if he didn't know we, we have no talent. So um, for him to come in and, uh, you know, just uh, change the program around and uh, change the culture of the program and, uh, in, in two years, uh, it's really, you know, impressive to see. I mean, B.A. is a respectful guy, man. Everybody respecting all the simple fact that he's he's real. You know, he's a real coach. He's genuine. And um, he's straightforward with you. And um, with him, man, you know, a lot of people always say this, but some really don't mean it. But he has a real open door policy. If you want to call, come in and talk to him, it's whatever. Uh, if you want to hit him up on the phone, he'll answer. And uh, he'll, uh, you know, tell you how it is. You know, tell him what he's thinking. Tell you what he's thinking. And uh, how to kind of get your mindset of how you know, to uh, help uh, get the team uh, on the same page and stuff like that. So it was real cool, man, to be, a, be around a guy like that. And, man, he got the great staff apart, uh, great staff around him to kind of, like, help him out. And, um, you know, it was really – it's very different from what I and, 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 uh, uh, experienced in the past. Yeah, me too. Whenever he took over the year, whenever Chuck Pagano was diagnosed with leukemia and he had to go to the hospital just four weeks into a new stint, and BA became like the became like the interim head coach or whatever. In his transparency, in his genuineness, yeah. like in yeah. his authenticity, it was like I mean, the way he would talk. He would talk shit. He would respond. Yeah. He would be emotional. He would be like it was like he was one of us almost. You know, it yeah. felt like he was like one of us. It was the first time I felt as if like okay, he's like a player almost. He he wants to talk shit and win just as bad as we do and it was like okay i immediate respect there uh, that's why i thought when he went on tv it wasn't going to be great because his first week he goes oh that guy wide ass open why is running over here yeah. and it was like uh, it was a good clip and everybody was like and cbs was like hey you can't do that anymore. Like, well you just you literally just got rid of why bruce is Bruce, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and then yeah. when Bruce brings in, you know, like Todd Bowles is a defensive coordinator. I mean, the, the defense early, whenever he gets there, not yeah. great. End of season gets very good that first year. Then last year, that defense, a couple injuries happened. But whenever you guys got back, it yeah. felt like the defense was a team that could go on a run. And obviously, you guys did. But talk about Todd. Talk about the defense. You got everybody back somehow yeah. on that defensive side of the ball. Feels like you're only going to get better. Devin White's riding his horse on the fucking stadium mm-hmm. field. Yes. I mean, there's a lot going on down there. You have to feel really juiced about what's going on defensive side as well. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, when I first talked talk to Todd Bowles, man, he reached out to me. You know, uh, he said, you know, uh, I know you played a 4-3 your whole life, man, but, you know, we're going to change some things. You're going to switch it up, but you're going you're gonna to feel comfortable with it. You know, me, obviously playing in a 4-3 defense my whole entire, life, whole entire career, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how fits was going to change and things like that. But, you know, after playing it that first year, I'm like, man, I don't want to go back to a 4-3. I want to stay in the, uh, stay in the 3-4 style defense. And, uh, the way he does things, man, he sets guys up to make plays, man. He gives guys uh, freedom to uh, do what they need to do to make plays. And um, he's definitely uh, one of those coaches, too, who's very transparent, man. He, um, if you got a problem with something, he'll come in. You know, he'll, he'll, he's open to you talking to him and how you could change it or whatever to make it help everybody else because he, he understands it. He gets it. You know, he played defense, so he gets it. He know that, you know, this might be a hard thing for you to do, so let me switch it up and make it easier for everybody not just you, but for everybody around that's on the field. And um, that's something that, you know, he uh, takes pride in. And um, uh, I feel like that's why a lot of guys play hard for him, man, because he's he's real. Uh, he's fun to play with, man. You know, he's always on the sideline. He looks like he always got that serious, serious face on, but he's always joking around. He likes to play around, too. He's real competitive. You know, when we go against the offense, you know, he give us that – that competitive nature, man. Like he he <laughs> he want to dominate our offense just like how we want to dominate other offenses on the field. So it's real competitive, man. Throughout the whole year, and um, he's definitely somebody that uh, you, uh, that is fun to play with. Levante, play let's talk about. Let's say you said real competitive and everything like that. Let's talk about when Tom Brady comes into the building, okay? Yeah. And I was. You know, I I say stupid things into a microphone on a daily basis, try to cover the daily happenings in the sports world. When Tom Brady was a free agent, I was like, okay, so every team should be calling Tom Brady to get him in there, strictly because I was very lucky to be on a team where Peyton Manning was. I was very lucky to be on a team where Andrew Luck was. It was like when you have a guy, like a guy got, like it is, every the trainers are better, the equipment managers are better, the chefs are better, everybody's better because it's like, okay, we got a dude. When Tom gets in there, what is it like? 
like immediately? Did, do you see a, a raise or a heightened accountability by people? What was it like the, as soon as he got in that building? Hey, it's, a, it's exactly what you said, man. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. Everything is basically based on the players, man. Everything is based and fit on the players. You know, when Tom's in, you feel like, man, this got to be done perfect. The food got to be perfect. Strength style got to be perfect. The nutrition style got to be perfect. The, uh, man, whatever it is, the sports science guys got to be perfect, man. Like, everybody was just on point, man. It, just, it was a different field. Different, definitely a different field, man. But Tom is just a real genuine guy, man. He's a great guy to be around to as well. He's uh, always smiling. He loves he loved the game of football. He loved just being around the guy. And um, one thing I did respect about Tom, man, I do respect about Tom is, like, first thing you said, man, I'm like, I'm coming to you guys' locker room. I mean, don't look at me no different. You know, I'm coming to you guys' locker room, coming to earn you guys' respect. And um, uh, he just said, man, don't treat him no different. And uh, just, you know, treat him just like one of the guys, you know, crack jokes with me, you know, talk BS with me, you know, uh, talk trash to me when we're on the field. You know, we're just going to be like, just treat me like one of the fellas, man. And, um, that's all That's all I ask for you guys. And I'm going to go out there and put my best foot forward. And uh, you can see why he's one of the greatest of all time. How about him, like, at this point, Tom, I assume everywhere he goes, people are like, oh, Tom Brady, Tom Brady. He comes to a team, he's like, listen, I need you to talk shit to me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, I need, uh, this is what I'm gonna need, all right? I can't yeah. take, I, I, this is what I have to have, yeah. so let's just get this out there. You might yeah. feel a certain way, I understand who I, I need yeah. you to be a human towards me because if not, it won't work. Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Levante, uh, we had Vita Vey on and he gave us a little tidbit about uh, the team, or him at least, calling in Don Khan Su. Uh, What's his name? Big Girl. What's his yeah. name? Uh, what was his name? What was his actual oh, name, though? Well, you what know, was I was just going to say Sue, but I figured I'd try and, you know, <laughs> sneak it in there. Yeah, okay. Uh, did you ever partake in calling Sue Big Girl? Uh, I never called Sue Big Girl, but I did used to call, it's a crazy guy, because I used to call Vita Big Girl. So he, <laughs> <laughs> so he just, he got yeah. uh, yeah. Uh, it was like, it was a teammate of mine uh, named uh, Dan Lassan a couple years ago. He used to call, uh, Donovan Smith, big girl, and then I started calling call Donovan, big girl, and I called Vita, big girl, and now Vita called Sue, big girl. So it's a uh, transpiring thing that's happening, you know. So, but they got it. They took it and ran with it, though. They, they it's kind of like they thing now, I guess. Listen, your words and other people's words, not mine. The two big girls you got on defensive line, adding in there with Shaq and you, and it, I mean, it is the defense is scary. Yeah. It is a scary sight. And then Dominic and Sue came out and said, uh, which Vita Vea calls. Uh, him, big girl, we do not. No, we would never in a million do. He came out and said, like, hey, whatever the team needs, basically. He, he's yeah. at the point of his career, I think, where he was the highest paid player in the NFL at one point whenever he went to Miami, I think, out of Detroit. He's made a lot of money. Now he's a Super Bowl champion. I assume more Super Bowl championship rings for him, the better. But what is he like? Because there for a long time, I think he kind of disappeared off the radar when he went to Miami. I think people stopped talking about him. But there was a time there where, like, this is the most dominant force in football football with Ndamukong Sue. Last year, especially towards the end during the playoffs, we saw some Sue moments that were stupid. Alongside when Vita Vea got back, that D-line in there, those the big guys, your guys call big girls, they eat in there. That, that It's a real thing. Yeah, for real. I mean, like you said, man, like I, at the beginning when you said, you know, Sue said whatever he needs, but whatever the team needs, you know, that's the type of team that we have now, man. Uh, everybody just sacrifice and do what they have to do for the better part of the team. And then it all starts with B.A. I feel like he set that culture up and it was just trickling down to guys. You got a guy like Sue who had all the success he had in the league come out and, uh, and say that, you know, uh, means a lot. And then, um, like you said, man, I've been fortunate enough to play behind two, you know, two of the great three, the, uh, three techniques in the game, and uh, Jerry McCoy and then uh, Duncan Sue. So, uh, you know, it's definitely fun uh, yeah. playing around behind uh, him and Vita, man. Like. Hey, you gotta account for those guys. There's no way that you could just pass those guys up. It gotta be two guys, man, that to, 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 to take take on both of them to help guys like me and Devin fly around and run free. And then you got Will Ghost and you got Shaq and JPP, who are dominant dominant in their own rights. So uh it's definitely uh one of the most uh uh Scary front seven that I've been a part of. So yeah, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, your front seven. I think it was ranked the best in the league. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's only going to get better as you guys continue to grow together. We talked to Clyde Christensen. Do you know who Clyde Christensen is? Yeah. yeah. Black coach. 
He's a cool dude, man. Yeah, he's, yeah. I don't know if you uh, know him well enough. He is a, you should get to know him. He's a great dude. He came on though. And I think it's just because he doesn't like going home ever, you know, but he was like, <laughs> it, I, I really wish, right? Like, I wish we had right, right, like eight more weeks. I, feel, I Like I know the Super Bowl is this week, but it feels like our team, if we had eight more weeks, we would be even better, right? Right, right. Like we're starting to jail, right? Like we're starting to, we're starting to come together. But it, do you all feel that way? Like you guys feel yeah. as if like that Super Bowl game, you look, I mean, everything. It was yeah. just dominant. You guys yeah. feel like that is what is you, – you guys feel like you're just not even close to your max right now, huh? Yeah, it still wasn't even our best game. Um, you know, that's the bad part about it. It wasn't our best game. And, uh, you know, like Clyde said, man, we felt like it was – everything was just going – rising, man. Everybody just getting better and better. People understanding better. And, um, you know, I mean – I don't know about it. I can't, it could have been eight more weeks. I don't know about that. I was ready to be. I was ready for the season. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, hey, 17 games next year. 17 yeah. games next year. Does that change anything for you? Going on, what, year nine, year 10 at this point? Year 10, man. Um, hopefully, man, the coaching staff does a great job just taking care of guys who need to be taken care of, man, and make sure everybody's uh, make sure everybody's ready, you know, week in and week out. I mean, for me personally, man, I love the game of football. I mean, it adds another game to go out there and play the game that I love. But at the same time, you got to think about how draining it can be, you know, mentally and obviously physically. So hopefully, you know, people have things in place where they can take care of the guys to help them last that long. Yeah, I hope so too. And it, as a fan and as a media member now, like we love it. Like, hey, yeah. hey, hey, make those guys. Okay, let's spread this thing out over twelve months. Let's mm -hmm. give them fourteen bye weeks. Let's do. <laughs> let's go ahead and have seventy-five games. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's do this thing. But it's just not realistic, especially because towards the end of the season, there's a lot of guys crawling to the finish line because of nagging injuries, mentally as well. You brought that up. That never gets talked about. It's always like the physical aspect. It's like mentally too. There's a lot going on there. Last question for you here before we let you go. Can't thank you enough for your time. By the way, we really appreciate this. Um, what is it about South Florida boys, dude? Like, what is it? Why, why, why is Miami and South Florida just this haven of NFL guys? It feels like at this. It used to be okay, Pennsylvania, yep. mm -hmm. Ohio, Texas was big, California mm -hmm. was big. There's been a couple of states, but it feels like South Florida in particular yeah. is really trying to change the game completely. Is it the? Is it just like everybody loves football down there? Do you start as soon as you're Clint Session? Uh, who is one of my teammates, he said whenever he was like, I forget, maybe 12 or 13 or something, he was in between buildings in the neighborhood, uh, full pads on with the entire neighborhood, and they were doing, he was doing full Oklahoma drills wow. as like a 12-year-old in front of the entire hood, basically. Is that just how it is? Like, hey, we play football down here? Is that why? It, it's definitely how it is, man. A lot of guys start football when they're about five to six years old, and then you got guys from different neighborhoods, man, that you grew up around, that you compete with, you know, uh, not with organized football, but just street football. You compete with them. Then when you finally play organized football, you get your pads, and then they get their pads, and you battle, you battle it out. You know, uh, you just go out there, like you said, you do, you call the hamburger drills. You know, I had a friend who stayed down the street from me who played for one part. And I paid for the other part. It was like, man, when you get your pads, we're going to do hamburger just. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's just how it was, man, at a young age, man. Everything is just real competitive, man. And, uh, like people say, man, we just we just built different, I, I would say, man. Everybody down here, man, You get once you get in the game of football down here, man, you just compete hey. and uh, hey. you just go to the ball. Hey, is this narrative absolute bullshit? I'm assuming the answer is yes, and science has proven this. But you know what they say, South Florida boys can't play in the cold. That's can't right. Play in the cold. <laughs> can't play in the cold. Too warm down there. Mm -hmm. Can't play in the cold. I mean, nah. I mean, we don't like cold. But <laughs> if, if, if football being played, we're going to ball out. Man, We're going to find a way to stay warm in the ball. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, congrats That's on the nice. Super Bowl. Congrats on a hell of a career thus far. Can't wait to see what you do. Uh, we appreciate your time immensely, Levante. Appreciate you, Pat. As always, man. Thank you. Hey, listen, hamburger drill. Uh -huh. <laughs> get them going, you know what I mean? Yeah. Week 17, week 18. Let's get some hamburger drills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Levante David. Thank you. Yeah. He's a cool dude. Yeah. Really cool guy. Mm -hmm. South Florida is different, man. Mm -hmm. I saw too. I think he won back-to-back -back state championships while in high school. Yeah. Had, you know, a bunch of guys on his team that played, you know, D1 and then in the NFL. It's insane.
the yeah. amount of South Florida guys that make it to the NFL. It, it, it's literally something. It's like, oh, Florida boy, you know, he, mm -hmm. like he's uh, that's just the way it goes. Probably going to be, oh, he's going to be much faster than you. Okay? Yeah. He is not scared to go. Like he will go for until he has to die if he mm -hmm. has to because they're they're playing in 195 degree weather yeah. down there yeah. in the middle of summer all year round. Mm -hmm. It's it really is. South Florida has become like the spot basically. I think Teddy Bridgewater was on that high school team while he was as well. They won. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. A few they times. They did. He was pretty good. Let's Couple get some games. phone calls. Big shout out to Levante. Hope to have him on again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, he was a cool dude. Hamburger drills. Yeah. <sighs> Clint Session, I forget whenever he was describing it to me uh, the first time, I was like, oh, so instead of like pick up basketball or whatever. Yeah. You guys are just like, hey, throw the pads Put on. The pads on. Pick up Let's Oklahoma go. drills. He's just like, <laughs> yeah. And he said there would be the entire, there would be bats, obviously. Yeah. And, oh, man, what a moment. That's awesome. And Mike Greenberg. Also, we, we weren't sure maybe if it was someone, you know, else under the, him. Mike Greenberg. Greenberg the yeah. Guy. Hey, yeah. shout out to Jason. Shout out to uh, BA yeah. and Mike Greenberg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Good for all of them down there. They seem to put that graphic back up. They somehow are going to be able to keep all of these people on the team, mm -hmm. including the best front seven in the NFL yeah. on the defensive side. They're going to be able to keep it for at least another year or two in this whole thing, especially if the salary cap is going to continue to go like this. I mean, it is. Worfs was a rookie last year, too. He, what he, one, he gave up one sack. Uh, Khalil Mack. One yeah. sack, <laughs> and Can't he was starting Khalil. tackle. Come on. Jesus. Pretty damn good. And then you look at that other team. They're all locked in for at least another three years. They lose Sammy uh, Watkins. Mm -hmm. He goes to Baltimore or whatever, but they'll find they'll get well, somebody Andy Reid will yeah. find somebody that we'll not know about, come out of nowhere. He ran a, a oh, this guy ran a 408 at yeah. his <laughs> combine. What was that? How did we not hear about Well, it was the Goldman Ford. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> of course. So that's how we hadn't heard about it, but it seems like it's pretty important. I would like to hear it. What do you got? Yeah, like if they get that dude, Sony, from Florida, who's ever Everybody's saying, oh, like, the oh, number one. The new yeah, Tyreek Tyree Hill. Hill. If yeah. they get him, it's just it's Andrew Reid saw a film of him and was immediately like, uh, all right, nobody look at him. Don't. <laughs> yeah. We are yeah. going to make a move to get that guy. Yeah, that feels like what's it. you got to have weapons. If you're the Cleveland Browns, a lot of weapons. You mm -hmm. should feel good about what you got going in. I think that is just modern football. Yeah. Modern football is you have to have explosives. You have to have an offense. Nick Saban, one of the most old school coaches of all time, admitted that last week. It's been pretty obvious that the game is changing. Defense wins championships. I agree. You have to have a good defense to win championships. They're going to have to get stops at crucial times, though. It's not getting stops for full games. Now it's like they got to get stops in crucial moments. Third quarter, fourth quarter stops because offenses are going to get theirs you just got to hope that your defense gets theirs more than they get got though there it is but there's a good chance they're going to get got though they just got to get theirs at the right time and because of how defenses are now with how good corners and everything are and you know as soon as the scouting report comes out right and you can take out the best player on the offense if you have multiple weapons then you know every other week someone else is going off and this, is like the this is like yeah. the ty this is like the ty thing where it's like if we could get not the ty should be a number two receiver i'm not saying that i don't think ty is a number two no. by the way i think he will put up enough numbers to be a number one but you have to have somebody who at least commands attention and if you're on paris campbell coming back mm -hmm. michael pittman who's going to be out there like if you're one of the, your goal should be okay my goal is going to be to hopefully open up ty a little I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to show enough on film that we can potentially get more use out of somebody who's currently getting triple teamed yeah. on some plays in an nfl season which is absolutely wild which is why you need <laughs> you need the weapons if you can score 35 to 42 points a game obviously that's a lot but in today's nfl i mean like look at the chiefs if you score the or the bucks if you score 35 you're going to either win most games or be right there with an opportunity yeah. to win most I games. hate to um I hate that I missed this I was supposed to plug this. I missed it. The Levante David Foundation, by the way, mm -hmm. very good foundation, helping public education fulfill the promise of equal opportunity by assisting college-bound students who are succeeding academically but are financially challenged. The goal of my foundation is to give deserving youth a chance to achieve their academic goals. Shout out, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good, dude. good interview. Good conversation, good football, great football player doing amazing things off the field. Shout out to Levante. We appreciate that. One last phone call here before we end the hour. Let's go to Anthony in Ohio. Hey, what's up, Pat and the boys? How you guys doing today? Not too shabby. How are you, bub? Oh, you know, I'm sitting here recovering from my second fatchy atchy, but that's all right. Okay, wow. so so I don't know which one is the double dose. It is opened up to us here in Indiana. Nice. Uh, the, it's been a tough ticket, though, here in mm -hmm. Indiana, by the way. Which one did you get, and how sick were you? 
the Moderna, but I also had COVID in the middle of January, so I feel like I'm having a little bit worse of a reaction. Oh, uh, because it's already stirring the pot. Because mm-hmm. it's already yeah. your immunicorns have already been in there, so it's stirring yeah. the pot. Okay, well, hopefully you'll get through this. And on the other side of the Fauciachi, by the way, I do believe the world is back open again. Yeah. Excited and congrats to you. Anthony, what do you want to talk about? Hey, I wanted to know, and I feel like it might be you on this one, who would score the highest on the recall test, but who you think there would also score the lowest? <laughs> I, I, Anthony, great question there on the Goldman Standard, who we will talk to and about here on the other side of this six-minute break alongside A.J. Hawk. We'll talk to Dr. Goldman. It feels like the recall part is mine. It feels like that is something that I yeah. – oh, yeah. that is why this show exists, basically, because if I see something or hear something, there's a good chance I'm going to remember it and say it. I, I've always been this way. It makes no sense to me either. It's how I got through school. Uh, so I'm very lucky for that. It's actually – it's allowed me to get away with a lot of shit that it should, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. But the other, there's another test in there that I assume Ty would win, just strictly from the academia part of that. And the person that would be the absolute worst? Zito! <laughs> I don't know, because I'm usually 48% right. Yeah, most things. Zito is a Zito production that Goldman Standard does not <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, He's on the other side, we'll see you then. Did you hear everything that was being said whenever you were potentially? Just from you. <laughs> oh, so you did hear it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, wait. Uh, let's address hey, it. Hold on. All right. You can be a hater. No! Oh, no! Hey, no! No! Hey, no! Hey, you can change. Carson. You can change. We can change. No! Your at no. the moment, no. I was at, okay, <laughs> Carson. You know, it, with the Daily Show, the live Daily Show, you know, we, we can potentially get. Uh, referred to as prisoners of the moment. You probably did hear me say some things. That was at a much different time. You can backtrack a little bit. No! <laughs> no! I'm it's just cool. Telling. We're here face to face. You can change. People <laughs> change, all right? You, by the way, you are much bigger than I thought you were. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, when Jalen gets drafted there, was that the beginning of it all? Was there a miscommunication? Was there What happened between you and Doug? Because they were saying it was fractured beyond repair. Yeah. What happened there? Is, is all of that accurate? Is that all kind of getting blown out of proportion? Yeah. And where did it start? For one, I don't like to ever come out and say reporters aren't telling the truth because I don't. But Orlovsky does it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to dispute every report that's out there. You know, at, you know, the way the season went obviously wasn't ideal. When Jalen was drafted, that had no bearing on on me. I trusted the organization. Okay. I signed that contract. You know, I was devoted to them, and I felt like they were devoted to me. So I I, I trusted the pick. You know, that had no bearing on my confidence or my abilities. You know, the, the season unfolded not how I would have liked it um, personally I could have played better we lost a lot of games at the end and just didn't didn't fall into place the way we wanted but um, there's a lot to, to learn from it you know as a man as a, as a player and, and all those things and you know I have a, still a lot of respect for coach Peterson and I think without a doubt those reports are very exaggerated like I said I don't hear a lot of them they come to my attention from my agents or different things yeah but I have a lot of respect for him and, and um, it was unfortunate for everybody and how the whole thing kind of just went down. There was a couple still shots that made its way around where you and Doug Peterson appeared to be giving each other a nasty look. I saw those. (laughs) It's not not true. Not true at all. Oh, you were not saying, I wish you'd die. (laughs) I don't even think I was looking at him in those shots. (laughs) So uh, I did see that. I'm like, of course, they're going to play this one up. They're going to. You're gonna make a story out of anything. That's that's how it is. So, um, but yeah, that's not true at all. Okay, so I'm happy to hear you weren't giving Doug Peterson death looks. Like you never thought like a oh, football isn't for me. Like there was never a thought where I don't like football anymore. I don't want to be in this bullshit league anymore with this business. There was never a thought like that. No, I mean, don't get me wrong. The way the season went, I mean, it was frustrating. And People so have that's, those that's why I, I stepped away, and it almost rejuvenated me. You know, it's almost like. Last year pissed me off so much. I want to come back in a different way and, and do everything I can. I am thrilled to be here and to, hey, to have, have this new start, new opportunity. And um, the community seems amazing. The fan base seems amazing. Um, like we said, it seems like the perfect fit. You have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question, it pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was, like, watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh. guy, <laughs> fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I ever been a part of was uh, 
you know, I, I, I had got the, uh, uh, the restaurant, which I'm in right now. And, uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. it's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell <laughs> straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down and, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dauphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey, man, did you do this? Like, oh, no. Nah. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, yeah, man, check it out. So, you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and, a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, well, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your and former you know, teammates. Hey, yeah. Hey, everybody wins. You're helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them owned up to it. <laughs> Just a line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name was Willie. Up. Willie. Willie owned up to Matter of fact, he just, he just left out. He's saying, Sweeping up, he's like, "Hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you." You feel? Okay. Yeah, we 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 bust down together up in the front of the, uh, the restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help. Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs> Stepping on the Out field, field. Wackle wackle Not punning But making money I'm still money. Fuck ESPN I'm not watching the hey, shit uh, But that 11 a.m. P.M. That's I'm tuning uh, in Ho The Pat McAfee Show There will be no rules For our guests For us For the things we can talk about yes, Speaking his mind I've never had a problem Expressing my opinions Or my thoughts Or anything like that While being relatable I haven't had that Manufactured Fake ass celebrity That a lot of people have Whenever they go on Those big networks I've had a chance To really build my crew Build my following Build my audience And ridiculous What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something That I can definitely afford And say nah Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. Hour three here on this Wednesday, April 7th, 2021, years after zero. This is going to get very fascinating. <laughs> yeah. I'm pumped for it. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. Joining me right now, AJ Hawk. at a boy. Yay! Yeah. AJ, you and I will talk about my golf outing yesterday at a later time. <laughs> Joining us here in a couple minutes, I, I don't know if he's on right now or in a minute or two, we got a sports psychologist joining us that has the Goldman Standard, and I don't think I knew it existed before yesterday. Did you? I had no idea. Sanchez is the one who pretty much let me know about it. So is Sanchez potentially the mascot for this thing? He could Feels make like it. The proctor is in we, the lab. That's what we will ask Dr. Goldman. We will say, mm -hmm. excuse me, Doc is Sanchez a part of the company? How did this, how this whole thing happen? And how do we not know about, I wanna know, like this feels like this is a very important test. It's been tested, it's been tried, it's been true. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, one of the most established sports psychologists walking this earth, a man who has a test that is given out to over 6,500 professional athletes that test their personality, their brain, everything like that. Dr. Scott Gold. Yeah! Yes! Doc, how's it going? It's going well. I hope I can live up to that introduction. Well, Doc, listen, I'm going to be honest. Had no clue you existed before yesterday, but then we started doing some research on you. And Mark Sanchez, do you know Mark Sanchez? And did you know he was going to potentially let the world know about the Goldman Standard just yesterday on the show when talking about Justin Fields? So I do know Mark Sanchez, but not very well. We're just uh, new acquaintances, but I really respect and value his intellect and his insight. 
Um, the fact that you didn't know me is actually purposeful and strategic. I, I tend to not really put myself in front of cameras. Uh, one of my mentors once had this great line where he said, it's very easy to see which way the cameras are pointed. You can stand in front of them or behind them. And the way that I've chosen to do my work for the last 20 years has always been to be of service of humility and to be behind the cameras and let the coaches and the athletes really shine. So I'm, I'm actually kind of, this is a little bit of an uncomfortable spot for me, but um, when you all called and asked and I have such respect for your work and your show, I was like, okay, let's give this a shot and see what it's like. Okay, well, okay, I want to let you know. know. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. I think oh. we're echoing. You might have to move the, uh, the thing. No, am I still echoing? No. no. Okay, we're good. Um, thank you for coming on the show then. If this is not a normal thing at all, we appreciate the hell out of your time. Uh, if you respect this show though, I do believe that potentially knocks your credibility early, <laughs> but we're gonna talk about this as we go. Doc, the, the test that was talked about yesterday, uh, I believe Mark Sanchez was referring to the recall portion of the test. And then there's two portions of the test. What is the test trying to do? And what what who are, who are paying you to get the results of these these tests? And, and is that how that works? Do, are you like an independent contractor for teams and organizations? And what do the tests tell us? Can you just tell us more basically about what you've created here? Sure, so um, the test is called the Athletic Intelligence Quotient or AIQ. AIQ. And, and as far as like the service or how it's set up, so I actually have, um, two roles. So one is as a sports psychologist, and I've been contracted by um, several professional teams, as well as several NCAA teams to be an embedded sports psychologist, where I, I worked with their players, their coaches, and their front office. Um, and I've been doing that for about 20 years. So that's just me. Um, the test itself, uh, we brought it to market in 2012. Uh, my partner, Jim Bowman, and I, we started creating it in 1998. And we actually before, so it was about 15 years before we even brought it to market because we really wanted to um, be rigorous in our scientific discovery. I mean, we really spent a lot of time making sure, because you can't see one's intelligence, right? Like you can see one's height, but you can't see one's intelligence. So we put a lot of time and in, in, in effort into making sure that the test had the integrity that it does. Um, the way I would describe it, uh, the way I describe it to GMs and head coaches, for example, and this is such an oversimplification, but there's basically four buckets to a comprehensive athletic profile, right? There's the physical, there's the experience. So for example, grabbing a defensive lineman from Clemson or a linebacker from Alabama, you know, what kind of system of offense or defense they run, what they've been exposed to. Then there's intelligence, which is simply defined as the ability to uh, acquire process and apply information. And then the fourth bucket is personality. You know, what's their work ethic like? Um, are they going to be a locker room poison, et cetera? So the AIQ is strictly focused on that third bucket of intelligence, which is, again, how do they solve? So my partner and I, what we did was, as we said, sports is defined as an unsolvable puzzle in a chaotic situation. What are the cognitive abilities that a person needs to be successful in that kind of environment? So how is your test different from the Wonderlic? And do you see your test uh, eventually taking over the Wonderlic and being more important or do they kind of work hand in hand? And do you hate the Wonderlic? <laughs> uh, I don't hate anyone. I'll be honest okay, with you. All right, um, that's very nice of you. But, I hate them. You know, and I, I have a tendency to talk more about who we are versus who we're not. But because you asked, some of the differences are the Wonderlic was created in in 1934. Um, and I think it's a test that's more based on, say, like logic reasoning. Uh, by contrast, uh, so again, just to put some perspective, I have two PhDs. One's in clinical psychology, one's in school psychology. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, wow. Okay. That's All right. Cool. A lot of work. A lot of work. We are proud of you for that. That's in so, so, and that wasn't meant to be a flex. It's just. No, no, two uh, PhDs. Oh, hey, hey two PhDs. One PhD. I, 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 I have nowhere near one PhD. I couldn't <laughs> even imagine two of those things. Well, I got, it's two for the price of two when it came to time and effort. But uh, my partner has a PhD in school psychology. And so Three um, PhDs. what we did was, is we took, it's called the Cattell-Horn-Carroll theory of intelligence, CHC theory. 
And that's the predominant theory of intelligence that's being used. So if you have children or you yourself were ever tested for a learning disability or um, learning disability or, or giftedness, you were given an intelligence test that was based off the CHC theory. So, so we took something that was tried and true and the, and the gold standard in intelligence testing, and then we looked at what was the most sport relevant. The other thing that we, that we did that I think is fairly unique was I tapped uh, the coaches that I worked with at Arizona and Michigan and with the NFL teams that I've worked for, and I asked sure. them to help make some really good um, analysis and recommendations that aren't just sports specific, but also position specific. So going back to say, talking about a quarterback, the idea here is here's a cognitive ability like learning efficiency, the ability to download and recall the play. Now that's really valuable for a quarterback who might have to understand the entire playbook as well as assign on the field teammates to their roles or to identify the mic and then put everybody in position according to it. Similarly, it can also be used where, let's say the defense disguises a coverage in the first quarter and it, it fools the quarterback. He can then recognize that same coverage in the fourth quarter and say, okay, you got me in the first quarter, but I can now remember that in the fourth. So we won't be fooled again. Yeah. Now that is something that is tough to find. And if you find somebody who can do that, then I assume that would be a pretty vital piece of information. My question for you is not, hey, can you tell us everybody's scores? And I would never expect a doctor to do that. The fact that Mark Sanchez told us a couple of people's scores, we were actually pretty mind oh, blown yeah. about to begin with. But once we heard that Justin Fields did well on this test, and you don't have to confirm nor deny that, but why wouldn't Justin and fields potentially want people to know that was was you know like is that him or would that be the the team like how come we did not know that justin fields potentially has photographic memory is that what the test is proving it, it, whether or not how come we're not really learning that you think is it because your information is sought after by people that would not want the masses to know that information or do you think it's like what do you think it potentially is you're asking a really good question and all i can say is i don't know i would ask those people you know again one of the things is we've just never exploited the relationships that we've had with the teams that we work for and we've never exploited we certainly don't exploit the relationships that we have with the players that are kind enough to engage in this process with us so we we don't really we just don't publicly disclose that stuff i mean i remember there was a super bowl where both teams were using the aiq and people were coming at me being like, oh, you should be tweeting about how this is an all AIQ Super Bowl and yeah. AIQ yeah. is, and I just said, look, you know yeah. what? I think if you do that, you're disrespecting the strength coach who worked his butt off to get them strong. Okay. You're, you're like, and on and on down the line, like it's not just strength coach, it's the athletic trainer and the nutritionist and the, and the position coach and the head, like, I was just like, this is their moment. Like the fact that the two teams use the AIQ, value the AIQ, continue to use the AIQ, I, I, that I'm just grateful for. Do you, uh, do you, I guess, check like scores that may have happened a couple of years ago and then follow some of these players, whatever the sport may be. And do you see any correlation between high scores and levels of success that you can you can say this is a tangible result? And have you had to tweak the test because of that? Yeah, great questions. Um, we have not had to tweak the test um, so it's because, well, I mean, well, let me go back. We tweaked the test based off of the science, but that was before we brought it to market. You know, because we follow the American years. Psychological Association's ethical guidelines for test construction. I know that might sound kind of boring, but what it is, is it's saying, you know, we just made sure that we were painting with a really fine brush. Now, going back to the question, and this is something that I'm real proud of and proud for the AIQ is uh, we collected five years worth of data and we did perform some research that has been published in academic journals where we have found statistically significant correlation with on-field performance. Interceptions in defensive backs, rushing yards in running backs, regardless of when they were drafted. And so I think what's kind of cool, and, and other stuff too, like uh, false starts in offensive linemen, defensive uh, tackles for losses and sacks, uh, career right. approximate value, which kind of talks about their impact to their, to their team. Um, 
And, and to my knowledge, we're the only test that really has that kind of connection, with the kind of data that we have. I think that's pretty cool. I'm so impressed by this shit, man. Yeah. I, I, I won't let you know that because oh, I'm a big, I think we all are on this particular show. Like it's, it's all what's going on here in between, you know, like your think tank is where everything is going on. There, there's a lot of, you know, incredibly athletic dudes, okay? There's like, for instance, in my position, there's a lot of dudes that can kick balls very far. There's only a certain amount of people that can really do it for a living, especially do it at a high level. And that's all because of what's going on in the brain. And it feels like uh, here as of late, we've learned more and more about it. But for a long time, it was absolutely nothing. I, I am very pumped to hear that there is potentially a Goldman standard yeah. for judging. Now we got to figure out how we got to pay you enough money to release these results so we mm -hmm. all know it. But this is this is really cool thing you're doing for sports. I want to let you know that, especially because of the success it has had. So congratulations on that. Connor, what do you have? Yeah, on the, your website, Doctor, it says that you've worked with um, players from five of the major sports. Have you tried to get into different sports like Australian football? Oh, yeah. Uh, or, like, does it even affect those type of sports similar to, like, golf? Like, does that test even tell you anything about golfers or no? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And actually we, we have been used. So we we are under contract with all five major, we're under contract with teams from all five major leagues in the US, Got it. but we have also been contacted by international teams as well. So um, European football, um, Australian rules football, rugby, they, they've all tapped into it because again, our original concept was sports is an unsolvable puzzle in a chaotic situation. So even when we were originally creating the test, we looked at firefighters, police officers, first responders, military, like it was, you know, again, imagine just to use um, a, a non-sport related example, you kick a door down and you quickly got to examine the room, where are the threats, where are the dangers, where are the key landmarks, so I don't get lost, who needs help, all of those kinds of things. Like that's a cognitive ability that's very similar to you know, whether it's a, an outside midfielder for a European football team or a center fielder in baseball or, or a quarterback in football, they still all have to kind of scan the field and know where key points of information are. What is one of the tests? So what are the two tests? It's recall and then it's another one. For the recall one, is it like we've all done baseline tests and we've all done that whole thing and they give you like a series of, of numbers, then they disappear, then they ask you some fake questions, then they ask what those numbers are again, the words, the whole thing, the patterns, the what's potentially next. Is that what the test is or is it something vastly different? What is one of the recall like questions look like and how do you score it? Is it right, wrong? Is it out of 10? How does that whole thing work? Yeah. So, God, great question. So, um, Thank you for bringing it's up. actually this is what you do for a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you had respect for it, which early I was like, well, I mean, Whoa. kind of turned me off. But yeah, <laughs> since then, I feel like I, I, I am very, very intrigued by everything you've created here. So I appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. So um, we have four broad abilities and ten narrow abilities. So there's actually 14 points of data that we talk about when going through a report. So even though I talked about those statistically significant correlations to on-field performance, really the intention of the test was to be a descriptor, not a predictor. And what I mean by that was we're, answer, we're trying to help teams and players and coaches answer the question, how do they do it? Not can they do it or why they do it? Why is more personality? Can is more of a front office decision. We're just saying, all right, we know this guy is good how does he do it? And so going underneath that umbrella of cognitive ability, we look at things like visual spatial processing, the ability to scan the field and look for important details. We look at things like reaction time and also the ways to inhibit a response. So for example, a baseball coach once gave me this. He said, the secret to hitting isn't swinging at a 95 mile per hour fastball. The secret to hitting is not swinging at an 85 mile per hour curve. So inhibiting a reaction is pretty valuable too. So we measure stuff like that. Wow. Um, Decision-making is about making quick and accurate decisions. And then the learning efficiency one, which you've kind of dialed into is the ability to download and recall information later. Okay, so when I'm sitting at a, a bar when they back open mm -hmm. and there's that game, the touchscreen game, where it's like find the little things hidden in the mm -hmm. picture, oh, yeah. that's getting the whole field, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, okay. it's seeing the little details there, you know what I mean? It's like an umbrella is back there in the side, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Okay, I can't wait to take the Goldman one time. You will, and, and, and just 
to like what a great capture that's what a lot of the tests look like like a lot of the the, the items and stuff it is it's a lot more of playing games like tetris not to date myself but in, in the one that you talked about at the bar and and what we have found is the players really evaluate and appreciate that like they're like oh thank god this isn't you know, asking me like dogs or cats yeah and, and the other part that i think is worth noting is when my partner jim and i when we created it we were real mindful to make sure that it was robust to socioeconomic status, race, religion, country of origin. Like we eliminated a lot of those biases. Like for example, the top 10 scores in this year's draft are all minorities. Or no, sorry, let me be more clear. Eight of the top 10 scores are minorities this year. And that's been consistent fits with our entire database. Like it's just one of those things where, so I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And on some forms of intelligence tests, they'll ask a question like, what is a schooner? Well, I don't know. I'm from New Mexico. It's a desert. Schooner's a boat. So we eliminated stuff like that. It looks a lot more like you were talking about the bar games where it's looking for information in a crowded field, or it might be navigating something through space with obstacles in it and stuff like that. Hey, Doc, I might be wrong here. And you're, you're I love that what I was imagining your test being was your actual test because when I've taken tests like this in the past, I've thought to myself, oh, this is a more boring version of this game, basically. Yeah. It, this is a more boring version of this because whenever it's those types of things, you get to compete. So there's like an actual, you know, especially if you're talking about competitors, there's like, okay, here we go. This game is not gonna beat me. So now we got like that, that whole thought of this whole thing. Uh, quick question though, do you see a correlation? And this has just been my personal thing. Uh, as somebody who has had to have some pressure packed moments, I've succeeded in some, failed in others. I believe that a person can only handle the amount of uh, like pressure moments that they're given. For instance, a kid who's potentially at a house party, all right, and there's one cup left in beer pong, all right, he's got the thing, and the entire house is staring in the middle of a party at this dude, okay? I feel, or lady, whoever, by the way, I've been. I've been wiped off the table by some assassin ladies mm. on the goddamn beer pong thing. But I feel like the, the ability to handle the pressure in that moment, I don't know how much bigger it could potentially get for you. Like, I understand the results are potentially magnified if it is in a beer pong game versus like a Super Bowl or something like that. But is there a way to find out, aside from like the quick reaction, how somebody will handle a big moment or how somebody will handle their life potentially being on the line for decisions? Is there a way to figure that out other than a potential beer beer pong game with a lot of people in the house? I like the fact that we're talking about a range of performance from beer pong to Super Bowl. Mm. I feel like there's- kind of my maybe, life. It's it's kind of I mean, maybe those gaps aren't as big as we all think, right? So here's how I go back to that. And it's something that I just believe to be true as, as a sports psychologist. I think human behavior is incredibly complicated. I think human, interaction relationships is even more complicated and performance is based off of all of that so going back to that four buckets that we described earlier so and let's just use your specific example of beer pong you've got the physical ability right like do i have the muscles and the strength to hurl a ping pong across the table into the cup that's the physical abilities do i have the visual acuity like do do i need corrective lenses does my eyes have the ability to see the cup clearly yes. how hampered are my um, physical coordinations from whatever round of 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 pong this is so that's the first bucket the second bucket is experience right I, how long have you been playing beer pong for and how many games in your life have you done that are even similar to beer pong then you've got the third bucket, the AIQ bucket, right? Intelligence, which is, you know, how well can I calculate the time, distance, and um, other factors that are involved in shooting your shot? Base, base music, mm -hmm. okay, outside. Uh, yeah. There's probably some, inf you know, some, uh, some potential oh, yeah. feelings. That's what you're referring to. Well, and maybe there's also some other element of distraction, like a person of interest in the corner of your eye. Oh. Uh, yeah, maybe a camera crazies too. I mean, all that stuff. Yeah, the curtain of death. I mean, I don't know how competitive the ping pong, beer pong game is. Okay. But then you've got the final bucket, that, that personality bucket, where you're talking about the pressure of the moment. Now, the AIQ does not test personality. And there's a purposeful reason for that. Personality is really hard to test. 
And if you think you can capture that, I think that's misleading. And I'll tell you why. If we could identify personality, we could get rid of terrorisms, we could get rid of murders, like think about way more impactful things if we could figure, I mean, that's like almost like minority report stuff. So here's what we know about personality. It's not a genetically stable trait like intelligence. It fluctuates. Who you are when you're 18 is different than who you are when you're 25. Um, similarly, personality can be influenced by life-changing events, like having your child be born or becoming a millionaire um, from being selected in the first three rounds of the draft. So situations, and then the Our other part about personality mm -hmm. tests in general is they're based off really a self-report. How much am I willing to be honest with you about how I describe a, 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 my own so, sense of psyche? And then there's this other element, which is even if I think I'm being honest with you, I might not be truthful. I might think of myself as a very courageous person, but if there's a fire in the building, I might be knocking old ladies out of the way and pushing kids down the stairs like George Costanza style, right? Because so, you want to be accepted by the person that you're talking to. Yeah. So, so when it comes to the personality bucket, for the last seven years, I've been working with professional teams to do those interviews. But what I always talk to the teams about is this is just a, a, a people size snapshot of the individual. This is not a pervasive personality pattern. This is not anything else. And really, I focus more on the goodness of fit. It's really about trying to understand, would this person be like our kind of guy? Would we really like having him around? What do we like? like so it's not even about trying to figure out if this guy was a bedwetter when he was seven years old or anything. It's really more about what can we do to help him give us his best self. Yeah. yeah. And then do we like that? Like, is that a good fit for what we're looking for here? Doc, I appreciate what you've said here, by the way. This is shit that I am very, very interested in. So I, I thank you for all this. And I have to go back here. You saw a little reaction, I assume, as a psychologist. You saw the reaction as soon as you said something. What you said there basically is situations are situational? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. There it is. <laughs> yeah. How, zero PhD. How about that? Of course. I just want to let everybody know. That's been my go-to for everything, Doc. He doesn't. Doc doesn't realize how much damage he just did. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 there's no damage. Uh -huh. there's, I just, I want to let you know, two PhDs told me mm -hmm. fucking amen, brother. That's yeah. what just, <laughs> I just heard it from him. I appreciate you, Doc. You, you, you've done a lot here today thus far. That, I'm not saying that that's going to be the one that carries on the longest, I think, in yeah. my life, but the information has been amazing. You should do more of this. You're very good at this. Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Doc, you just mentioned uh, like uh, personality change based on a significant event like becoming a millionaire, getting drafted in the first three rounds. Is that why you think people might uh, become busts? Like, for instance, there was a guy from the Titans who was drafted in the first round who played offensive line, and then he didn't really play at all and actually got released. Is that because you think like he might have changed due to the money that he made so quickly? Yeah, so again, my honest answer there is I don't know. Because I don't know the guy. Because, 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 say it. Because situationals are situational. No, no, no. Oh, no. no. oh, oh so close. Right we got another question, Doc. We got another, you'll get a chance to run it back. If, if I can, let me, let me go back to answer that question. Okay. What I would say is I don't know, because I don't know him. And if I did know him, I wouldn't comment on it. But what I would say is sometimes life-changing moments can exacerbate who we are. Sometimes they can change who we are. Sometimes they can even solve problems. Like again, becoming a millionaire doesn't make your life more chaotic or less chaotic. It just changes. It changes the way you make decisions in your life. So I, I, again, it goes back to complexities. And, and if human behavior was this simple, um, I think we could go and do the stock market like the stock market would be a lot easier to figure out if we understood well the you stock know. market's very easy all you gotta do is yeah. hold, hold. hold. You gotta hold doc hold. Hold. until you guys sell right. Right. what's that hey doc you're just a fucking wealth of information in there huh 
I don't know about that. I just try to be a service to the people that I'm having a conversation See, with. See, you've said some things like that yeah. here today, where early in the conversation, I was like, okay, this guy. But I honestly genuinely believe that you believe that. You feel, it feels like you've committed your life here to like trying to at least figure out how the brain operates and how we can kind of predict greatness in a sense that is different than personality. Has it always been this way? What made you so intrigued uh, to go into sports psychology and psychology in general? Uh, yeah, no, great. I appreciate the personal question. That's awesome. Um, I think by inherent nature, I'm just a very curious person. And I like to be I, I like to think of myself as somewhat of an explorer. So I think all human behavior is fascinating. Like Me too. the shirt that you're wearing right now, Shout is out. it laundry day? Is it your lucky shirt? Is it purposeful from a marketing perspective? Like, all behavior has meaning. It's my uniform, by the way, just as a quick answer. <laughs> Come on, Doc. This is, is a quick answer, but I, I do, I agree with you, by the way. Well, and so I like the idea of being, a, like, I think Walt Whitman had this great quote where he said, like, be curious, not judgmental. So I just have this real natural curiosity for why people do what they do, especially at the elite space. Like, I think it's really hard to win one football game, much less a series of them to get to a Super Bowl. And so I, I've been very fortunate to have been along for the ride with some really unbelievable individuals. And it's just been really, um, it's been an absolute honor to watch them perform and to help them kind of solve these sort of puzzles. It's really cool stuff. So I guess I'm just lucky to have found a job that I really enjoy. You have a Super Bowl ring? I do not. Oh, man. Hey, I think that's what we got to work in the next contract. Ty, what do you got? Doc, based on the data, have you found clear-cut signs that like certain position groups uh, score better on the test? Because I think in the research it said that like a couple pitchers scored very high on it. Is it typically like quarterbacks, point guards, or, or like have you – I mean, is there a discrepancy there? Yeah, good question. Um, yes, there are patterns there. You know, but it also becomes kind of an interesting chicken in the egg kind of question, right? Because the task demand of a tight end is a lot more complicated than the task demand of, of, a, of a, wide, a wide receiver. So one of the questions to really ask is, are people with higher uh, cognitive abilities being drawn towards the, the 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 challenging positions or the challenging positions weeding out people with lesser cognitive abilities oh, but yes oh. we do see we do see some patterns where some position groups score higher chicken egg by the way that was evolution i think so yeah i think so too i think it was another bird mm -hmm. that did give the eggs and then those eggs created the chicken so i don't think it is chicken or the egg i think it's a whole nother fucking existence mm -hmm. So that's a, you know what I mean? But it is a great metaphor. I've thought about that one pretty in-depthly. That one's out of my area of expertise. I'll, I'll punt to the group on that one. Oh, I heard you say punt Ooh, there too. Hey, that's nice. Right, that's actually right here. That's right here on the shirt that you were just talking about. There's a punt right there. A little bit of a sag, not as flexible as I once was, but that ball is bombed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Doc, uh, if you had to, like, estimate what the top-tier guys would get, like, what would Michael Jordan get? What would Tom Brady get? What would a guy like John Jones get who's in a UFC fight and it's just him? Like, what would those type of scores would you estimate? And what are the scores out of? Because we heard yesterday potential scores not from you. You don't have to confirm it. That would be very fucked up with you. And I don't even know if that's hip or not because it's a brain, but we get it. But we heard like over 100 is a good score. And then yeah. we we looked online and some people scored like a 138 or something like that. How are the scores created and how did you get the points and what is a good score? Okay, so <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there. Let me kind of fold back. First of all, let's start with punters. And I'm going to give you some love, Pat. Thank you. Like, yeah. I think one thing that's really unique about punters is you have to fully extend in a very vulnerable position without flinching. I think there is something Courage. really incredible about the skill set and the psychological makeup of a punter because I don't you. think people realize how hard that is. Like, most people just think, oh, this is just an automated rep activity, which, going back to like your beer pong example, you can do a lot of things with 10,000 hours of mastery, but it's hard to do those things where you put yourself in an at-risk injury type scenario without flinching. Gymnasts, same thing. Like our brains are not wired to be upside down. 
And when you see a gymnast do those kinds of things on a regular basis, like that's incredible. So I'm just going to give you some love. As, Thanks. As a hey, by the way, I never thought that. of that. I want to let you know, I never thought of that. Really like what you're bringing to me today. Uh, <laughs> really like what you're, you know what I mean? Basically, you're, I should squirrel suit. Yeah, you should. Yeah. I'm a squirrel suit guy, I, I do believe. But I appreciate what you're doing. Now, I apologize. The other question about the scores and everything like that. Yeah. So what's interesting about intelligence is there's kind of like no ceiling um, because you can you can kind of like outperform a test. You can actually, so for example, let's say there's 10 items and you get all 10 items correct. What that tells us is the test didn't capture your true ability because maybe you would have gotten 14 out of 14 right or 20 out of 20 right. So there is a ceiling to a test, but there's not necessarily a ceiling to intelligence. Huh. Now, going back to the scores themselves, we did follow the same code that the Stanford Binet, Woodcock Johnson, the Wexler scales, like they all kind of follow a similar kind of scoring system, which is a hundred is average, and then there's a standard deviation of 15 points in either direction. So if you score a 115 or higher, that's statistically significant. If you score a 130 or higher, that's and that's like by definition, uh, giftedness or genius level kind of stuff. Uh, similarly, on the other side of it, 85 or lower is statistically significantly weak, and 70 is st statistically significantly uh, really weak. Okay. Billy Tubes. Doc, uh, with so many people from so many different walks of life being taking this test, is it the same test every single time, or do NFL players take a different test than any of the other sports or athletes? Another really good question. Oh boy, Tube! Baby Bill. Bill. Let's not do this, by the way. Tube, that's maybe first question I've ever heard yeah, from yeah. Tubes in this show. He was very excited. You had the boys buzzing this morning when you were coming on the show, by the way. Well, I appreciate that. I would have uh, I would have him ask more questions because that was a good one. So green light him. Listen, you can't um, tell that guy do anything. Huh? <laughs> well, yeah, you don't know him, Doc. Yeah, His personality yeah. is way different from the intelligence. Yeah, you, <laughs> well, you can't you can't judge a personality, yeah. which we did learn in this entire thing. You can only kind of see a thing, mm -hmm. but but listen, Bill does whatever the hell he wants back there, Doc. Yeah. There ain't uh -huh. nothing I can do. So to answer the question, the test is uniform. It, it, it's it's a one test thing so it's not something where it changes per player per person per year or anything like it really is meant to be a standardized test and that's that's what we that's what we created doc have you taken the test or is that some kind of weird ethics thing you don't get high if you won't supply, supply. <laughs> wow um i yeah i have taken the test myself and uh, but mostly to make sure that, you know, like testing it and the development of it and the creating of it is. Um, but it wasn't about just seeing what my own performance would be on it. And, and just for for again, going back to the this is not meant the test is not meant to be the answer. It's just meant to contribute so that teams make more a more well informed decision. So, like, for example, I would never draft me to play um, defensive back in the NFL, even if I scored really high on this thing. Like those other three buckets are hey, significantly hey, missing. Hey, Doc, no shit, Doc. Hey, <laughs> did, you do, did you do well on that or no? Did you do, you did well on it? I assume you did. Uh, yeah, I did fine. I mean, you know, I was okay. One, there, 130 there plus, 70 below, 130 plus? Like I said, we don't really publicly talk about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Doc. Thank you so much, man. I feel like I've learned so much. I hope this information starts becoming a little bit more readily available because I think the narrative changed vastly yesterday about Justin Fields by a lot of people whenever we found out he scored 130 plus, allegedly. We don't know, obviously don't want you to do that, but we appreciate you so much for what you're doing for sports, man. I really enjoyed the time and the conversation. Um, Y'all have asked some great questions and if there's any an opportunity that you'd like me to uh, further the conversation on this subject matter or anything else, I'd be comfortable doing it again. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Scott Gordon. Yeah! Yeah! Two PhDs, dude. Yeah. Wait, what did he say in there? I forget the big one. Oh, situations are situational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's get to a break. <laughs> we don't have a break. Did we already go to a break? No. 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 <laughs> Gotta go to a break. That was awesome. I love that. See, there's, I don't know how many other people love that conversation, but that is a conversation that is basically right in my wheelhouse. Like, I loved everything about that. 
I, I want to see one of the tests. Like, is it only how many questions is it? It's Tetris, dude. He's playing Tetris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. And they're playing the, you know, spot the difference game. Yes. yes. Photo hunt. Photo hunt is happening. Every time I do one of those tests, you know, those those brain tests or whatever, I I frame it in my mind. Shout out Tom Brady. I frame it in my mind as if it's a game. Okay, it's me versus this person, and then or this computer or this whatever it is. And whenever it's something that's very similar to something that is a good time, I'm always like, oh, this is just a fucking terrible. Are they trying to test whether or not I'll stay like involved in this? Or mm -hmm. they can make this a lot better. This test could be a lot more fun if they did this just a little bit. It's nice to hear that he agrees in that whole thing. I think that the most refreshing thing is to see that he's not some like self-marketing douche. Like he doesn't, he doesn't, he's been turning away the spotlight when he could have been pubbing this stuff, stuff over and over again. He's just seems like he just wants to do his work and he doesn't really care about being famous or having a, a name or being the next dr oz or something and i do feel that quite a ricochet yeah. shot there <laughs> dr oz yeah. but no, like no. <laughs> just a different dr oz obviously he's a doctor but he wanted to be on tv and he's good at it so this do you know i agree he doesn't AJ. okay well, i do dr. agree Phil. earlier in this whole thing i don't think he wanted to be on tv for a long time but he did get on tv and he's done well uh, some things have gone bad though. The um, bad baby. I don't know if Dr. Phil is excited about what's going on there, but a million bucks in six hours or something like that is, is absolutely wild. But at the beginning, when he was saying those things, you know, I mean, he's going to watch that back and see me like start laughing in his face basically when he's like, you know, you can either be on one side of the cameras or the others. I've always chosen. I'm like, okay, this fucking guy. Like, all right, will you please? But I genuinely, by the end of it, I'm like, no, this guy rarely talks, I think. Yeah. yeah. This guy is. It's all about the science. But he was so good. I think he should do more talk. Like, Listen, I, I respect how much he's like, no, I don't want to, it's not about me, but I feel like we learned a lot right there. Yeah. I'm very thankful for him, but early I was like, okay, bub. Just, right. just ask for a couple tests, by the way. From him? Yeah. Hey, we're wondering if we get a, uh, that's going to cost money, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh, no. Yeah, he makes a living, dude. What do you think this is? <laughs> yeah. It's not cheap. The guy's not even going to on TV. He's no, not no. doing it. He's, 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 yeah. he's Z, yeah, he's Z hits right him up now. for a freebie a minute this, after the interview. <laughs> bro, this guy paid... <laughs> This guy paid for two PhDs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And neither were expensive or cheap. No. Like he said. Those three two. letters are <laughs> very expensive. Uh -huh. We're pushing the message, though. We're pushing the test. I don't think he... I would like to see a test. I don't know if he wants us to push the test. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, because when he... Like, he could have had that chance to make the Super Bowl the AIQ Bowl, and he was like, no, because then, you know, I'm taking away from the strength coach. By the way, the winners did not give him a Super Bowl ring. That's fucked no, up. I yeah, hope that continues up. to happen. We'll be back on the other side. We answer some phone calls, close out hour three here. We have some questions for AJ about a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. AJ, get ready for the hot seat, pal. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Wednesday, April 7th. <laughs> Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason it is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game God, if you look at other team sports uh, uh basketball with five guys on the court i think you've seen multiple players over the years uh, maybe one player or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships baseball you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships soccer you can have a dominant forward and or goalie that seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, a, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Uh, 
and I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. And your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure. Uh, that You might go out there and your best might not be good enough and that's not okay with you. Giving the old white guys something to complain about. It's the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. Man, the brain is buzzing about that conversation with Dr. Scott Goldman about the brain that we just had there. Went a lot longer than I think any of us thought it was going to. Uh, I hope he comes back on the show at some point. I mean, Zito's already tried to get something free from him. Mm -hmm. I also have a five minute interview too, so I was... <laughs> <laughs> Guys missing Whoops. seven meetings. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. We apologize, Doc. We appreciate everything you did Thank there. Thank you, Doc. You know, people go through many changes as we get older, isn't that right? That's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. For men, one of the less fortunate changes is that testosterone production begins to naturally decrease in the body. For most men, it begins around the age of 30 or so, and testosterone production declines roughly 1% per year. No. Oh. That's why our friends at Roman have a new supplement designed to support testosterone production. They formulated their own supplements with transparent and scientifically backed ingredients. Roman's testosterone supplement is for anyone who wants to support their own body's natural function, not add anything. Okay. No, no. We're just supporting the natural so you don't drop by 1% per year on average after the age of 30. It's four pills. I've been taking them. I feel good. Mm -hmm. mm. Look good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, AJ, you're starting to see it, aren't you? Huh? Yeah. I I'm surprised you're wearing sleeves. I thought you'd be cut off all day now. Well, you called so me fat a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. well, I did not. I yeah, you did. Well, you echoed the sentiments of a lot of our viewers. You did. Which was very rude. And I would never, I would never. I said, you look Jack. I said, you need to show those arms off. You now you said that, I mean, change it too. We go through different situations in life and then that changes you, you know? For this particular situation, the change was me actually losing weight from being a fat ass. Whenever you called me a fat ass, that situation yeah. turned, turned you into a positive supporter of my body image. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, they formulated their own blend with transparent and scientifically backed ingredients. Get started is simple. Go to GetRoman.com slash USA. Their supplements contain vitamin D3, zinc, magnesium, maca, and ashwagandha, dude. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, it's a unique blend designed by healthcare professionals that you can't get anywhere else. To learn more about these ingredients, go to GetRoman.com slash USA. Roman is offering $15 off your first order and will deliver your supplements right to your door with free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com forward slash USA. Get $15 off your first order plus free two-day shipping. Let's go. Perfect. Hey, they got all the shit you need. Hair, uh -huh. uh, body, mm -hmm. yep. skin, skin, uh, testosterone. Uh, if, you, uh, if, you, if you come quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sex. Sex, yeah. Swipes. Uh, Roman swipes, yeah, that's what we're talking about. 
if you're out there getting juiced on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the way, did you see that Eric Andre movie that was on uh, Netflix? I've seen the, uh, the, I saw it. I didn't click on it. Is it any good? Yeah, you would love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know, he, I know his, uh, what he has done, a lot of his work. That dude is, uh, I mean, he's not scared of anything. So. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't know much about his work. I watched the movie last night. Genius concept. Very similar to Borat in uh, Grandpa uh, when Johnny yeah, Knoxville. Yeah, Grandpa. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like kind of candid with a storyline. And I always yeah. enjoy those. They're, they're very, very good. Uh, but there were some scenes in there where I was like, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, I, like there was basically every scene I wished I was there. Like when I like when I see these movies, I'm always like, how come this couldn't have happened yeah. when it's like, you know, uh, they got cameras basically in the entire building. Nobody knows that they're there. They tell them afterwards, you know, this is a whole thing, which is a part of the whole movie. I'm always like, why can't I be there when one of these happens? There's some things that happen, especially at a zoo where it is it is it feels like. It feels like a gorilla potentially had the Roman swipes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, when you watch it. When you okay. Watch it. Um, I can't wait. I'm definitely watching soon. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was two rounds, too, actually. Jeez. <laughs> just know when, zoo? when you get to the zoo, just know, like, okay, things are about to get insane. And uh, let's go to Matt in Montana. What's going on, Matt? Oh, man. Matty. Oh. Hey, yeah. Hey, Montana, well, Matt, great to have you back. What do you want to talk about? Oh, I was going to say shout out to the boys, Mr. Hot. Shout out. Shout out. I was going to say I got an idea to get the Titans back to the Super Bowl. Okay, that's good news. Oh, because remember, we don't talk enough gonna, Titans. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. What, what, how are we getting the Titans back to the Super Bowl? Uh, we're going to get the Browns bros going. Get Antonio over. Okay. And then the real kicker is uh, we give old Peter Cottontail Carroll his dream boat, Ryan Tannehill, play action master. And we get Russ Wilson. Okay. All right. We appreciate what that, Matt. The hell? Thank you for the idea. That was fantastic, Matt. Is he actually on the moon? I would like to let everybody know. I think he's farming and on <laughs> yeah. uh, Mars, potentially. Mm -hmm. Appreciate where his headspace is at. Russell Wilson is there to stay in Seattle. That's he right. told Carlos Dunlap that. That whole situation seems like it is completely over over there in Seattle, AJ. You really think it's completely over? I mean, I understand completely. what's going on. With, and... You know, the comments that Russell says he wants to be there, but you really think this is already squashed? There's yeah. No what are you talking about? He said, I'm here to stay. Yeah. Go Hawks. Go Hawks, yeah. Hawks It's dude. over, AJ. Stop. Has anyone – I would assume people are reaching out, like reporters have, to some of the offensive linemen on the team. Have any of them had any kind of public comments? And, AJ, I do believe uh, you and me have talked at length about this. I think this is the difference between potentially maybe being in a locker room before and not being in a locker room before. The things that were basically being said at, about the Seattle Seahawks offensive line, which is returning, by the way, they've been buried four or five times now publicly by Team 3's alleged reports, which is directly associated with Russell Wilson. Now, I'm not saying that anybody would not try hard in the NFL because everybody wants to get paid, but an offensive line in a quarterback's relationship is very important. It is very important, okay? This is now Russell feels like the offensive line is not treating him that well, which by the way, I think stats prove that to be an accurate statement or whatever. But man, how it's all kind of gotten ugly outside. I'm intrigued to see how it all ends up working out inside the locker room. Well, Pat, you know though, if Russell comes out and he plays well, it's fine. Everything's gonna be fine. His relationship with the lineman, like it'll all not be swept under the rug, but when you're winning and like say the offensive linemen are kind of weary coming back it may be a little awkward conversation i'm sure russell explained to him like hey i wasn't talking about you i was talking about maybe some of the play calling i didn't have enough outs when they were blitzing us and all this stuff but if russell plays well like it's going to be forgotten about like and, it's not even going to be an issue and his sign off is going to go uh, thanks to the big boys up front and go hawks yep. yeah. that's going to become the new yeah. thanks to the big boys up front and go hawks just uh, automatically <laughs> yeah but if think about it though if he comes out out at the gate in the first four games, he throws eight picks, oh. then they may have some issues. Team three is going to be lied. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Kyle in Cleveland. What's going on, boys? Hey, the draft's coming to Cleveland here in a little bit. How you feeling? Yeah. Oh, man, feeling fantastic. Woo. Fantastic. Yeah, woo. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> woo. Man, woo. so I have an OBJ problem. 
Okay. OBJ prom. He slid into my girl's DMs. Oh, shit. When? When was that? Soon? Recent? Yeah. Yeah. Prove it. Yeah. Well, don't, don't prove it. He, and then he hung up, by the way. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So. Seems like that's probably a lie, but the Odell Beckham problem should be one where you're going to have to figure out how to give him the ball enough because that guy is an absolute monster on the football field. That Browns team got very good, and that's the Fansky offense there, second half of the season. And everybody's like, it was after Odell left. It was like, no, I think it was just the team was figuring out what the offense is. You drop that into what they were, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. into that. If you think about the weapons graphic that old Dirty Gertie made earlier, and we put that up, the Browns have a lot of weapons as well. <laughs> <laughs> too deep at tight end, very deep in the running back position. Two Jarvis and Odell, two very explosive wide receivers. Baker seems to be very comfortable. That team, you should be excited if you're a Brown. I don't know about any of the other stuff you got going on, though, pal. <laughs> of course. How would the Browns not? Like, their defense got better, too. And they were kicking the tires on Clowney. Do we know anything about him? Is he signed? Like, it when will he sign? I don't know. I don't know. Last year it was like he'll wait until why not wait. just wait? Why mm -hmm. not wait? And I'm like, well, now it's now it'll be until after the draft. They're like, now there's this weird time where why would you sign him? You want to see what you do in the draft? Yeah, and I think that's happening potentially with some other free agents that are out there. It's like Richard what? Sherman. Richard Sherman's still out there. He said this morning that he doesn't expect to sign until after the draft. Yeah, because teams will see who they get, how they get, how they shake up. He might become very expensive post-draft for a couple teams that maybe don't hit on somebody that they mm -hmm. thought they would get. We're in an interesting time right now, obviously, in between the season and the draft and pro days. Justin Fields is scheduling another pro day. He'll be throwing. Will that be for the 49ers? Ooh. Are the 49ers all in on Matt Jones, or are they potentially going to take Justin Fields? Whoa. Ooh. How about Zach Wilson? Is he locked in at two? Joe Douglas said there has there hasn't been a lot of interest out here. Uh, uh, a lot to talk about tomorrow. Can't wait for it. AJ, anything to say to these people listening on Sirius before Chris Mad Dog Russo comes on? Yeah, I appreciate you uh, bringing me on with Goldman. I was good to be with that guy and speak to him. The greatest thing he ever said, though, when he said, I don't know, to one of Connor's questions. You don't hear a lot of snake oil salesmen will say, I don't know. Normally they say, they think they have all the answers. It felt like he was very genuine. Something that Chris Mad Dog hey, Russo, hey, Mad Dog hey, hey. me in six minutes. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, you do you gave an actual thing there. I didn't expect that. I did yeah, not plan uh, for that, but then you gave an actual thing and it was like, okay, here we go. Awesome. I, I knew to cut it off. I, I, I knew there's a hard out. Like I knew what to, to try to wrap it up. But I appreciate you doing the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, awesome. awesome. Thank, you, AJ. AJ. Thank you for that. Because I had a Father Jim, the priest in Green Bay, who McCarthy loved. Father Jim's the man, still talk to him. He was over at dinner one night. My wife made a dinner, and we're sitting there, and I'm peppering him, just millions of questions over and over again. And a couple of times, like he's like, you know what, AJ? He's like, I don't know. And I like, I wanted to hug him. I'm like, you're the man. Like, because a lot of wow. people never say I don't know. They're always going to give you an answer. By the way, the Father Jim questions, if there were anything like the FCA head questions that I had, I, I love the fact that yes. he did say I don't know because the person I was talking to sometimes had to have a – I'm not sure about that one, Bob. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. I appreciate yeah. that. I, I really respect because there are people that have never been asked or never given the answer. Oh, I'm not sure. You know what I mean? There are some of those people out there. Roger Goodell. Yeah. Well, but doesn't Roger always have something to say no matter what, even though it's nothing? And that's because Roger Goodell, by the way, does have the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Roger Goodell has the answer so good to every question you have that he actually gives an entire answer without saying it. Uh -huh. So that's how good Roger Goodell is in knowing things. Let's answer some phone calls and get out of here, huh? Mick, go ahead and shut them off. Well, they're already shut off. Had a baby, Mick. We should make a rule like if it's the last 15 minutes of show yeah. and we answer calls... Leave it there because right now I feel like I'm going to feel bad. Sure. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel bad. No. no. But I also shouldn't. know Hammer Don is coming live yes. here. Right. You know what I mean? There's a studio. Like, I I'm pretty excited for what this Hammer Don's going to do, by the way, AJ. Have you heard this? Tone? Is Diggs here? Yeah. Is Diggs in town? Yeah. He's hosting the. He's starting today. We did it yesterday at four o'clock, but we couldn't go live because it was first day of YouTube. Now he's going live today at four. And I believe it's either going to be at immediate end of this show or four o'clock each day. We're not 100% sure. I think four makes it easier for people. A handoff from this show to that show, though, is probably a better idea early. Yeah. So we got to figure out that whole thing, but I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be good. It's all Always good to have a daily gambling show uh, coming out of your facility, especially in the world that we're in right now. Yeah. Is uh, is Lombardi coming on every day now? Well, see, that's the thing. I, I thought I was going to be able to just, you know, but that's not how it works, I guess. There's contracts and shit. I thought I was just going to be like, hey, what's the number? 
okay, let's do it. And it's just like, all right, here mm -hmm. you go, whatever it is. But I guess there's also, you know, prior obligations. <laughs> yeah. So uh, did, not, did not think it all the way through, but we will be finding, you know what I mean? We are to create it. And there's something rather large coming to this office. So, hey, what, hey. What could it be? Hey. No. Hey. No. Mm -mm. Hey, Jay. Come on. What's up? Come on. I'm up to something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, there's big things coming. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Stomp on them. There's big things coming, dude. Don't don't hurt the hokas, man. <laughs> I can't. By the way, that's why I could yeah. I didn't stomp on oh, shit. Impossible. You know what I mean? I'm laying on uh, therapeutic, pal. You know that commercial where the that's wine right. glass is on one mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. and they're doing jumping jacks on the other side? Yeah. That's what the hoka and uh, uh, nays are. Hell yeah. <laughs> I am staying a little taller today, though, all right? Looking down on more people here. Oh, yeah. That's right. About two, three more inches on these platforms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's get to phone calls. Evan in Buffalo. Hey, AJ boys, how you doing? Pal, not shabby. How are you? I don't want to speak for everybody. I'll speak for me, though, because actually, guys, how you doing? I'm good. Very good. Hey, good. Hey, doing great. AJ. Great, great, great. Okay, right. go. We're good. That's we're good. Also, happy two-year anniversary of the MetLife crisis to Zito. Everything starts going shout mad out, again. Jeez. Shout out, Chad Hanks. Shout out. Uh, shout out. Shout out. Um, Sheesh. It's a white boy oh summer. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rude boy. Shut up. What do you got going on? Well, my, well, my question is that since the salary cap is all fake and it's all bullshit, is it? I know I doubt it's legal, but will we ever see it so where teams can trade? salary cap and just essentially buy players from other teams yeah, the, the loan happens in soccer right all yeah. the time like you play on loan or whatever i don't think the nfl will get to that point no i'm not sure unless i misheard the question is that what he was basically no, asking? that was yeah yeah pretty much trade it, cap it's but now with the potential voidable 10-year contracts that are right around the corner once once everybody sees what greenberg did down there and and what the saints did with Taysom hill i mean it's only a matter of time before that type of shit happens and do the players have an out too who who gets to void the voidable years you think in these aj i don't think the players have any control of that those voidable years i mean they're, it's like they're not even there so it's not like a meet in good faith it's basically like the the team can void these contracts yeah because yeah. if they couldn't Taysom hill would be playing special teams for 40 million dollars for the next four years yeah but the, the the guaranteed money is very different than the voidable year stuff the, i'm talking guaranteed money is the only thing that really matters but the voidable year 160 million dollar deal they potentially did that so they could up the signing bonus for a one-year deal and not have any guaranteed money down the road, potentially, with all of these things are working. I just, the player, if the player can't void out, that kind of goes against, I guess, like 10-year deals being signed every mm -hmm. single deal. Like, here, here's a 10-year deal, voidable years there. Because if the player can't ever hit free agency again, then it would be yeah. a little bit of an issue. I, I assumed it was already understood mutually that they are voided. Like, they, they're just, they're non-existent. They're existent for the purpose of establishing the contract, and then once it's signed, they disappear. They're actual voided years as opposed yes. to voidable years. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, man. So they use voidable so it doesn't give away exactly what they're actually doing publicly, even though everybody's going to talk about it. Yeah. Help the team immediately. Well, PR-wise. Yeah. I mean, cap, right? Man, it's fucking wild. You think Aaron's going to get a 45-year, uh, $6 billion deal potentially? I hope so. No, they hate him. What are they going to do? Yeah, what are they going to do? With well, we don't know. I don't know. We, we actually let off the show talking about that because he crushed Jeopardy last night. Mm -hmm. And whenever we talked to Aaron while you were on your last day of your vacation, we talked to Aaron Rodgers here. Um, Connor asked the question, by the way. He wanted to ask you, uh, what did you want to ask him? Uh, who? Who's that? AJ. Oh, uh, AJ. Which, which day of the week are you leaving for your vacation? Yeah, are you leaving tomorrow morning for your next vacation, or are you leaving Friday and, afternoon? And by the way, this is that recall part. We literally talked about that about an hour ago, and, <laughs> and he did not remember Completely that. Completely gone. But that, that's, that whole, that's that whole thing. And I was like, take it easy, because AJ was antsy to get back. Yeah. Please take it easy on AJ or whatever. But while you were on vacation on Monday, um, we talked to Aaron. 
And when he said, and I made him say it again because the service kind of cut out when he said it, and I knew it was a pretty important thing he said. I asked him about the full-time host. He said, I would love to be the host of Jeopardy going forward. I, and then he complimented me on taking a leap, and a lot of people thought what I did was stupid in there. And quietly, right at night, it was hard not to think like, oh, this dude is going to retire, and this dude is going to be the host of Jeopardy. Like, maybe he plays one more year, then he's going to be the host of Jeopardy. It just quietly, I was starting to think that, especially how he crushed Jeopardy. Like, yeah. I was I was like, oh my God, this is what he's going to do. Then the Shailene Woodley live Instagram where he was like, I am not retiring. I was like, okay, that kind of puts a wrench in. Then he said he could do both. So if he's not planning on retiring or even has a thought of retiring, which he said on his Mrs. IG Live just yesterday, you would think that the contract would have to get handled then at some point. Because my thinking was if he's going to retire after this year and be Jeopardy host, that's why the contract thing isn't happening mm -hmm. because he's already kind of, and that's why Mark Murphy's like, I can't talk about that or whatever because there's I, that's not the case at all he came out and said so they have to get that thing done don't they well yeah but it's going to be tough and the jeopardy has there's not jeopardy i don't think affects it at all i think it what does it look like does he would love to sign probably like a four-year extension or five-year and what are the packers willing to do give him like one more year to you that's the thing like they don't if they don't fully commit to him as like finishing his career why would he agree to it Finishing his career in Green Bay. There's so many things probably happening behind the scenes that we don't know about. But, man, it is. You're talking about one of the guys, like yeah. Mount Rushmore yeah. quarterbacks right now who just had an MVP season, so he's not shitty. Yeah. You know, this guy, not shitty at football. This is nowhere near that. And with what you're seeing with Tom Brady at 43, 46, 40, 50, or whatever he's doing, you know, there's a chance with how Aaron takes care of his body and everything he does and his natural. He could play another seven years if he easily, another seven years if he wants to. You would think with what you've seen around the NFL, you would want to you would want to take advantage of that you just would want to take, but if i don't know if it feels like it's not that way right now well because of the brady situation you got to get it done before the season because when you read the book the dynasty brady knew going into 2019 that this would be his last season in new england because of the fact that they wouldn't extend him past and give him guaranteed money like rogers is looking for so if they don't get it done before the season then it's safe to say Aaron uh -huh. rogers is probably playing quarterback for the new england patriots whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, i said it whoa. I said it and I meant it. Okay, let's let's live in a fantasy oh. land right now that isn't real, but since he brought it up, how many teams are interested in bringing in Aaron Rodgers immediately upon finding out that he's available? Fair time. 31. <laughs> yep. I think 30 probably, maybe 29, legit. Yeah, but if he if there was a team where he said, "Hey, I want to go here." And who is name a starting quarterback that someone would be like, yeah, we could try to make it work maybe two years here, Aaron, and you can just take a break, whoever it is. No, so it's they would definitely so you would think Patrick Mahomes, yeah, that, yeah. Kansas City's locked in half a billion okay. dollars. Brady. Tom Brady, you would think they'd be locked in. Now, what Herbert does this upcoming year is big deal. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. But other than that, I think everybody would be like, well, we can get to the fucking drawing board. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mean, can we get Aaron Rodgers on this team? But that's exactly what I thought would happen with Tom Brady, and it's coming out that people were interested more than it was being reported, but nowhere near as much as I thought, so I, I, I might be fucking wrong. Well, and you never know what happens every offseason, too. Like, I never think that Russell Wilson would all of a sudden be possibly out of his way of Seattle. Uh, he's there for the long haul, though. Go Hawks. Well, yeah, yeah. they need to show the next text being, you know, as long as Pete Carroll's done at the end of next uh, year, you're saying, I'm Carlos. here forever, you know? AJ, but you're right, though. I think, but I thought this about Tom Brady though too I was like what there's probably four teams three four teams that aren't at least thinking when, about this when are we saying this when could this be a possibility though that you're saying in this hypothetical that Aaron would be available well so it would have to be after this next year because all the guaranteed money's up there's no way they go into a season with no guaranteed money yeah. there, there's just no way that happens so in Mazzioana said this morning that uh that there in league some circles there is not an expectation but a real thought that with only one year because we all know the guaranteed money especially for the quarterback position is is all that matters there's only one year left of guaranteed money that might as well not even be a contract after that so it feels like a lot of people are like is this a real thing like is he going to be potentially available after this season well think about how many teams get stuck in some bad cap trouble when they have a quarterback who they paid him to be a franchise quarterback and it turns out they don't believe in him anymore i mean jared Goff comes to mind all these guys where they they're willing to eat like big dead cap numbers 
aren't you willing to take a risk, take a flyer if your guy's Aaron Rodgers and say, hey, I don't know, maybe seven years from now he'll get hurt and we'll have a big cap number on him. But, hey, we're going to take the good times until then. Hey, Aaron, we'll give you a, a 10-year, half-billion-dollar contract. Mm-hmm, yep. Whenever you want to hang it up, hang it up. We'll just kick all this shit down the road, by the way. Mm-hmm. And we won't have to – we'll have you renegotiate. There'll be some signing bonuses. We'll do it. You see what te- – Tom's been doing that? We'll just do that. We'll be – and by the way, we're going to build this team for you now. We're, mm-hmm. we're going to build this thing. That could happen. And maybe Green Bay, by the way, is the team that's can- currently having that conversation. Maybe they're also having that conversation with Aaron. We are not 100% sure if that's happening. Yeah, you would just think there's no way to defend not – extending him coming off winning the MVP. Like, it'd be one thing maybe if last year there was still some like button to the heads with the floor or whatever and he didn't do what he did, but like unless you think Jordan Love can step in after this next year and immediately play like an MVP, there's just no way to justify not extending him. Let's get to another phone call. Let's go to Matt and Charlotte. What's going on, Matt? What's going on, Pat and the boys and AJ? What's happening? Hey, how you doing, Diner in a Queen City, dude? Hey, just doing it, man. We got us a new Tar Heel basketball head coach. So we'll we'll figure out what that's going to look like. Who is it? Uh, Hubert Davis. Oh, lucky Hubert Davis. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, Hubert Davis. You. Okay, let's carry over that, you know, powder blue tradition down there at UNC. Mm-hmm. Now, are you uptown Charlotte or are you out in the suburbs? No, I'm out in the suburbs. Oh. I'm, I'm on the west side. Okay, is that by Lake Norman down there? Yeah, it's pretty close to it. Okay, nice. It's a beautiful town you guys got down there. I uh, I won storage warring down there in the show. Oh, nice. Ooh. Yeah, everybody yeah, like Norman. Dave yeah. Hester. Yeah, left uptown, went outside there, did mm-hmm. a storage war thing. Yeah. 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 What do you want to talk about, Matt? Hey, first off, you guys are killing it, man. Thank you for everything you guys do. Love listening, watching you guys on the YouTube and all of that. Appreciate you. Um, but, but I got an NFL question for you. Um, now that the, the league is adding a 17th game and uh, I've heard you talk about it. You know, maybe if it's if it's great, you know, down the road they'll maybe talk about having the 18th game. We know that 17th week is going to be big time with big time games. Has there been discussion, or what what are your thoughts on if they would look at roster sizes going up now that there's more games and dealing with injuries and those kind of things? Great question. There, that is, I, I guess, COVID had them what keeping more people around. There's the practice squad uh, squad was extended. I think they made it bigger. The new CBA, I believe. They also said they make it bigger. More games, if they were to go to 18 games, you'd think they would have to open that thing up a little bit. That'd be good for everybody. Yeah, maybe, what, add one or two uh, roster spots. They already upped the game day roster, didn't they? You have 53, but you could only dress, what, 45, 46? What is it now? Yeah, I forget. Maybe 48? Ah, I don't know. They had the IR rule, too, this year, right, where you could send guys Come to the back, and yeah. bring back. Yeah, that's, that's a good like – that right? should absolutely be there. I like yeah. the new IR rule. I think everybody likes it, and I like the fact that they – they were probably thinking about this for a while, and then COVID came, and they're like, all right, okay, let's go ahead and test this out here. I, I think that was a good move by them. They should definitely do that because, I mean, especially with seven – that's a long time. That's for over four months or whatever. You know, like there's a chance guys can come back from pretty serious things and really still make contention. I'm, I'm happy the, the IR bounce back is something that happens. Alex in Philly, what's going on? Hello? I'll tell you what, down there where Rocky ran them stairs, pal, Mm -hmm. there's a cheesesteak down the road from there, and it's not Pat or Gino's. What is it? It's fucking Dal Sandro's, dude. What do you want to talk about, pal? Sorry about that. I'm actually working at a cheesesteak place right now. What's it called? Uh, What's it called? uh, Are we allowed to do free shout-outs or what? If you work there, I I think you will become – if you're listening to the show and you work at a place, it'll become our cheesesteak place, I believe. It's called uh, the original Thunderbird in Broomall, right outside of uh, West Philly. The original Thunderbird. That's a tough name. Yeah. That place stinks. That's a tough Whoa. name. How, how, have you always gone there? Is it just a job? Of, do you feel like you're... Uh, well, it's family owned, and I'm in the family. Okay, so we oh, okay. The Thunderbird. Okay, the original Thunderbird, the OT, dude. Of course, that's where we're getting our Philly cheese. Pal, we appreciate you listening. What do you want to talk about? So, uh, funny you mentioned Aaron Rodgers being on the Mount Rushmore quarterback. I'm calling in because it's WrestleMania week. Damn right. And I wanted to talk to you about your Mount Rushmore of WWE stars. Great question, Alex, especially with the Hall of Fame last night. Did you get to watch any of that, AJ? 
I did not. I was aware it was on, but I did not get to see it. Uh, it was interesting. It, it, they made it because without the crowd, obviously, it's a much different show. And without the other superstars being there to watch, it was just, it was, in, they did it. They did it. They celebrated. I think everybody that went in there was definitely worthy and awesome. And But they, just like everything, it, it was a little bit different than normal. Uh, the new, new, new World Order went through. That was the, uh, the main event there. Uh, Scott Hall surf walked. Uh, X Pac was awesome. And uh, Kevin Nash made a great Led Zeppelin quote. And mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan said he's putting the title up <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was it was an awesome. I mean, to do a Mount Rushmore for wrestling, there's so many different buckets. OK, like who are the people that made wrestling big? Well, it's obviously like, OK, you got to go Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. You have to do like that. Bruno San Martino. You have to have like a, an old school thing. Then if you talk about like a marquee Mount Rushmore, like, okay, who took this company and made it into this multi-bazillion dollar company? It's like, okay, you got Stone Cold, you got The Rock, uh, you got Triple H and, mm -hmm. and Degeneration X in there. You got the Attitude Era as a whole almost. You put Kurt Angle in there. Ric Flair goes in there. I mean, there's just an entire group there. So Mount Rushmore is difficult. But then if you do like Legacy and everything like that. Brock Lesnar has to be on there. Randy Orton has to be on there. The fact that Triple H is running now, another word, that goes mm -hmm. on there. Chris Jericho is a guy who's been around for absolute all time. Cena was Ron, You put Ronda on there? Ronda Rousey, I would say great. Uh, Mount Rushmore of Outsiders Wrestling. Okay. Which, by the way, I'm also on there, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to be there. She did much. Congrats. Congrats on sharing that with her. Thank you. It's an honor to be up there. It is an honor to be up there. Uh, many would say maybe the front face up there, but I did not I did not work nearly as much as Rhonda did, so she's probably actually number one there. And I think she is actually a professional wrestler at this point, so it's not really outsider at that whole thing, but she's... A, so there's so many different ways to view it. I mean, whenever something's around for as many decades as it is and seen by so many people, it's a show that comes and goes with storylines. It's too hard to do, pal, but I am pumped. It's WrestleMania week for sure, AJ. Is, is that what you are up to? Because you're gonna, you're teasing some big thing that's gonna happen on WrestleMania. Oh, is it WrestleMania week? Oh, huh. mm. so, oh, are right. you diet? Are you uh, are you keto this week? Am I dieting? Oh. Do I look a little bit tanner than oh. normal? Oh, oh, wait a minute! I, I know you you definitely been on this time, or you're too. just not putting on your story, so you're definitely up to something. How am I feeling? I mean, I'm, oh. feel, I'm feeling pretty loose. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm feeling pretty if, loose. Hey, if we see you with a deep, deep spray tan on Friday, we know something's up. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that first spray tan? We learned from it. it was too much. Okay, it was too much. Yeah. Can't go that deep into the spray spectrum. Need to kind of dial it back. We learned our lesson when I was sweating out drops onto the yeah. floor. I mean, that was a little bit difficult. We learned our lesson, but trial and error. It is interesting that I am in good shape, and it is WrestleMania. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Pretty good haircut. Shaved my face a little bit. Hmm. Just interviewed a Buccaneer today. I'm up to something. Uh -oh. <laughs> Wait, where's where is WrestleMania, and is there are there fans? What is it? Yeah, so there are fans. I think happening. It's in Tampa. Twenty five thousand fans. Twenty five thousand um, yeah. in Florida. So much different than Texas. Texas was just open. Oh yeah. <laughs> Texas in Florida, by the way, for a long time, everybody's like, oh, they're just open. They're just open. And that was in comparison to the rest of the country. There were still mask mandates and how many people could be in places. I think Florida has more rules than Texas does right now. So 25,000 people in the stadium. It is a two night affair this weekend. Uh, tonight and tomorrow night though, NXT's WrestleMania uh, pay-per-view stand and deliver is airing both on the USA Network and Peacock, I believe simultaneously. Right? Right? Correct. Bingo. And Florida's got the uh, UFC fight coming up, too. Oh, yeah. So they they are, Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jacksonville. They, so that place sold out, right? Yeah. yeah. In, in, in minutes. minutes. Yeah. But full. 15,000. Full. full. Or 17,000. I, I think it's 17,000. Is that full? I don't think. I didn't I don't think, think it was that full is capacity. full. Arena in Jackson, the arena in Jacksonville? Yeah. Yeah, 15, 17. That's probably a sellout for them. Okay. So they were able to do sellout for UFC there, 15, 17,000. In Tampa, only 25,000, which is what? Probably 40% of what that stadium is? Yeah. Or 30% of that stadium? Yeah. So I wonder how that happens. Well, that's how. That's outdoors compared to indoors, right? Yeah, but outdoors is supposed to be more, mm -hmm. yeah. more open, I thought. So maybe it's just a. Uh, I don't know. I didn't think the Jacksonville was a full sellout. Well, capacity is 15,000. Yeah, it's the biggest gate in arena history, it says. Yeah, and by the way, it could be 
You don't think that's at full capacity? I don't think it is. <laughs> Still don't. It's actually, by the way, it outdid the test. <laughs> the biggest, because they got floor, because they got actually floor seats for this thing, too. So that thing sold out in Jacksonville. Yeah. But in Tampa, can they not? Uh, who knows? Doesn't make sense. Know. Those who purchased tickets had to sign a waiver. It's like when you go into a haunted house. COVID-19. <laughs> hey, you might be fucked here. Hey. They can touch you. Did you watch the Eric Andre thing? Did I? Yeah. No. With what you just said? No, why? Oh. Uh-oh. Does that happen? What? What <laughs> happens? <laughs> what what happens? Why, why did you say that? <laughs> what? Just keep your eyes peeled out there. Let's go to Brandon, North Carolina. What's oh going on, pal? Oh, my God. Hey, what's going on, Pat? Happy Feel Good Friday Eve Eve. Hey, hey you're nice. damn right. Happy Feel Good Eve 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 you, you too. Mm-hmm. Now we know what happens at the zoo. Well, the Roman's <laughs> lives are involved. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what would you like to talk about, Brandon? On a human or another uh, primate? When you like to Oh, so you've seen the movie? Why don't you fucking stop doing t- uh, spoilers, dude? And we're trying I to. I haven't seen it. I'm just. I can't What's imagine a human. What's wrong gets with you? Well, obviously, it's a human on human. I'm going to watch it tonight. What do you want to talk about, Brandon? Yeah, so, Pat, in all of my fantasy leagues, it's pretty known that uh, Jimmy G stinks. All right? He's trash. Come on. Uh, walking trash. Now, my question he did have, for you he, guys is. He did have eight because, pass attempts in a game. Mm-hmm. I would assume for fantasy, that is not great. Walking yeah, trash. Yeah, he's, he's trash. But listen, his jawline, we all know, is A-plus top tier. My question is, if he didn't have a top tier jawline that r- rivals A.J. Hawk, would he, uh, what would he still be talking about him? For instance, if he looked like Gollum or uh, <laughs> fucking Mike Glennon, would we even be talking about Jimmy G in the league? Or Brandon Whedon even. I, I mean, Mike the, Glennon's still in the league. So, yes, Jimmy G would still be in the league. Skycam started some games this year in Jackson. Yeah, right. Please have a little bit of respect. He was a nice guy, by the way. Had, yeah, great guy. Had a beer with Ice him. cold beer. He was a good mm-hmm. guy, Mike right. Glennon. But I do believe Jimmy G's handsomeness is a part of the aura that is Jimmy G, but that is not why he has the gig he has or everything revolves around how he does on the field and the success his teams have had. And potentially also he is, you know, kind of education from Tom Brady's quarterback camp that he had for a couple of years. I'll be interested to see what happens with Jimmy G, like where he may go and if he can find a way to, to revive his career. Remember when he – was it his first year starting when everyone freaked out because he went to dinner with a porn star? Uh, it was after his first year starting, I think. It was in the off season. yeah. yeah. Why was that – like why was – why were people upset? Because I think he's really attractive. He just won a bunch of games. He was the San Francisco 49ers, like, savior at that point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think it was – anybody was up – were people upset about it? I think people acted like, oh, he's not focused, or he's. Not, I shouldn't uh, say people. I'm sure a few. Uh, so he's having sex with a professional. Yeah. yeah. This guy is not focused on the thing. No. Not focused on the thing. I mean, so what? You know, the guy <laughs> likes to get his baloney chewed on in his off time. Give him, give him a fucking break. He's an NFL quarterback. Stressful job. An incredibly attractive NFL quarterback. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Christ, get off Jimmy G's back. <laughs> or get off his. Dong. Because <laughs> it's he probably is trying to get that thing polished as quick as possible. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> this, this baloney chew dog. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's, he's, uh, ties, ties. <laughs> Because I do remember that now. TMZ had the big Oh, speaking oh, yeah. of TMZ, hey, we knew they'd find out. Harvey who? Harvey Levin, the man who created TMZ and everything like that, was also outside of People's Court. I think he did interviews, and he has an uh, interview show. And I always watched TMZ, you know, for a long time. So I know greatly about Harvey Levin's work and everything like that. But as soon as we heard the L.A. County Sheriff's Department come out and say, uh, we are not releasing the reason... Uh, we do know it, but we are not releasing the reason for why Tiger Woods got into a crash for privacy purposes. Our immediate reaction was like, oh, Harvey, Harvey at TMZ ain't going to let that fly. Like, that, <laughs> that, that, that ain't. Now TMZ is reporting that he was speeding. He was going like 83 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone whenever he crashed. Speed was sole cause, they say. This comes after reports were also saying that he was driving frantically around the resort or the hotel he was staying at. Uh, my immediate thoughts was he thought he was going to be late to something. I believe he had a a golf lesson with Drew Brees and a couple other people at the golf course that was hosting the tournament that he was at. So maybe he was late. He was frantic. He was driving, which, by the way, humanizes Tiger in this whole thing. Uh, But it's nice to know that a lot of the negative projections early on this accident apparently 
aren't true. He was speeding, which, by the way, can't do. Very reckless. That is a reckless thing to do. 83 and a 45 is very, very reckless. But it seems like there was nothing else that could potentially be in there. Tiger has since released a statement. In the last few days, I received word from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department that their investigation regarding my traffic accident back on February 20. Third in Los Angeles has been completed and closed. I am so grateful to both the good Samaritans who came to assist me and called 911. I am also thankful to the LA uh, Sheriff's Department deputies and LA firefighter paramedics, especially LA Sheriff's Deputy Carlos Gonzalez and LA Fire Department Engine Company 106 Fire Paramedics Smith and Jimenez. Uh, Jimenez, what's that from? That's from uh, some... Baskin Robbins. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry about it. the paranoia <laughs> save lights here for helping me so expertly or uh, ex expertly at the scene and getting me safely to the hospital. I will continue to focus my recovery and family and thank everyone for the overwhelming support and sure. encouragement I've received throughout this very difficult time. Tiger. Okay, so speed was the reason he was speeding. I assume he got a ticket for that. And uh, let's let's hope he gets back into golf and shape. People yeah. are saying the pedal got stuck. Oh, I read an article that the he pedal, didn't break. Yeah, he didn't isn't that the breaks. most like? Z, don't you think that's the weirdest thing? Yeah, that, like, they show that he it was didn't, pushed like, down ninety eight percent the whole time. Here's from the, here's crossing. from the New York Times. The captain of the Lameda Sheriff Station, James Power, said that data was obtained from the vehicle's event data recorder, known colloquially, colloquially. colloquially. What the fuck? <laughs> commonly. Uh, get Dr. Goldman. I've never commonly. seen that one. Now, I'll tell you what, that one would get me every time. Colloquially, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. the black box, the data showed that Woods had hit the accelerator throughout the crash and that the pressure applied to the pedal was 99%. Power said he believed that Woods inadvertently hit the accelerator while trying to brake. Oh. Seems like sabotage. Half asleep, maybe. Yeah, yeah. exotic so car. Hey, also, pedal. Hey, Pat, you know what goes into that, too, I think? His back injury, possibly. I know I'm usually a two-footed driver. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the pedal. I know some people don't do that. I've had times where my back, my back was messed up, where I was one-foot driver with my left. So left was on the brake, and left would go to the. Gas. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, we've all tested like the left foot on the gas and left foot on the brake. You're a two-foot driver. Always, yeah. What the fuck is that? Just what you guys do in Ohio? Why is that happening? I don't know. I mean, I learned to drive on a stick. Maybe that's part of it. But no, no yeah, the stick I, is for the clutch, dude. Actually, you, you know why? You want to know why? Because I think it goes back to when I, I mean, I've had crazy knee pain my whole life. But when I pulled my groin 10 years ago, I couldn't lift my right foot up. So I just kept that <laughs> down there and then my left foot on okay. the brakes. So maybe I've just done it since then. By the way, I've been there, okay, with a knee thing. I couldn't move it. So you got to break with the left foot. But boy, my dad, you know, truck driver, long time professional driver. He hates you. Uh, yeah. I was taught in a very, very early age. You put that left foot on the brake, there's a good chance you're just riding the brake the entire time. No. And no. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay. If, you have, if you have zero awareness, yeah, you'll ride the brake the whole time. Well, right? some would say you have zero awareness because you're driving with two feet and you just openly said it as if it was a normal thing. <laughs> Well, yeah, and I was saying, as it goes to Tiger, there's a good chance his back was messed up and he couldn't lift his whatever leg hurt the most. He was trying to drive with one, maybe his left. He was trying to do it all, yeah. or and he just jams the accelerator. That's a scary thing to happen. I think what we take away from today's show, two PhDs say situations are situational. That's right. And in this particular situation, the situation I'm dealing with now is realizing that you are a two-footed driver. I, I did nobody. That was. Everybody, I figured everybody was, but then somebody saw me. One of my buddies saw me doing. I'm like, "What? Well, yeah, how how do you drive?" Not, <laughs> Not like, like that. that. <laughs> yeah. So when you're driving a stick, you go clutch, shift, brake. Is that where your foot goes to? My left. Uh, yeah. Wow. Man, you're getting a full work. Guy never stops working out. That's, That's right. right. You know what I mean? Guy never starts working out. <laughs> I was always in shape. Man, I did not know that was a normal thing. Like you said, it all, but it, it all comes from being in in some kind of pain and not being able to lift yeah. your leg that little like two inches to go back and forth. And like I did say early upon learning that you're a two-footed driver, I have been in numerous situations where I couldn't lift my leg. You can move it enough to get it off the gas, but your left foot has to be the one doing the braking, the moving back and forth. You almost have to would have to lift it and move it. But the fact that you have just become well, a trend there. Yeah, it's dangerous. Nick, what you do you should have? try it. I have a little touch. 
little I touch can't. with your left foot. I tried the other day. I felt like I was the worst driver on uh, on the road I was on. Mm-hmm. No thanks. I was driving one time and I was wearing flip flops and my foot slipped in between the brake and gas. And when I pulled my foot back up, it caught on the brake pedal and the cover of the brake pedal actually came off. Oh, so it just w- a little metal thing. Just a little metal thing. And I went to hit it again, slid off of it, <laughs> smashed right in the car in front of me. So it could have been nice. like that. Wow. They tell you not to drive with the flippy floppies. They do. They'll get you. Wow. You should drive barefoot instead of the flippy floppies, they say. That's a smart move. Yeah. Nick, I'm happy to hear you're okay, by the way, after that. Scary moment. Seriously. Lesson learned. The, f- the thing getting locked down, by the way, though, oh. is a nightmare. Oh, yeah. <sighs> what if a conspiracy, what if his car was someone tapped into it electronically and they did that to him? Well, that's what Tiger did not say in his report, right? They'd gone through the investigation. It is closed. It is over. So it's not like he's suing the rental car company or the car company at all or anything like that. <sighs> Happy he's all right. Yeah. They were a big sponsor. He was driving the sponsored car from yeah. that Genesis yeah. event. Yeah. The, Can't well, say much about it. <laughs> listen, there's two things, you know, you go, yeah. Did they try to kill me? No, okay. I won't say it. No, just let's redo the deal. <laughs> Two billion. Well, that car, I, I mean, it sounds like the car saved his life. It has like 10 airbags built in all over the place. So it sounds like it really did a good job to save it. Yeah, I'm happy he's okay and happy he's not dead. That was a scary morning whenever that was reported. Oh, yeah. The um, Let's go to some phone calls. Eric in Texas, what's going on, Eric? Hi, Pat and the boys. How y'all doing over there? Yeah. Better now. Yeah. Here Better we go. now, Eric. What do you want to talk about? Hey, Pat. First lap ended. I con and I racing. Hey. I got two things here, man. This happened about a couple of weeks ago. This has been going on. Y'all been taking the deuce on my boy. Who? My, you guys on the Dallas Cowboys saying that that Washington football chalk straps. Oh. The NFC. Y'all been taking the deuce on them. I, like, what's up? Well, your team is deuced all over you guys, the fans, for years now. Haven't they been deucing all over you guys? Hey, let me tell you something. You know why there's a hole in the roof? Because we're God's favorite team to watch, okay? <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys are going to be coming out of the NFC this year. You go ahead and put your money on them Washington football jock straps and go ahead and let me rake a little bit of that in. Okay, Eric, I appreciate that. AJ, that sounds like a guy who's speaking your language. You had them in the Super Bowl last year. I assume you're doing the same thing. You and Eric <laughs> on the same page there? <laughs> Yeah, we're on the same page all the way around, I feel like, with, <laughs> with young Eric. But is it was it Jerry Jones who came up with that, that we're God's favorite team to watch? That's why we have the whole? I would assume that yeah. is something that is oh, within yeah. the Jeez. Cowboys' focus. What, yeah. what a great marketing tool to come up with. Well, America's team. That was allegedly yeah. pitched. Wanstat yeah. came out on a Fox pregame show. I don't know if it was college or NFL. It might have been the pre-show or whatever. He comes out and tells this whole story about how the Roonies were offered – uh, the the phrase America's team from the NFL. They're like, hey, we have this marketing pitch since Pittsburgh Steelers fans seem to be everywhere. You just won. Uh, we're thinking you're America's team. And I guess uh, senior there, is that what happened? Is yeah, that- he said it's America's team. It's Pittsburgh team. It's Pittsburgh team. We're, we're not America's team. We're a Pittsburgh team or whatever. Then go down to Jerry down there in Dallas or whatever. And he's like, well, we will be America's oh, yeah. team. Hell yeah. We are okay with America doing that whole thing. So, you know, they got some good shit down there. Smart. Jerry Jones is a great promoter. Great businessman. We need to find a way to get on that yacht someday. They said that missing a home game or something for him is $77 million is what they miss out on. One home game. You mean if without fans or if they just if they play in London or something? Yeah, you know, I forget exactly. It was the extra week, the game. They were, what the extra week will yeah. make them is $77 million. So, so I remember that it was one week was $77 million in that stadium, by the way, that he decided to fund himself. He mm-hmm. said, I'm not taking any my This is my fucking stadium. I'm going to do whatever I fucking want with it. It's going to be expensive, but I'm going to make $77 million every time we open this thing up for the Cowboys. Unbelievable, dude. Awesome. I mean, the stadium's great. We, yeah. me and you, wandered around that place for an hour and a half trying to find the booth. Oh fuck, we did. Mm-hmm. Oh, wrong parking lot. <laughs> we had to drive around that whole thing. We went way up to like the 90th floor. Like, oh yeah, here you go. Here it is. The radio booth. Like, oh, I don't. No, think we're, this is we're doing TV. Actually, <laughs> yeah, it was somebody put us on TV. Oh, yeah. that's on the other side. Yeah, so. it was. It was on the other side, and it was lower. So we had to walk through, you know, potential go-go dancers that are hanging from the sky. <laughs> club suites that are happening that are dangling from the earth and then a rock concert's happening here and then Scott Stapp. I mean it's unbelievable that place. Scott Stapp. Hey. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was that? The, <laughs> that overgrown baby looking guy. Uh -huh. It's got a Nick in Alabama. What's going on, Nick? You can book that guy still. What's going on, Pat and the boy? Hey, yeah. just hanging out. How are you? Scap or the guy? Good, good. The guy. Hey, uh, what do y'all think? Uh, yeah, can y'all hear me? Yeah, you sound good, actually, Nick. Sorry about that. What do you want to talk about, hey. man? Yeah, I wanted to know, what do y'all think about Jalen Waddle? Uh, he's not getting any love this year. I was just curious. Like, I mean, you watch his tape. He he raced against uh, Henry Ruggs. And he's the fastest dude on the team. Like, you said Pitts last year. I mean, was the guy. Well, I think Jalen Waddle's going to be the guy this year. Hey, Nick, roll tight. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. <laughs> Roll tide. Uh, he's not being talked about much, I guess, because he was hurt most of last year. And then when he came in, hurt and played, by the way, in my eyes, I would assume a lot of NFL team raised their respect level for him because he just wanted to be on the field in the moment because he could play. And he was out running people while he's running across the field. Devontae Smith has taken a lot of the attention of those Alabama wide receivers. But I don't think any of the wide receivers are really being talked about right now. Everything's quarterback. We talked about this earlier. Connor was like, should we go through the wide receiver draft and everything like that? I was like, to be honest, I don't think I know enough of the motherfuckers. Like, I know they're yeah. going to be very good. I assume there's going to be good. I don't. The only thing we're really talking about and hearing about is the quarterbacks because I think there's so much potentially happening there that we're not going elsewhere. Etn, Najee Harris, uh, some other running backs. There's going to be some great players in this draft, and I would not be surprised if Waddle was obviously one of them. Oh, he's definitely he is one of them. He's just another one in the long line of talent that comes through Alabama. The guys, I, I think he's going to be a stud, and he already is, but. Yeah, why don't we know any? And it's another receiving class coming out in this draft that is likely to make an instant impact, like this last receiving class did as rookies. So, I, I mean, it just shows you everybody, like, it's all the quarterback. We, Everyone, that's all you care about. There's so much drama going on surrounding that usually isn't out there. It, it, I guess it makes sense. That's all we care about. Well, Lane Kiffin came out and said he didn't think about um, all the um, wide receivers that seem to be transitioning quickly to the NFL and playing well because uh, the Man to Man podcast hosted by Darius Butler and Antoine Bethay, they interviewed, I forget, some uh, veteran safety in corners and they said, who's the hardest? And they said a couple rookies are like, these dudes are game ready as soon as they come out. And that obviously led us to digest that and take it in and be like, well, do you think it's because the college game or why is that? And you kind of go deeper. And I think Lane Kiffin just said, no, there's some dudes. There were just some dudes. Like, hey, I don't know if this is going to become a trend or if this is just some out liars that are potentially there i would assume waddle is going to be one of those guys and pff did have waddle as the highest uh, ranked receiver uh, as far as uh, overall grade goes uh, i guess the nfl has updated or given a announcement on the players that will be coming to indianapolis for the combine that mm, is happening here we go. the first group Oh, this is the draft invitation. This is not the combine. First group that have accepted draft invitations. So this is draft invitations accepted. I thought this was potentially combine. Mac Jones is coming. Trey Lance is coming. Jamar Chase is coming. Devontae Smith is coming. Kyle Pitts is coming. Oh, he's going to have a big night. Here we, go. Yeah. we all think there's going to be some movement for Kyle Pitts. Uh, small Christian. Barmore. Barmore. Yeah. Stud, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Edge Gregory Russo, Micah. <laughs> Edge, that's a cool first name, huh? Yeah, yeah. Edge is a good name. Sweet. By the way, Edge is he's, he's got big matches with oh, Triple Threat. Look out yeah. for Edge. Oh my God, look yeah. out for Edge. Gregory Russo, Micah Parsons, Caleb Farley, Patrick Sertain the second. So okay, so there are players that are going to be there. Notable missing names. Trevor Lawrence said he's watching in Clemson. Yep. Mm -hmm. Justin Fields has not agreed to it because I, by the way, I like if you're Trevor or if you're Justin Fields. I, I would assume they don't even know what's bullshit and what's real right now with what people are feeling, right? Don't you think? Yeah, I don't know. I, I just – I want to know what's going on behind the scenes because especially at this time, we know no GMs, no coach. Like, they're not – if they are talking to each other, it's all garbage. Like, they're all trying to get a feel for what the other one is thinking. So, they know the game. A lot of them have worked together over the years too. So, I don't think anyone truly knows what's happening. Matt Jones must feel pretty good. He should. Yeah, I guess so. Like, especially if he's going. He must, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he must feel very good. Uh -huh. He's going to the. Well, yeah. If okay, if he doesn't, like, let's say he doesn't go three. How far can he drop? I, who knows? We could ask Aaron. We could ask Brady, your brother-in-law. We could ask Johnny. Mm -hmm, we yeah. could ask Baker. Right? Didn't Baker? No, Baker no. went number one. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I thought there was potential, but there's been a lot of that situation out there. Yeah, there's just so many Drew good quarterbacks you can take in the first round, and I think there's a lot of teams that need a quarterback. I hope so, man. I hope we don't have that moment where people... By the way, draft spectacular. Let's go. We're doing it. Yeah! <laughs>
Is it, uh, did, was it, is it Thursday night, Friday? When do they do it now? Jeez, AJ. Yeah, we're not, I think it's Thursday. <laughs> not 100% sure. First round Thursday, probably. What, second and third on Friday? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like and then that. the rest of the weekend, yeah. April 29th. Thursday, the, April 29th. Bro, the NFL tweeted out the video of me doing the draft announcement. The awesome. fucking NFL did. Yeah. Shield. Like, Checkdown puts stuff out. I'm very thankful because Checkdown is an extension of the NFL. Like that's so I'm like, very thank you so much for that. The NFL tweeting, and I was like, okay, here we go. Let's go. Hey, shout out you, NFL. Let's go, dude. Roger Goodell's face, man, when he saw me walking out. I, I assume while I was walking to that microphone, he was, there were some moments where Roger was like, Come on, Pat. Don't fuck this up. <laughs> Please, God. Please, God. Don't. I bet he, honest. I bet he absolutely loves watching you do your thing because he wishes he could be like that free. He wishes he could let it out, but he knows the position he's in. Imagine the shit that Roger Goodell has if oh. he was. You know what I mean? I mean, he's getting paid forty million a year or fifty yeah. million a year, so he'll never have to do that. But. I assume if he was to write a book, mm-hmm. it would be pretty good. If he's been there his whole life, basically at the NFL, it would be very good if he actually like exposed everything that he's been a part of. If he wasn't scared to name some names and, and let us, you know, kind of behind the scenes. Was Roger Goodell created in a lab? In, oh, yeah. by like the he, NFL. You know, how there's always like move, yeah, to be the perfect. Commission. Yeah, mm. he was created by the owners. Maybe the owners came together and created him because That's, he takes all the slings and arrows. That was on South Park. Goodell bought all the owners created. Goodell bought to run the league. Well, that's anyway, okay. So, because like CIA creates. Oh yeah, right. That they just create people. Just, oh yeah, uh-huh. do they? Tom Cruise Who? and stuff. Yeah, sleeper agents. Yeah, Tom Cruise, Keanu mm-hmm. Reeves, and that one right. What he mm-hmm. just created? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Inspector I, Gadget. Of course. Yep. Why wouldn't the biggest league on earth just create somebody? Exactly. From like, did they create him from like as a baby, and they like groomed lab. him He's to be this guy? Lab, lab, grown, lab, grown ass man, lab. How'd they make him so relatable? Well, they gave him peanut M and M's early. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, this is what a lot of people like. Here it is. Recliner. This is what a lot of people like. Love these. <laughs> you can learn all that stuff. Go to my NFL chair where I watch NFL yeah. Sunday. Yeah. You think that was a prompt? You think he was reading that off a prompter? No, it's in his Goodell brain. doesn't need prompter, dude. No. No, no. He's a genius. Okay. It's code. You fucking heard him during that lockout meeting. I'm assuming he came to your training camp as well in front of Did you? He didn't say a single thing. I don't remember him actually addressing the whole team. Ever. Oh. oh wow. So he didn't go to every team. I mean, PA. there's PA people there all the time. He was he was in Green Bay one time, I remember him. But I don't. Yeah, I guess he spoke to the team briefly. Was it for the lockout? Was it whenever he was asking or taking questions? Because I was, I was under the influence that he was doing that. And I was also under the influence, but I was, I was under the assumption that he was doing that with every team. I think that's how it was set up. That didn't happen. Was, was this before the lockout? I think. Yeah. Yeah, he came. I don't know what he. I, I forget what he said. I, I, I don't think he said much. Well, that's kind of what he does, though. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why we're saying is is he potentially creating a lab because he'll say a bunch and really not say anything at all. All I, all I was thinking about was like, man, how much does this cost for you to fly private to each and every NFL city? Just did, to say nothing. I did not think about that. I, I did not. But I appreciate the fact that you were worried about the uh, P&L of that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I do appreciate the fact that you were, you know, a little because bit it's, more. it's one of those things that, you know, coronavirus has kind of exposed, shown a light on like, hey, yeah. what really for him? I understand. Yeah, you want to show. If you want to be there in person, you need to. But, man, at what expense? Does, is it really worth it? Yeah. I was just super impressed by what he was saying, which was nothing, while he was taking a firing squad of questions. So it was just like, next level. This guy's next. Cool. <laughs> and then you see Rob Manford speaking. You're like, oh. Okay, so he was not created. No. Or Rob Manford was not. Or maybe the NFL created Rob Manford to yeah. get into the MLB to make Roger Goodell look even better. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. What about Dana? Dana and Vince McMahon. They're their own. NHL guy. They're their own. their own. But Adam Silver, I mean, now you can also. Was he made in the lab? Huh? He's very tall. I assume he's got he a wet jumper, too. I don't oh. know. <laughs> well, he has know, to be. I don't know if they have that in the lab. How can the players respect him if he doesn't? Yeah, you're right. He probably at least got to put a, go through a layup line or two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do the mic and drill a couple times. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, um, I met him, right? Didn't yeah, I? yeah, get, get up. up. I met him one time. I not, got to ask him no questions. <laughs> they took me out of that segment. <laughs> I wish I, I would have got a shot. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like, like 
recently with him, but wasn't he considered like one of the best commissioners that handles oh, yeah. everything and seems to have a good feel on what the players and the owners and everybody wants? He and the players get along very well. I think that is something. The NBA and the NBPA. <laughs> Can they not just? I mean, come it's on. It's so easy. I mean, they're the best. The NBPA is the best association union in all the sports. And I think they have a great relationship with Adam Silver, and that's why Adam Silver gets put over so much because of the relationship with the players and everything like that. But I don't know. Brandon Marshall was not happy. Yeah, well, they made all the player contracts guaranteed. Well, so that's, well. Why, that's why everyone loves Silver. I love Brandon Marshall, man. He was try I sent him a text yesterday. He has not responded. I texted him. I said, I seen you on the internet today, big mad. <laughs> Tell you all right or whatever. You know, that thing went everywhere. They do good shit down there, man. Yeah. That I am He's, athlete podcast. I, I respect his passion, man. I like Channing Crowder too, who's sitting there. Like Channing's a good dude. Ocho crushes the Andre Johnson interview that yeah. they just did was unbelievable. It's awesome. They and that's down by the way in South Florida. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like hey, here I love what he's doing down there. I'm a big fan. He was. He works for it. He still does the HBO show, right? Uh, Showtime. Mm -hmm. uh, Showtime. The inside the NFL. Then he also he's on Fox. It seems like uh -huh. in the morning. Yeah. FS1, I think. But he did he owns take a, House of did Athlete. Did he take uh, Chris Carter's spot on that show? I'm not sure. I, I'm not up early enough to watch. Essentially. I don't watch any of the morning show until I like get here. That show's never on, though, when I get here, right? Is it, it kind of rotate um, guys I, on it. I think it is. It's the end, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a little bit. Tail end of it. Yeah, but I don't really, I don't catch it as much. But I think it is a rotation. Chris Carter, by the way, we should have him back on the yeah, show. Yeah, he's right? awesome. Yeah. He comes he in. He works for the league, right? Yeah. <laughs> What part of it? Something behind the scenes. Some Community or something. All right, time to get out of here. I was I, I was thinking to myself as soon as it gets under twenty thousand, we're out. It just got to nineteen thousand nine hundred seventy-seven. Huh. Perfect timing. <laughs> Sixteen minutes hammered down with Tone Diggs, Gumpy, Mitt. I'm not sure who else can be on there today, but that is going to be a show that continues to grow. Excited for the venture into the daily live show for those hammered down. Folks, it's great entertainment. I can't wait to watch. Mm -hmm. Give me something daily to watch. Locks mm -hmm. on there, too. It'll win a lot of money. I hope so. Are you giving picks out on there? <laughs> Absolutely not. I think I'm negative 1500 bucks <laughs> in the last two weeks. Yeah, Gumpy, though, on the there, first dude. five. I wish I was there. I'll take him. I wish I was there. <laughs> negative 1500 <laughs> That'd be great, too. Oh, really? Is, is yours worth what are you talking about? Well, dude, dude, I fucking lost it all, dude. Huh? I, I lost that fucking college basketball. Yeah, Gonzaga. Oh, yeah. The Foxy oh, train man. attached itself to Gonzaga. Yeah, the Foxy train seemed to be running parallel with wherever my train was heading. It seemed, and it was not by, like, on purpose. Mm. Got on I got one. Last year I said, I'm not betting on sports I don't know anymore. But then March Madness came, and it's like, yeah. whoa, 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 I'm in, I'm in. Mm -hmm. The Chinese but, but, Basketball Association. Every morning I wake off. up, how am I not supposed to bet on the demons or whatever the hell <laughs> yeah. name is? Hey, but I rode with you on your Super Boost for Final Four weekend. That one hit. The Super ah. Boost have hit. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm four for the last four out of Super yep. Boost. We have another one, by the way, that you can get into since uh, before 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, the boost is for Dustin Johnson, Jordan Spieth, or Bryson DeChambeau. Any one of the three to shoot lower than a 68 uh, tomorrow. It was minus 200, which is basically bet 100, win 50. Now it's plus 100, even money, bet 50, win 50. Let's go. Oh, here we go. I feel good about this boost. I feel good about this Masters boost. One of them will get hot. That's all we need. Yep. One of them needs to show lower than a, a 68. Minus 200 to a plus 100. That's a big odds boost. Mm -hmm. We're four out of the last four. Let's go five for five. Let's continue to take the money. The last boost that we hit, by the way, cost Fandle five million dollars. Oh, Let's go. Five million dollars it cost them. They actually openly tweeted that. I looked at it. I'm like... Okay, well, you're giving me a lot of information for potential contract negotiation going mm -hmm, forward, yeah. but also love that we got to beat a sports book for $5 million. We're going to do that again tomorrow Woo! for the Masters first round Super Boost plus 100. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. I can't wait, man. Masters, I can't believe they're back. So tomorrow, starting early in the morning, like one. There's oh, all yeah. different ways to watch on ESPN Plus and on the internet, right? Yeah, there's streams too uh, that people find that you can see. There, there's, but 
the Masters, I think it has a lot more exposure than most golf. Golf needs to figure out how we can yes. watch it, how to mm-hmm. make it easier and simpler to watch because they have deals with CBS, e- ESPN, ESPN Plus, uh, the Golf Channel. There's mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff. The Masters, though, uh, there, we got a chance to chat with a couple people that were down there yesterday for a practice round. I'd never been there. Not really big golf people either. They were invited to go down there. And I was like, well, you never catch me dead down there or whatever. You know what I mean? But they go down there. And you're not allowed to have your Why? phone. Why you wouldn't you wouldn't go watch? Just I feel like what it is, you know how it's been described, is just not somewhere where my yeah. m- I am supposed to be. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It seems like. But after getting after hearing from this person yesterday, though, might want to go down. You can't have your phone, so they take your phone. Really? Okay, so you can't have your phone. I mean, I think you just gotta hide it. Okay, well, but still, you're yeah. not allowed to be out open no, on well, your any phone. golf. Yeah, that's any golf. There's. You're not supposed to have your phone out for if you're at any golf. I think that like changed. Game. I think Masters is like the only one enforcing that now. But anyways, I don't go to as many as you. I mean, you <laughs> you yeah. I, you would know much more than me. Maybe we'll continue this conversation <laughs> as as I make mistakes. Please correct them, AJ. Okay, please. If that was great, but you can't take your phone. They said every piece of grass they saw down there was pristine. It was I like really? it, they very much understand they're the Super Bowl of golf and it's treated as such. They it kind of put over the event almost. And I was like, okay, maybe I do want to kind of go check that whole thing out because I just thought it'd be insufferable with a sea of insufferability with the people that would be yeah. there. But I guess the entire thing is worth, like the grandness of it is worth to go check out. We'll, we'll see if I ever get invited down or probably not. Uh, would you like to watch like the like NASCAR where you could like go and like pick crews and like follow certain people? Can you do that now for the Masters or no? Yeah. yeah. Masters.com. Yeah. So you can follow every golfer individually? They have like featured groupings and stuff you can oh, click on. That. You so can watch kind of whoever you want pretty much, yeah. Well, that's really on cool. TV? Uh, it's the website, but oh, I'm sure man. the app is now on. Catch you know. up, NASCAR's doing it. Yeah, by the way, it's nice to get down there in the pit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But watching golf also, that's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy watching golf more than a lot of sports. Live? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not like I'm a sit-down appointment watching TV, but it's on no, while no, you're no. doing stuff. On TV, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. On TV, I, oh, yeah, I live, watch no. like, a lot. Live, if you ever go live, like, the memorial tournament happens five minutes from my house. The only reason we go there is to go to try to watch Tiger hit a few shots. Mm-hmm. This is what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. That's it. This is all you're doing the entire time. It's like, yeah. oh, fucking God. Try taking it's your kids. Shoot. It's a lot of fun. You got to park six, 16 miles away and then carry three of them up and down 17 holes. Are you going to teach your kids to drive with two feet? Please don't. Absolutely. They already drive the golf cart with two feet, so yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> That's what happens in Ohio. Mm-hmm. My dad drives with two feet, too. Oh, yeah. Dude, that good man. Oh, He's a good man. I did not know what's he going. has to drive Who's with two job, feet. Dude. This will be the goddamn uh This will be the goddamn poll question tomorrow. Yeah. What's the poll question for today? Do you remember who's the number 3 overall pick? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. The poll for tomorrow needs to be Dude. Have you ever met somebody that drives with two feet? <laughs> I have now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have not. I did not know that I had met anybody that died. Like that's crazy. Every time I drive through Ohio, I think to myself too, like these motherfuckers can't drive. No, <laughs> they can't. It's just like they know it too. Yeah. Now we know. AJ Hawk. What's the poll for today? Uh, who will be the third pick in the 2021 NFL Draft? Uh, last place right now, other 15%. Mac Jones, 30%. Justin Fields, Ooh. 55 with oh, over wow. 93,000 hey. okay. votes. So 93,000 people, 55% of them are saying Justin Fields going to number three to the San Francisco 49ers. Is that potentially because the Mike Shanahan uh, Cutler's is that outside yeah, here? Yeah, that's coming. a monster. It's dying right now. It's been too nice in Indiana. I can so hear that. I, it's back. the first time I've ever been able to hear anything. Bro, my motorcycle is sitting right in the middle of my driveway. No. Right now. Oh, no, I left the pit on open. I thought it wasn't supposed to rain until. No. I thought it was supposed to be nice all week. Me too. Nah, I was under that impression. Nah, today, tomorrow. No, my app Saturday, thing did Sunday. not say rain. No. It said class. Which app do you got? Just the fucking the weather, weather app. app. Oh, that's one I have too. It's ever rain today. No, no, I saw clots. Yeah, I saw clots too. Oh, now isn't it interesting? 100% it says. Yeah, you don't <laughs> say. Yeah. Saturday as well, 100%. Rain stopping in 50 minutes. Jesus oh, Christ. No. Man, it's 75 degrees. Too. I mean, it's NATO weather. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, we are in some serious NATO weather right if now. my bike gets picked up and thrown around. Oh. Shit. Well, that's Steel Pony and I. Good ride. Quite a ride. 
That is crazy out there. It's going to be drenched. Do you hear this? Yeah. This yeah. Is, it's, it's have you ever got caught in a rainstorm while, while riding? Yeah, you go under a bridge or whatever. You try to find the whole thing. But a big part of it is, you know, trying to be a meteorologist. Look ahead. Mm -hmm. I just seen clouds this morning. I did not see all this. Yeah, I got a low leaking tire, too. That thing's going to be flat as shit by the time I get out there. What is that, dude? The rain does something? Well, just, you know, I mean, when it's when it's hot, it expands. You don't really need to worry about it. You can It'll be low, and you can kind of boost it back up on the drive home, and then it goes back down when you park it in the garage. Yeah. You got to fill it up the next morning. Uh, it's, there's a good chance it's just going to be flat when I get out there. Damn. It's coming down, huh? Severe weather alert here. 50 to 50 mile an hour wind possible. Oh, yeah. Good <laughs> God. That's this is tornado this weather. This is prime time NATO weather. Hey, listen, what we need to do. Okay, there's going to be an eye of the storm. Yeah, we need to handle all of our business during the eye of the storm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sam, hum, honey, need you to hop on the bike, get that thing in the garage <laughs> immediately. <laughs> there's an eye of the storm coming. All right. <laughs> Did you pull it out of the garage this morning? Uh, two days ago, because I went on a ride, and yesterday I was out there riding a little bit, you know, because the weather in my eyes, much like Ty thought, I thought I was having a week here. And getting it back into the garage, it's a thing where I got to dodge the other cars, get do the whole thing. It's just easier to just mm -hmm. be like, let me go ahead and put the platform down. It flips out up from underneath. Ooh. And then we oh. go ahead and hit the, the air ride suspension go down there and park it outside. Bad decision. Bad choice. That's why I can't have nice things. This stinks, dude. It's not raining up by us. It's the see? So it's clouds. Do it, clouds. Do it now. Clouds. Do it now. Clouds. Uh, I left my wheelbarrow outside. Would have been bad. Your wheelbarrow? <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, digging a hole in the hole. Got to keep that dry, right? Why is, yeah, why does that have to maintain? Fire pit. Yeah, but the wheelbarrow can go. Well, well, it's metal. It's not going to rust. It. <laughs> it just metal fill rust. Up. Just fill up. With water? Yeah. yeah just leak out the side. Yeah. It's a rust. It'll be okay. Just bought the thing. I think Wilbarrow <laughs> is okay taking wet things too. Like oh, I, I think no. it can actually oh. take some wet stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Oh no! You leave it out once, it's rusty in two days. I mean, this thing is hey, going. Do we stay? Well, hammered downs in six <laughs> minutes. But while hammered downs popping off on the hammered down YouTube page. There's a chance you see this entire place get picked up and moved. Yeah. yeah. There's a good chance a car comes flying <laughs> through our front window. Hey, this is kind of sketchy. A little bit. Is this because Dirty Gertie came all the way over here? Gertie, what the hell did you come do? on? I didn't know it was going to be like that out here. Yeah, Dirty. Dirty <laughs> said I didn't sign I up know, for that. Man. He said I did not sign up. Hammer Down's in about five minutes on the Hammer Down YouTube page. Hope it has a great success. The Diggs will give you a great show alongside Gumpy and the boys. We're going to go try to figure out whether or not we're staring down inevitable death here mm -hmm. with uh, potential Mother Nature. We appreciate you so much for watching. AJ, we'll see you manana, pal. Can't wait. Have a good day, guys. Hey, you guys, I'm not going to be able to golf today, so that's a shame. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> so actually probably good. Might quit forever. Uh, can't thank you enough for watching. You're the best. Send us your T's and P's, please, because there's a potential T-O-R-N-A-D-O coming yeah. to the show. This has been the Pat Magnus Show Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Big show coming. <laughs>